doubt about it. And the, the meso is way down on this Tornado thing. warning is coming. Okay, so the, the hook on this is way down. All right, so News 9, let's do this here. Tornado warning. And again, this thing is, is ramping up, right? Here it is. Tornado warning now for you folks, again, to the west and north of St. Louis up to Maud. Look at the hook on this thing. Let's go ahead and let's go to Lynx 4. We'll do a storm track. And let me show you what that looks like, everybody, as it moves to the northeast. And the dangerous part of the storm is right here, right? It's right there. You do not want to be along or ahead of that. Uh, we're looking at Taharjo at 632, Mod 632, Seminole 647, Wewoka 704, Bowley 727, Watunka 734. Okay, so Jim Gardner is right here. He's right there looking right at it. And uh, JD is actually right here, okay? So we have the storm covered from the air and from the ground. There's your official now tornado warning with that storm as it heads to the northeast. So Seminole, a couple of nights ago, you were right in it. You almost took a tornado right through town. And we got to keep an eye on this. Tornado warning now continues for southern, eastern, and southeastern Pottawatomie County, okay? And it's moving off to the northeast. Let's go back to Jim and get an update from Jim Gardner from the air. And this is the only, by the way, the only severe storm in the state right now, okay? And it, it is, it is rotated. Let's get an update from Jim. Uh, getting a little darker out there. He's looking right at it. And uh, boy, lots of lightning. Big hail, quarter, maybe some golf ball size hail. Jim, we're still looking for anything on the ground. Tornado warning. And now for your storm. Go ahead. Well, that's right, David. I'm sitting just one and a half miles to the southeast of St. Louis. And it looks like that is passing just on the northwest side of St. Louis, about two miles or so. But it looks like it's trying to start to get rain curtains wrapped around in it, David. If, as you can see, if you look at our shot, you can see the rain coming around now. And you can see the wall cloud is starting to form back up in there as we pull back wide just a little bit more. Let's go back. And you can see the outer ring of this and the, see the outer ring of the storm there, man. I mean, it is really impressive, David. But again, I just can't say, I wish we could just move the camera to the front for just maybe 30 seconds, but because the lightning that's out in front of this thing is phenomenal. And, uh, you know, right now, I think the lightning's a bigger threat than what's happening right now in this. But, uh, man, we were in a good spot, David. Uh, I don't know what's getting ready to happen there. That kind of changed colors on us, David. What do you think? Well, that's, well, hey, Jim, I was seeing it look like a little vapor. When you zoom in, it, it's, you know, it, it's a moist atmosphere. I was looking on the ground for any vapor underneath there. Do you see anything like that at all? I, I, I know, it, it, things are evolving quickly. Uh, shear rate, the velocity data is getting stronger now. It's ramping up. It's the strongest it's been all day just northwest of St. Louis. Do you see anything on the ground? Because, Jim, it won't take much to get a vortice on the ground out of this. Well, that's right, David. We've been looking. I mean, it's in a heavily treed area now, but you can see the rain curtains now. Are, they're getting heavier, David. The rain curtains are getting heavier around that wall cloud right there, and, and they're staying localized. They ain't spreading out. They're staying in a, in a pretty good concentric circle around that wall cloud here. And like I said, it's, you know, it's so low to the ground right now. Like I said, if you walk through it, you'd probably scrape your head on it as you went underneath it. But uh, again, it's, uh, we haven't seen any suction spots or anything like that, David. In St. Louis, you know, they just missed this thing. So it is moving on up towards, I don't know, it may go northwest. Uh, yeah, it looks like, what do you think, David? Go northwest of Mod there. But anyway, uh, we're in a really good spot. We'll keep you updated. Jim Garfrey live from Bob Mills, Cuddy's 9. Back to you. Okay, all right. Hey, uh, Jim, if you can still hear me, will you have Rich just maybe lighten the shot just a little bit here? Can he bring up the uh, the light in this just a little bit more than what it is? If you could have Rich Rich do that. I, I, listen, I, I'm, just, I'm just asking here. I'm just trying to see if we can see a little more. I see these rain curtains that are rotating. Okay, okay, hang on. Power flash, David, okay. off in the front. Yeah, yeah, right here, right here. Yeah, hang on, right here. What, well, Jim, what's going on in the middle of those things? Right there. Uh, I don't, that, we had another power flash, David, right there, where we zoomed in. Okay, We just yeah. had another power flash, so that's two power flashes that happened right in there. Okay, so. So, uh, there, there we go. go. Uh, Hang on. I don't know, David, either that's, uh, either that's info yeah. winds or, or just the, the wind or whatever, but yeah. there were two definite, distinct power flashes right there, and I really can't tell if something's on the ground or not, yeah, David, but uh, this thing is definitely ramping up, and it's getting its, uh, getting its, well, wait a minute, wait, wait, right there, zoom in, zoom in right there, in the middle Longus of the screen, Rich, Road zoom in. Road and Brangus Road, near Cemetery right. Road, just west of okay. Maud. 
I thought for a minute there there was a suction spot right there, David, yeah. but that, that was about where those power flashes were. Okay. Okay, all right, Jim, if you see another power flash, just just holler. We'll come right back to you. This There's a lot of motion going on, especially right back in here on this left side. Jim, right there on the back left side, right here, right in here. Go ahead. Yeah, right right there, right here. Okay, go to the right. Go back to your left. Just a little Five bit. miles to the west. Go to the right, right here. Mod. There it is. Tornado on there the ground. There it is, there it is, there it is. Tornado on the ground. There it is. I knew if we looked for it, we'd find it. Right here. Good tornado pick, on the pick, ground. Pick there, Rich. All right, this is going to be, again, a News 9. Once again, tornado warning. There's the tornado on the ground. Right here. This is live. Right here on News 9. Tornado on the ground. For just a few seconds, it's re intensifying. We have a vortice here. Notice how this right side is lifting to the right. Jim, it's on the ground again. Go ahead, there Jim. Is, yep, there it is, David. Go ahead. Take it. It Take is it, just Jim. right out my window, man. Just, uh, you know, right. I mean, it's just to the northwest of me there, David. This thing's going to ramp up. It's, it's, it's one of these. I don't think it's going to just turn into a, a small elephant trunk or anything like that. I think this thing's got the potential of really wrapping up into a large tornado, David. Because if you see the top of it there, you can see that whole thing is rotating above the funnel right now. That whole wall cloud is turning. Yeah. Hey, Jim, great shot. Only on News 9, folks. If you're flipping around, this is only on News 9. Jim Gardner has it live in the air. There's a tornado. It's not that strong right now, but this is getting faster. This is spinning. There's a tornado. Hey, Jim, zoom in to the base of that. Zoom into the trees down here. Zoom in all the way in. It's right here. There's a tornado on the ground. The light's not good. If he can adjust his light, I know it's hard to see, folks. It's right here. There's a condensate. There's a cone. It's right here. It's it, 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 the the condensate goes all the way to the ground, okay? And it's 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 again. It's an ugly. It's an it ugly. Kind of dissipated tornado. right now, David. Yeah. But I think it's going to ramp back up. Here it is. Now it's over here. That's David. That's five miles west of Maud, and it is four miles north of St. Louis. Okay. So again, this is our continuing tornado warning. Uh, JD's there. Jim Gardner is there. The tornado is on the ground. Look at look at it starting to spin now. Now there we've got the so. merry-go-round going. Jim, it's on the ground again. There it is again, uh, now a little bit yeah, larger. Yeah, that's right, David. I, like I said, it cycled there for a minute, and I think every, every time it's going to cycle, it's going to get a little bit bigger, David. Every time it cycles, now you see it kind of falling apart. Now it's going to it's going to cycle back up, but it is definitely on the ground. I can't really see too much debris coming off that. I mean, we're kind of tucked in here tight with it, David. You and see the it's motion? Very yeah, you can see it in JD's shot too. On okay. this cloud, but uh, man, I mean, it's it's a great shot, man. Watching this thing trying to form. And if you look at that top of the wall cloud, you'd see the whole thing spinning. Now it's getting a little bigger. See, it cycled again, David. Yeah, Every time yeah. it cycles, it gets just a little bit bigger. Yes. Every time it goes through a cycle, it gets a little bit bigger. Okay. A little bit stronger. All right, Jim, so, great shot. Man, what a what a sight here, David. Uh, hey. And, uh, you know, there's some more lightning there. It looks like there's a, yeah. is there are power flashes going off in the front there. I can't yeah. tell. Okay, looks Jim. Like it may have a... Hey, Jim, hang on one second. Anyway, let's, David, it, yeah, this let's is... Let's go back to radar to, here. Need to, uh, you know... Yeah. Yeah, Jim, hang on just a second. We've got to go back to radar. Uh, let's go back to Links 3. Here's the tornado. It's right here. It's going to be on East Cemetery Road. Here's Maud. If you live in Maud, got to go to your safe spot. Tornado's three miles west of town. Go to your safe spot. There's a shot from JD. There's a tornado on the ground. Multiple vortex. Let's go to JD now. Let's bring JD back in here. Then and, we'll go back to Jim. And as I lapse let's it, go David, to JD. it's still moving kind of a northeast direction. Okay. All right. So there's JD's shot. It just froze up. JD, give us an update. Your shot just froze. Go ahead, give us a quick update. Uh, yeah, this has been a this has been a pretty weak looking tornado, and then went to a multi vortex. It's really starting to consolidate now, and it's going to a a cone tornado. And uh, okay, I'm starting to see a little bit of debris there. Looks like it's probably picking up some tree limbs and treetops and stuff like that. All right, uh, let's go back to Jim Gardner. Let's go back to Jim. Now the tornado is much stronger. Now there's your condensate, Jim. If he can iris up a little bit, if if Rich can iris up, tornado on the ground, debris in the air. Oh yeah, debris on De radar as well, debris obviously. On, yeah. Look at there, multiple vortex tornado. Mul look, at, look at the vortices there. Whoop, boom, there you go, hang on. Here we go. All right, so there's the top, there's the tornado, there's the mesocyclone, multiple vortex tornado, west of Mod, southwest of Seminole, tornado live. Live on News 9, only on News 9. We've had it live. News 9, tornado warning. There's your tornado, there's your wall cloud, and uh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Seminole, 642 is the time. 642 into Seminole. Okay, here comes another dancing, another dancing vortice. There's a vortice right there. Watch it condensate as pressure's lower, 
as it spins, pressure's lower. You get condensate, will start from the ground sometimes and work its way up, boom, and it connects. Or it'll start the opposite way. Starts here, pressure's lower, and it drops down to the ground, right? So they can meet in the middle, it can start at the top, yeah. it can start at the bottom. But look at that shot there but from Jim. Look how fast, one. look how fast this is coming in from the right. Jim Gardner, take it. This is about 10 miles southwest of Seminole and just west of Maude. Tornado on the ground. Go ahead, Jim Gardner. Well, that's right, David. It's, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just sitting on the edge of town of Maude right here on the southwest edge of Maude, shooting back to the northwest. And it's cycling again, David. And it seems like every time it cycles, it gets a little bit bigger. There is a big, broad rotation on the ground, though. I mean, if you look right there, there's a big, broad rotation on the ground. You just don't have the funnel right now. But look at the winds in there, David. Yeah, right you can there. see that big rotation right there. Now, what's going to happen is that's right probably going to tighten up again. Yep, right here. And that whole Tornado. thing is turning, so it is very wide, David. It is. Very wide, and it is moving to the east, northeast. Yeah. Like I said, I'm on the southwest Boom. corner Board of the seat. town of Maud. And it's moving northeast, David. So okay. again, look at bad. Yeah, look at that, David. That's a broad rotation that's sitting on the ground. Yeah, Jim. Jim, back out of the shot just a second here. Back out of the shot. Let's get our big, big view here going on. So here's a wall cloud right here. The, the tornado runs from right there to right there. Okay, it runs from right here to right here, and it's, it's crossing some boundary right here. I'm not sure what that is. This is East 1290 Road okay. and approaching na Highway 9A now. This is gonna be moving into the same area of the river between Harjo and Pleasant Grove on the Seminole Pot County line, the same area where the tornado was, was yeah. two days ago. Okay, all right, so here we go. So uh, control room, um, great shot from Jim. We've had the tornado on the ground now for about five minutes. Watch the condensate. As it strengthens, the condensate will grow and it'll develop underneath it. Here we go again. Tornado continues on the ground. It's weak, no. okay, but it is on the ground right now. And the, watch it, here we go again. Another tornado on the ground. Multiple tornadoes on the ground. Watch that, boom. Look how fast that's happening. And while you're watching that, Live. the storm is still increasing near Lindsay. Tom Pastrano's on this. Wow, 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 look at that, folks. Tornado on the ground, there it is, right there. Double helix tornado. Look at the multiple vortices now. Look at the multiple vortices under that tornado. Folks, again, this is southwest of Seminole, about 10 miles. This is west of Maude. Tornado on the ground right there. Look at that, double helix tornado. They form around each other. They're spinning like a top, spinning like a top. Double helix tornado on the ground doing its thing, and then it weakens, okay? It weakens just for a second. Now it's crossing a highway here. Jim, what are we looking at here? What's it crossing? What, what highway is that? Go ahead, Jim. Well, I think it may be nine. Let me it's check. It's nine that. A. Maybe uh, uh, could be wrong. But I think it looks like Highway Nine A runs up through here, uh, right. north and south. You so are it correct. Could be Nine A, right there, or it could be uh, Highway Nine that goes east and west there. That may be the east and west part, part of Highway Nine. But I know it's Nine A that runs to the. Yes, well, you're it seeing is. at the bottom right there. That's Nine A for sure. Yeah. So I'm running into some scud here. I want to drop down just a little bit. Okay. Uh, okay. I believe Jim, that's 9A, then that yes. runs up into Highway 9 that goes east and west, David. Yeah, Jim, you are correct. It's 9A. Just cross 9A. Okay, Jim, we're going to keep your shot up. We're going to go back to radar. Give us one minute. We'll come back to you. Don't go anywhere. Stay with it. Don't leave us, folks. Don't leave us. Here's the tornado. It's right here. There is, whose shot is this? That's Tom's shot. Yeah, that's the Lindsay storm. It's okay. close. Okay, that, is it close to producing? It's close. Okay, folks, we're going to have another tornado. So hang on. We're going to have another tornado. Jim's on this. All right, so here's our storm here. We will do a storm track on this coming up. There's your tornado. Look at that, look at that. Screaming eagle, boom, there are your wings, there's your beak, you never wanna be in the beak. You never wanna be in the beak. Showing debris in the air. It's showing some debris from time to time. Showing debris from time to time. Um, let's go back to, let's go back to Lynx 4. Let's do a storm track. Seminole, Seminole, Seminole. Seminole, Seminole, Seminole. 644, Cromwell, 713, Okima. 734, Golden Pony Casino, 744, Walitka, 746. That's your timeline of where the tornado could certainly be, okay? There it is, Jim Gardner's right there looking right at it. We've had the tornado live on News 9 for the last 20 minutes. Let's go back to Jim's shot. Look at the tornado here, folks. Another tornado, right, let's go back to Jim. Your door. There it is, Jim. Look at the tornado here on the ground, hey, only David. on News 9. Go ahead, David. Jim, take it. This is another tornado. This is not where the original one was. This is another one it's that just dropped out right next to, to me, right out my left-hand door. It dropped right out of the front of this, 
dropped right out of my left hand door. It is now only probably just about a mile away from me. And you can see right there some emergency vehicles. Oh, we got two up on the ground. Go to the right, go to the right. Two, right, boat, nope, back, 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 stop. Right there, we got two on the ground, David. There's one right uh, right in front of that one. It, it, it just barely went on the ground. Right here. Okay, hey, okay, hey, Jim, let's go to JD's shot. We'll go back to Jim. Power flash, tornado on the ground. Oh, hang on a second, Jim. Let's go back to Jim Gardner's shot. Jim Gardner's shot. We have, looks like some greenhouses. Tornado, look at the speed, look at the speed, look at the speed, look at the condensate. It strengthens. Okay, it's going through the greenhouses. This is live on News 9. Going through greenhouses right now. Look at the damage. This is the this far is north live. edge of Mod. What is this? Far north edge of the town of Mod. It's going through Mod. Look at the greenhouses. It looks like to me they're greenhouses of some kind. Debris in the air. Tornado. Look at that, folks. Going hundreds of feet in the air. Okay, this is not good. This is not good. Look at the trailer overturning. We have debris. We have uh, debris in the air. We now have damage. We have more debris here being lofted into the sky. Check that out. The tornado continues to strengthen and it is on the ground. Jim Gardner, take it. You're live again now on the western and northern sides of Moore. This is going to Seminole. Of Mod. Mod. Mod, excuse me, Mod. Go ahead, Jim Gardner, take it. Yeah, that's right, uh, David. I'm just uh, west of Bow Legs now, and, and like I said, crossing. Uh, let me give you a, let me zoom in here, and I'll let you know real quick here. It's gonna be, uh, just gonna be on the west side of Mod. I'm, being, I'm sitting on the west side of Mod here right now. I mean, just on the west side of town. And uh, you know it's it's still on the ground, David. You just can't see uh, the condensate or see anything. But it is it is definitely you can still see it turning on the ground right there. Like I said, I am on the west side of Mod here, and I don't know what highway that is for sure that we're be coming up to here. Okay, all right, uh, great job, Jim. Let me see here. Looks like I'm going to be coming up to 377, David. 377 is what the highway I'll be coming up to that runs north and okay. south here. There it is again. Now, we got another one. We got another, another one that just tornado. dropped out in the front, David. Another this tornado. is not the same tornado. This is the one that I spotted moments ago. Coming out I of the I said there were two tornadoes on the ground. This wow. is the second one. Wow. This is one is up in front of the one that just passed yes. on the north side yes. of Mod there. Broad, so this is dropping multiple tornadoes out of this one big wall cloud right here, David. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Is it me or am I sweating? Is it just and me? There's the other one right there. Okay, there's I'm the sweating. other one right there okay. that is still on just the ground. Just want to make sure. All right. Okay, here's the other tornado back to the left. So tornado here, big wall cloud, multiple tornadoes on the ground. Look at this shot, folks. Tornado on the ground right here. Jim Gardner has it live on News 9. And uh, we have damage on the western. Look at the lightning. Boom. On the western northern sides of Mod, we have damage there. And once again, uh, this is the left tornado. We have now another tornado. Another. Go to your right. Go to your on right. On the right. Right there. Tornado here. There's two of them. Now we got them lined up, David. You can see them both. Yeah, two tornadoes. We have sister tornadoes. Not good. We don't like sister tornadoes. We like sisters. Seven not, miles not tornadoes. southwest of Seminole, right on the Pot Seminole County line. Okay. Just on the north side of Mod. Okay, look at the strength now. Getting a little bit stronger. You can see the motion here, a little bit faster, a little bit faster. Okay, so let's go back to Link Street uh, just quickly here. I hate to leave that shot. Let's go back to Link Street. It's getting stronger. Um, there's the tornado. There's Seminole, 7.3 miles away. Seminole. 647, 647, folks. You got to go to your safe spot, lowest level. If you in, live in between north and north of Mod to right there, you got to go to your safe spot. Okay, let's go to JD. Bring JD back in. Look at his shot. Tornado on the ground in front of JD control room. Take his shot. Go ahead, JD. Tornado on the ground. Multiple tornadoes on the ground now. Headed to Seminole. Go ahead. Give us an update. Yeah, this thing is turning into a stovepipe. It looks to me like David. There was another weaker tornado just east of this circulation that was really quite wimpsy it didn't do a whole lot but you can still see it and uh they hollered and said there was another circulation and lo and behold there it is this thing is uh when i ran to the corner on 59 there was a lot of uh, debris up in the air so i don't know if it hit some structures off to the west of here or not but it is it is lost in some debris uh don't have to reposition again we got trees and uh, hilly terrain in the way david back to you yeah great shot jd it did it took out a bunch of greenhouses on the northwest side of mod Okay, lots of greenhouses were hit and there was lots of debris. It flipped some trailers and, and yada, 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 yada. Okay, let's come back to it here and let's go back to Jim Gardner's shot. Double tornadoes on the ground. Jim Gardner's shot, southwest of Seminole. There's one vortice right there. Here's another vortice coming out of the trees, trying to develop the whole area. Here's what's going on. The mesocyclone is completely off your screen from left to right, okay? And underneath it, 
the whole thing is spinning and what happens is it'll tighten up and you get areas that strengthen on different parts because inside this mesocyclone you'll have little areas of tighter spin that will form and again produce tornadoes so we have the, the tornado here we have the tornado over here from time to time all right jim gardner we'll go back to you live it looks like it's still intermittently off and on the ground go ahead take it jim you are hot go ahead well that's right david it is intermittently off and on here now it has all it's still down it just dropped again this whole thing even though you cannot see it david this whole thing has vortices dropping here and there out of the bottom the whole i mean the whole wall cloud is rotating and there's just little vortices now just dropping here dropping there i don't know how many i counted uh, there at one time there was at least four that were on the ground and that were dropping out of this but uh, again david it is kind of it's, it's kind of went back up now but the, you see the whole thing turning so at any time it just keeps cycling david keeps cycling right here keeps cycling you know at any time it could right drop here. another big tornado here right here you know, and like I said, if this yeah. is towards Seminole, people definitely <laughs> right. need to go to their safe place. Right here. Jim Garpoint Live from Bob Mills, Cody's 9, back to you. Okay, Jim, look on the right side of this. Look on the right side. It's trying to localize on the right side. Look on the right side. Right here, Jim, on the right side. Not the big thing that's hanging down. On the right side of that. On the right side. Not that so much. That's still big and bad and ugly, but to the right. Go to your right. Go to your right. Right here. Look how fast this front lip is rotating right here. It's right here. Okay. All right. All right. Let's keep an eye on that. Okay. We have another storm we need to talk about here quickly. Um, let's go back to Link 3. This has a big hook on it. Vaughn's right there. This hook is developing quickly. We'll probably get a tornado out of that. And that is right there. Tom's coming in from the west. What is Vaughn? Just west of Payne. West of Payne. The go, go to shear rate. Okay. Let's take a look at it. And it's going to Purcell. Shear rate's coming up. It's now on top of Payne. Payne, Payne, Payne. Worst name in the world, right? Uh, God, it's right on top of Payne. And it's headed, it's headed northeast towards Purcell, uh, towards uh, the Muldrow Airport, and it is spinning. And Vaughn's right there. What does Vaughn shot look like? Okay, let's go to Vaughn Caster. He's two miles east southeast of it. Let's go to Vaughn and get an update from Vaughn. And Vaughn, there it is. Your storm is going to try to produce a tornado here, Vaughn. Go ahead, give us an update. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely going to try to produce, David. It's looking really good. I know Tom's right under it also, but I've got a bird's eye view of it here. I am north of Maysville, about five miles, looking back to the west. So uh, this thing is, is it may be uh, struggling right now, but it is definitely something co to contend with. It's a uh, very, very cloud right there as I pan to the right. Um, this is a mean storm, uh, David. So uh, we're going to be following it back to you. Look at this beast. The southern storm. Let's go back to Link 3. Link 3, and there's the shot. It's not on the ground right now. This could become tornadic at any time. This we know is tornadic now. Let's back out of this just a second. I want to point okay. out this is not headed for Oklahoma City. Yeah, like we, we said, it would be south of I-40, but we have these storms here, and I'm a little concerned about these storms now that are coming up uh, between Moore and the Orr Family Forum and Norman Regional Hospital. We have to watch these storms, so let's back out of this just a second. Hey, Justin. Uh, let's get Jess. Let's get Jeremy. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Great job. Okay. So J uh, Jeremy's going to head northeast, folks. Um, if you live in Oklahoma City, if you live in the metro, Tinker, east the metro, downtown, Moore, Norman, watch these storms, okay? We've got to watch these storms. So we have one, two big, gnarly, nasty rotating supercells that have produced multiple tornadoes. This one has. Jim Gardner's right there. Let's go to Jim now. And this is going to Seminole. All right, we'll get a storm track on that coming up. Let's go back to Jim. And uh, Jim, it looks like it is no doubt about it. It is still spinning. All the ingredients are still there. Could produce another tornado at any time. So what do you think? I don't see anything on the ground. We know we have damage to the north and west of Mod, But go ahead and give me an update, Jim Gardner. Well, that's right, David. Right now I'm about 2.7 miles east southeast of Bow Lakes here, shooting back to the north. This is right to, to the north of me right out my left hand door it is all kind of went back up kind of got ragged david but you'd still see the whole thing is still rotating david the big mass underneath there is still rotating nothing we haven't seen anything on the ground but at any moment here there's so much action in there david that this could tighten up at any time and drop another another tornado and uh you know from our shot you can basically just see that whole thing turning in there so and it is it is shrinking david this the whole wall cloud now if we pan to the right a little bit, it's not near as big as it was. That's the leading edge of it. 
and then we go back uh, to where uh, the tornado okay. was. This has all kind of shrunk uh, quite a bit. But like I said, there's still a lot of action oh, there, right. David. We're not out of the woods yet. This could still drop a tornado at any time. Jim Garfroy live from Bob Mills. Got his nine back to you. Okay. Jim is tidying up again. Look at the spin. Look at the left. Look at the right. This is the left side of the wall cloud. The mesocyclone is right here, up 20, 30, 40,000 feet. It's trying to localize here again. And uh, we've had multiple tornadoes on the ground. Multiple tornadoes on the ground. Um, let's go to Tom. Camera. Tom Pastrano. Let's go to Tom Pastrano and bring him in. Tom, your storm is spinning. Could produce a tornado here coming up. Give us an update. What do you think? Go, Tom. Hey, David, you know, it tried a couple of times. It sure. had everything going on with it. You know, I had winds about 60 RSV, really close underneath the circulation. Sirens are going off in Lindsay and all around here. I mean, I think a tornado could happen at any time. Back to you. Okay, all right, great job there, Tom. Good job, Tom's on this. We'll see what it does. It is spinning, it is spinning. Tom's right there. This is a southern storm. Jim Gardner's storm is gonna produce one more time. Um, let's go to JD. Let's take JD's shot. Look at the spin on that, and then we'll go back to radar. We'll go back to radar. I don't see the tornado on the ground, but uh, it's close. Go ahead, look at the wrapping rain. Look at the rain curtains. See the, see the curtains of rain coming in on the east? It's right here. There, there's, there's where your tornado's gonna be. Look at his wind picking up. JD, it looks like it's just, it's trying to produce another tornado. Go ahead. Yeah, it did just touch down. There was debris again uh, within those wrapping rain curtains. This thing uh, approached Highway 9A and it actually backed up momentarily and it, it's moved forward again. It still has not crossed Highway 9A. It looks like it, it may be on the ground again. Yep. It's on the ground again, it looks like, David, pretty sure. Okay. All right. No, yep. Uh, you yep. can see right through those wrapping curtains. Right here. There. Here's a tornado. There's a tornado in JD shot. This is going to be, again, we are looking northwest of Bowlegs. Uh, there's the tornado. It's right here. There's the backside of the tornado with the wall. The wall of the tornado, it's right here. Five miles southwest of, of Seminole. Seminole. Just updated four miles southwest four miles. of Seminole. Okay, Seminole. let's go back to Link 3 control room. State Highway 59. Link 3, Seminole, safe spot, lowest level. You have to go now. Lowest level, Seminole, safe spot, now. You don't have any time left. It's four miles away. It's going to come into town. It could weaken. It could strengthen, and you could have big time problems. This is the same area that had the tornado two nights ago. Seriously, almost the same exact path. It's hard to do that. It's hard to do that. But this it's one certainly is not trying. weakening. It's not weakening. Okay, it's coming into Seminole. We have another tornado warning now yes. going on. Let's go back to Jim Gardner's shot, and we'll take that shot. Let's go back to Jim Gardner, and it looks like it's on the ground intermittently again. Jim Gardner, it looks like it's on the ground at least. Off and on, go ahead, and Jim, that is going into Seminole. It is going into Seminole. Go ahead, Jim Gardner. That's right, David. I mean, just look at it. You can see the action on there. Now, we haven't seen any, you know, defined funnels. That is very low to the ground, but you can see the whole thing turning. So I'm sure those winds that are right there below that are pretty strong, David. But like I said, we haven't seen a definite funnel, but it is definitely wide. It is broad, and it is, you know, like I said, it's dropped drop multiple uh, tornadoes out of this thing. So. It, it seems to me like, David, it, it, it's really trying to tighten itself up. It's, it's still got a lot of action. You know, it looks kind of ragged right now, but that doesn't mean it, it's not going to drop another tornado here just moments. moments. Uh, back behind it, David, I don't know if, uh, you, if you got another storm slamming into this or what, but we're getting a lot of heavy rain. That power flash is right out there at the bottom in the rain. We may have one in the rain right there, David, that we can't see because yeah. we just had power flashes right there. Right there. Okay. Probably do. Okay. Uh, Okay, so we're going to call it the tornado still on the ground. It's going into Seminole. And folks, we got to talk about the metro here. Let's get back to Link 3. And uh, wow, let's go back to Link 3 control room, folks. I'm really, we're really concerned about this. And this is going to be coming into West Norman and more. This storm is severe and it's going to try to become, look at Jim's shot. Tornado on the ground. Tornado on the ground and Jim's shot again. Okay, southwest of Seminole, folks. That is southwest of Seminole. Okay, so here's the deal. Multiple storms. And one of these producing multiple tornadoes. This storm is now tornadic that Tom's looking at and Vaughn are looking at. I don't see a tornado in their shot. Right. I don't see a tornado in their shot. This storm is not severe yet, but I can't say it enough. You folks in Moore, listen up, Moore. If you live in West North Norman, Moore, southern sides of Oklahoma City, you have got to pay attention to this storm. Okay? We have to pay attention to this storm as it moves off to the northeast. I don't see anything crazy There's in it right now. Right, in velocity, it's just the look of the of basically the rain it right is. now, the way it's oriented. It is. Definitely. Where's the, 
What's the temperature here and where's the boundary? So 67 degrees in Norman with an east, east wind. Okay, and what's it in, in South Oklahoma City in Choctaw? Uh, still 65 okay. degrees east wind. All right, we can so. still get a tornado in there. Okay. Yeah. We can still get a tornado and in so there. So the storm that's tornado warned down south of Purcell. Purcell yep. is in that warning and Vaughn and Tom are right there. Yeah, it's going to Purcell. You folks in Purcell. Okay, from northeast of Payne, there's the tornado. Uh, let's go back to, let's check in with our trackers on the ground. And let's go to, let's go to Tom Pastrano. Tom's right here looking back to his west-northwest. Tom, is it on the ground? Let's take Tom's shot. There's the wall cloud. There's the, there's the possible tornado right here. Tom's on it. Tom, what do you think? Coming out of the trees right now. Down is that, oh, oh. Tom, is that on the ground? Yeah, they, David, it's not on the ground. But uh, a couple of minutes, about five minutes ago, as I was really close to it, I mean, I had winds screaming into it about 60 to 70. I mean, it, it could do it at any moment now. I don't see anything on the ground. There's no... Okay. Rotating rapidly, but I don't see it on the ground. Okay. All right. Great job. So that's Tom down near uh, Lindsay, and there it is. Oh, David, Seminole is coming up. I know, I know. Let's go back to, let's go back. Uh, Tom, do not leave that storm. Wow, there's a lot going on right here. So many moving parts. Let's go to uh, Jim Gardner shot, tornado on the ground, multiple vortex. Tom, it's beginning to wrap in rain, but it is going into Seminole. Is, is it going to go? Oh, it's going to be so, so close. So close to the south side of town. It's going to oh. go on the south side of town. Tornado Man. is, at this point, you can almost say tornado is imminent for Seminole. At this point, if it misses you, um, you're praying hard, but you, you, yeah, uh, it's, it's trying to come into town. I'll be honest with you. Jim Gardner, take it here for a few seconds. Give us a quick update, and we'll go back to radar. Okay, David, I just crossed 377. I'm south of Seminole. It is going to see, go back to your right just a little bit, uh, Rich. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. There's 377 right there, David. There's Seminole off to the right-hand upper corner of your screen there. That's 377 right there. Now, this tornado is getting wrapped up in rain. Several, several border seas. There's one right there. There's several vortices in this rain, David. You can't see some of them. Some of them we can see, but all along in this rain now, it's right it wrapped up. There right are here. vortices on the ground. Yeah. So yeah. again, this is a very, very dangerous storm, and it is okay. now crossing 377, David. Yes. Just south of Seminole here. Yes. It, it is crossing Seminole, or 377, on the south side of Seminole, maybe by a, a half mile, maybe by a mile. It looks like it might have turned yeah, a little... Yeah, that's about right, David. That's okay. about right. Okay, it looks like it might have turned a little farther to the right, a little farther to the right, which it, it might actually miss Seminole, but it's crossing 377 right now. We're looking for... There's Power Flash. Is that a Power Flash? That's a Power Flash, David. Okay, okay. We're getting them on the backside. Backside, Power Flash, Power Flash, tornado on the ground, broad area tornado circulation here on the ground, multiple vortices inside the tornado. There it is, crossing... Crossing just barely south of Seminole. If you live in Seminole or south of Seminole, you have That's to right. be in your safe spot right now. Lowest level, yeah, center right part of the right. house. You have to get out of a mobile home. This tornado is crossing 377 right now. Let's go back to Link 3. Incredible shot. Link 3, control room. And there's the tornado. There's the tornado now. And that is it. There's an RV park there just south of town. Yeah, a veteran, it's right veterinary. Here. Um, it's right yeah, here. There's a lot going on south side of Seminole. Yeah, there's a lot in here. It's not just downtown Seminole. It's south on top and south of Seminole. Cro crossing the highway right now. Crossing the highway right now. There's Jim's shot. There's the hook. There's the hook right there. This is 377. Oh, no. Shear rate is ramped. We have the yellow. This is going to be a large tornado. It's not extremely violent right now, but it is a large tornado producing multiple vortices underneath this whole area. It's nearly a mile wide. Okay, now don't hang, don't freak out on me here. It's a mile wide, but not a mile wide violent tornado. It's a mile wide circulation producing small vortices or small tornadoes inside this zone, okay? All right, so from Seminole to the west and south, Tornado, safe spot, you gotta go now. Let's go back to Jim Gardner. Power flashes continue south of Seminole. Let's go back to Jim. Power flashes. Jim, multiple power flashes now. South side of Seminole, go ahead, take it. Well, that's right, David, you're exactly right. Uh, I'm uh, just about a, probably half mile on the east side of 377, south of Seminole. The tornado is probably, uh, I would estimate, two miles to my north that I'm shooting back to there. You just saw multiple power flashes there. You see multiple power flashes right in there, David. That's what I mean, David. You're exactly right about this being a mile wide circulation, but it's a mile wide, but it's dropping just, it's dropping just tornadoes here and there. There's multiple tornadoes in there. It's not just one big tornado. It's dropping small 
tornadoes all in this mile wide circulation, David. And like I said, you can see power flashes going off now because this is just right on the south edge of the town of Seminole. Power flashes in the back. We've, we've, we've maxed out in max the rotation. Uh, you know, so, wow, this is just, uh, just incredible, David. I mean, it's just not one big tornado. There is several small tornadoes dropping out of this thing. Jim Gardner, Point Life, Bob Bell, Scott is nine. Back to you. Okay, uh, great job, Jim Gardner. Multiple vortex tornado. It's, uh, it's over a mile wide circulation. It's nearly two miles wide two and a half miles wide, and we're getting vortices after vortices after vortices and power flashes, and it went uh, oh, no. basically over and just south of Seminole. The hail, we haven't talked about the hail on the north side, quarters and golf balls, maybe even tennis balls, but that is the tornado. Look, look at the condensate on the ground, folks. Tornado is on the ground right now, right now, and it looks like that is going to be east of 377, correct? We're now crossing 377. The tornado's crossing 377. Let's go back to shear rate, link three. Look at the max rotation. And here it is, right there, folks. I mean, it doesn't get any worse than this for Seminole. Seminole to the south and east. There you go, debris ball, debris ball. There's debris in and around Seminole. There's your screaming hook. And it is a, okay, let me show, okay, so Seminole, we have negative numbers, values here. So there is still debris in the air. Let's go back to links. Uh, let's go back to Jim Gardner's shot. I see that right there. Okay, take that, tilt that up into the vertical. Left side of the hook, right side, and the whole thing is producing multiple vortices inside that. Okay, multiple vortices. It's right in front of JD. It's right in front of JD. Let's go to JD, let's take his shot. And JD, you're hot, go ahead. Look at the merry-go-round going on. Look at the knuckling yep. back. Look at the tornado on the ground, JD. Take it, you're hot. Yeah, it's a quarter mile in front of me. It's crossing Highway 270, I guess this is right now, uh, in Seminole. It's crossing the highway. This thing is really large. It's really wide. It's just a carousel. Little fingers are coming down, multiple vortices. There's some cars up there that's pretty close, man. They're going to get a show if they don't get injured. This thing's still moving east. It's been on the ground for quite a while. Multiple power flashes. It's hit, you know, several transformers. I did see a house with a missing a roof back to the west and a lot of minor damage. But I'm going to uh, go ahead and get a little bit closer for you, and then I'm going to have to reposition to the east to stay with this thing, David. On 377. Uh, great I think job. He said 270. Okay, he's on. Yeah. So he's right at the spur, I think. Okay, he's okay. Okay, so he's east. Uh, hey, JD, come back in here real quick. What direction are you looking there? What direction are you looking? Yeah, I'm looking due north. It's still, it's still on the highway. Debris in the air. Okay. Yeah, JD, get up over the hill. Get up. Okay. Bust it, bust up over the hill here. Let's see what you got when you get up in the valley. Is that water tower in Seminole? Yep. Yeah, that's the Seminole water tower. Okay, it is in Seminole. Some other kind of it, a is, tower. it is in Seminole. It is in Seminole. The tornado is in Seminole. We said it was gonna be close. It is in Seminole. There's the water tower on the south side of town. There's a grain elevator. Power flashes continue. Tornado continues on top of Seminole. And David, it's almost pivoting north in Seminole. Yeah. If you look at it, it's, look it's, at it's, the hook. Okay, it's, it's done the worst thing it could do. It's slowed down and it's lifting to the north. It's occluding. This thing will not die. Let's go back to Lynx. Uh, let's go back to Jim Gardner's shot and take a look at it here. And Jim, take your shot here. Tornado continues on the ground. Guys, keep me up to date on the storm back to the southwest. Going to Purcell. We'll get back on that here in one minute. Jim, looks like it is on top of, of Seminole right now doing some damage. Go ahead, Jim, take it. That's right, David. Uh, uh, man, the whole, all the lights just now went out in Seminole. All the lights. That big two or three big power flashes you saw on the air, all the lights went out in Seminole. It is definitely black underneath that thing right there. And you can see now it's getting more defined, David. Not so much little vortices now. Now it's starting to just form one big wedge tornado in there. And uh, you see the back side of this? Let's move to the back. Uh, pull back out a little bit there you go you see the back side it's starting to come in David it's starting to wedge in to meet this wedge that you're looking at right there in the center of your screen so this is starting to turn into just one big massive tornado now David all right great job Jim incredible job at power flash tornado still on the ground this is over Seminole damage in Seminole Seminoles without power uh, we can only pray that we don't have, do not have injuries we know we have damage we had it live on the air when it was a power flashes now, it's becoming a stronger tornado. 
power flashes. It's becoming a stronger tornado over Seminole. And this is currently the only tornado warning. The other one has been allowed to expire. Okay. The Purcell Storms weekend, David, this one is the strongest. This is the only game in town as far as a tornado. The Purcell Storm has weakened. It's no longer tornadic. It is still spinning. It is still spinning, but this is what we're concerned about. Seminole, Seminole, Seminole. We were saying this 45 minutes ago, and look at the power flashes that continue to pop with the power that is still on. You'd have a lot more power flashes, but the power has been knocked out to this area. Okay, let's go back to link three. There it is from Jim Shot. Look at that, folks. That's, that's horrible. Downtown Seminole, there's your tornado. Just went through Seminole. JD's a we, damage. we know we have damage back to the west. Let's go back to JD. Let's go back to JD. JD, do you have, looks like tornado damage in Seminole. Wow, there we go. Give us an update. David, David, there's a, there's an older downtown building that's just uh, one block north of me that the roof is completely gone. Uh, it's a flat roof building. Matter of fact, here's part of it flapping in the wind right there. Lots of damage, a lot of sheet metal wrapped around things. Power's out, power poles down, trees down. Sheet metal wrapped around everything. Uh, we're going to be real lucky if we make it through here without getting some flat tires. But uh, I don't know if there's any. Uh, all the windows are busted out, blown out. Yeah, windows are blown out. Yeah, it looks like basically, yeah, basically every roof here is damaged. Okay. Okay, so JD, so here's the deal. So the tornado now is to the north of Seminole. It came into Seminole and lifted to the north, JD. It occluded. We have, we have, we have Major, sin significant damage in Major Seminole. Damage to my north. It, the, the tornado is just to your north now. Look at the windows all blown out. He's got one building, it looks like, with possibly some heavy damage. We have light. Major damage to my north. Major damage to his north in Seminole. You can see a hole in the precip okay. in the hook. Okay, so we have a donut hole complete. JD, um, okay, keep going, keep going. We got to get back north. Let's go back to Lynx 3 control room. We have damage, and uh, Seminole's going to need a lot of help. They're going to need a lot of people. They're going to need them there now to help people, f digging them out, helping. They're going to be, again, if you're any responder down here, everybody needs to get to Seminole. Uh, they've got problems, and we've got major damage, at least in a couple of areas. We have light to moderate damage scattered across the city, but we also have a couple of areas that we know that we have major damage. Just showed it to you live right there with JD. There's the tornado now. It's at Highway 9, just east of 377. There's the tornado. Folks, I mean, it couldn't have taken a worse track for Seminole. It came in from the southwest and it right across town. Now it's lifting north. It's just south a little five miles. Tornado continues on the ground. JD's right there in Seminole. We have damage. We have damage confirmed from JD. We had the video live right there just then with JD. And there's the tornado. It's at Highway 270. You're not going to get any better tornado tracking than that. U.S. 377, just east of that a half mile, and right there at 3570. L look at the, there's the tornado. It's lifted north now, another half mile. It, folks, it's not moving fast. It's no. right, there it is. It's right there. There's your tornado. Okay, so Seminole, you're out of the tornado, obviously. It's to your north. If you're still watching us on your phone, in Seminole, you're, you're okay. But remember, if you're going to walk outside, power lines are down. Assume they're hot. Even though they look like they're down, the power's out. You don't know that. Do not walk over near anything. Power lines, okay? If you're walking out, don't forget to put shoes on and boots on because there's going to be a lot of debris. It's back on you the will, ground, You Justin will cut said. yourself. You will cut your feet. Let's go back to Jim Gardner and get an update from Jim. There it is, Jim, right there, just north of town. Take it, Jim Gardner. Well, that's right, David. It's just it's another one that has dropped out. It's not the big one. This is another one that is just now formed. I mean, the big one is, is still It's to the right of this one and back in the rain there. This is just formed just now off the, the front edge to the south of where the one that passed through Seminole is. So this is another one, David, that is trying to form right here. I am just crossed, I just crossed 270. I just crossed 270. I'm just north of Lima right now and uh, headed towards Dixon. And uh, so I just crossed Highway 270. I'm uh, just north of Lima and I'm and south, uh, east, excuse me, west, southwest of Lima here and uh, shooting back to the north. And you just saw another tornado form off the edge of this storm, David, as it passed through and over Seminole. Jim Garpoint live from Bob Mills, Scudders 9, back to you. Okay, all right, great job, Jim. So tornadoes continue to form. Tornadoes continue to form, right? And that's what it looks like right now. You're thinking, what are we looking at here? There's a suction spot trying to develop 
Right here is where Jim's had the tornado. It's right here. Okay, let's, let me show you some quick video here of the greenhouses northwest of Maud that were being hammered with the tornado here. Control room, bring that video up. We had this live on the air. Let's go back to that video here if we can bring it up. Th look at that vortice. Look at that. Look at the vortice. Look at the condensate. This is, this is just condensate. This is water vapor on the ground going over, going over the greenhouses. Watch the trailer flip. Watch the trailer. This is why you leave a trailer and you got to get out of it. Watch the greenhouses. And then right up here, look at the vortice. Watch it moving through. Watch these trailers right here. Watch this right here. Trailer gets knocked over. Trailer rolls. Trailer rolls. It rolls right there. We've lost, I don't know, four, five, six trailers right there. That's when it was northwest of Mod. There goes your debris. And the race is on. It was producing tornadoes, though, well before it got to Mod. That's why we were jumping up and down. There's a tornado there. Multiple vortice tornado. It's a merry-go-round and everything's spinning, 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 spinning hard and fast, okay? All right, let's get back to it here. Lynx 3 control room. And the tornado now is a mile and a half northeast of Seminole. Tornado on the ground, right? Tornado on the ground right here. There's your tornado. And north of State Highway 9. Yep, yep. And uh, Highway uh, 9. And is, about yeah, right a here. mile or two east, east of 377. Okay. So let's go up north here. Back out okay. of this just a second. Let's talk about what's north. Little, um, if you live east of Little, 10 miles, you need to be thinking, oh boy, we have problems, and look at the hook, right? This is our problem right here. This is going into, is going to go just east of Little, in between Little and Cromwell, okay? But if you folks live in Cromwell, listen up. Safe spot, lowest level. And we'll get a storm track on that, and we also have another couple of beasts. Of, I'm just looking down south, coming into western Oklahoma. We're on those, tornadoes on the ground in northwest Texas, coming into southwest Oklahoma. We have trackers down there. They're not here yet. We'll talk about it. Hang on. Okay, um, let's do a storm track on that, Cassie. Let's bring it all the way in, Cass. Let's bring it all the way in. And uh, yep, 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 yep. Good job. Okay, so I gotta from, adjust the speed real quick. Okay, that's fine. And uh, what's this? What do you guys have speed? 20, 25? I've got it at 30. Okay. Yeah. You want to? Okay, so um, all right. So here's a little. Right now, the tornado is going to go east of a little. We'll say Cromwell 720, Okima. Uh, 742. Now remember, these are the best guess at looking at where it's rotating and where we think it's going to be with the speed and where it is. But remember, we are not God. So if we say 720, let's be safe. Let's count on 715. All right, let's not think, well, we got till 725. 720 in Cromwell, Okima, 742. Um, uh, Okmulgee, 828. Preston, 833. Kiefer, 851. Glenpool, 856. Screaming Eagle, big storm, big hook. We have a lot of damage now. The damage path, uh, do me a quick favor here and do this back down to Seminole. What was our, what was our path link? And we know it's still on the ground. So do from there back down to that. How, how long has it been on the ground? We talked about long track tornadoes today. That would be a problem. Yeah, I got it. And uh, go back to Lynx 3 control room. And there, there's, there's a spinning. And it was beginning to produce back in here, was it not? Northwest of St. Yeah, Louis? Yeah, it was, I mean, it was spinning like a top north of Winnet for sure. Um, and then, it so that's about 30 miles. So it may be 25, 20 25, mi depending. That, that is a long track tornado on the ground for 20 plus miles, right? It's not been a, a violent tornado, but it's, it's definitely been a, 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 right now, what I've seen so far, EF1, maybe EF2 damage. For sure, EF1. Okay, multiple roofs blown off, windows broken, of course, gas leaks in the town of Seminole. Intersection of yeah. Maine and Oak is blocked by debris. Okay, heavy, so. heavy damage. Uh, that's going to be on the north side of Seminole. There's damage all over Seminole. It literally rode up the highway yeah. in Seminole and, and it's now lifting north. And it was a two mile wide tornado, and it still is, except it's not a two mile wide violent tornado. Right. It's, it's just... a two mile wide. Okay, let's think about this. It's a two mile, it's a two mile around here. We got a donut. And we have little vortices up underneath that that came right over Seminole. So your neighbor, he's fine. He doesn't have any problems at all. And the guy next door, his roof's gone because he took a vortice. Okay, so here's the tornado. It is now wrapped in rain. I'll tell you that. It is wrapped in rain, lifting to the north. It does not look as good as it did. It does not look as impressive as it was. Let's go to shear rate, but it is still more than likely producing a tornado. It's not as strong. It's not as strong. Let's go back to Jim Gardner. Jim's right there, and let's take a look at it. There it is. Jim, is it on the ground? That, my friends, let's go to Jim. 
And let's see what Jim has. There it is right there. Jim, is it on the ground right now? Go ahead. I don't believe so, David. I don't believe it's on the ground. Uh, I think it's uh, it does still have a prominent cigar cloud going into it. If you look to the right, and you'd see where, uh, well, you know, there it, is, there it is right there. As I'm talking, it just dropped to the ground again, David. It just came down to the ground again. It's just a small uh, tornado, but it is still on the ground then, because I was going to say that to the right of it, as we pull out a little bit, there's a definite still a well-defined cigar cloud being pulled into that, David. Really wrapped up tight. You can see it right there. And, uh, you know, it's still dropping, still dropping those small tornadoes just all around, David. There's the cigar cloud right there. So again, it, it, there's still danger in this. It's not just one big tornado. It is just dropping uh, uh, vortices here and there, David, as it moves uh, to the northeast. Jim Garpoint Live from Bob Mills. Got his nine back to you. Okay. All right. Great job there, Jim. We have the tail cloud, actually the cigar cloud, coming in from the right. And uh, let's go back to reflectivity here on Links 3. And a couple things going on. Lacey and I were just talking here off air, along with everybody else here in the Weather Center. We have the original hook, which is right here. And there might be a new mezzo trying to develop on the southeast side. Okay, it's on the ground again. Let's go back to let's go back to Jim. Tornado's on the ground. I see it in Jim's shot. And Jim, if you can have him iris up, if he can iris up just a bit, uh, there's the tornado. It's right there, live on News Steve 9. Don't argue with him, just do it. Uh, it's right there. And just just yeah. see if he can. Uh, oh, wow, vortice rotating back to right to left. Did you see that? Jim, give us an update of what I'm looking at right there. Yeah, it looked like it was going opposite there for a minute there, David. Uh, like I said, this thing's done so many things, man. Uh, as we've been watching this, I mean, it's just, it's no telling what is coming out of this thing. It just uh, keeps, you know, just keeps dropping vortices here there. But it, but it is starting to get more ragged, David. You can tell just from the last few uh, reports, it's getting more ragged. I think it's coming to the end of its life here. I think it's really coming to the end of its life here, and, uh, you know, which is good. I mean, but yeah, it, just as I'm talking, you can see it uh, just really getting ragged, really kind of falling apart, David. And uh, but man, what a what a multiple vortices, just large tornado here, David. And if this falls apart, David, I might go back to the west here. I can see clearly see Seminole now, and I may go back to the west and try to go through here and pick up some damage if that's all right with you. Jim Gardner, you've got it. Go do it and bus west. Absolutely, get back on it. You're you're just you're. You're, you're one minute away. Absolutely. We've got trackers still on the ground. So go ahead, and then if something else gets nutty, we can go back to that. Go back to uh, Seminole, Jim Gardner. Go ahead and take it. Okay, so let's go back to links three and uh, show you what's going on. We have Jim shot up. We have our trackers still out. And we have stronger storms here. Um, these aren't even severe right. anymore. Right, yes. So, and the storm coming into the metro, thank goodness, <laughs> it did not do anything. We're right on the boundary between bad things are going to happen to we're going to get some wind and hail and okay. We're right on the boundary. There's always got to be a cutoff, right? Well, right now, right now, this storm came into a little more stable air moving into the metro. It didn't like something that it was being fed and it said nope and it did not go. It did not go, which is great news. That was the tornado warning. That storm was severe. Let's get a reflectivity on that. Okay. And uh, let's see what's going on. And this is the only game in town right now. This storm is not even severe down at Purcell. So Purcell, Pink, Cleveland, McLean County, you have no risk of severe weather right now. You have no risk of a tornado. You have no risk of a tornado. Okay, so this is the only game. Um, let's go back to, do we, have, do we have Bob in Seminole? Is Bob in Seminole? Uh, and do we have him on the Gettner? He's at, okay. he's at our sister station. Okay, he's at our sister. Okay. All right, so Jim's coming back into Seminole here. Okay, so tornado warning now. Cromwell. You folks in Cromwell, okay. there's the tornado. Okay, so let's. how far is this? Let's count the miles here. One, okay. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Why do I count? No, you do that. Perfect. Just to confirm, we're doubling up. <laughs> nine. I would have said ten. You're going 9.6. Uh, yes, yeah, southwest of Cromwell. If you live in Cromwell or west or north of Cromwell, um, you've got to be going to your safe spot. You got to go there now, lowest level, center part of the house. Let's go to Jim Gardner. There's your tornado now. Let's go to Jim. Let's get an update on Seminole and the damage in Seminole. Jim, double duty today. You're doing it all, my friend. Give me an update as you come back into Seminole on the damage. Go ahead. Take it, Jim. East side here, and you can start to see trees down 
Uh, let's see, Rich. Hold on, hold on just a sec. Come back to your left. Come back to your left. Okay, follow, tilt down. Okay, follow, the, follow that road right there. Hold it right there on that big building right there. Looks like it had the roof uh, stripped off of it. There's all kinds of debris laying here in town, David. Uh, it looks like there's several roofs. Yeah, uh, that row, yeah, that's a big power line down right there. That's a big major power line down right there. Pull back. Yeah, look at the building. Okay, pull back so I can see what. I want you to come over, follow that road right there. Tilt down a little bit. That big building, all those buildings along here, David, have got all the roofs uh, uh, torn off of them. Uh, neighbor, I see houses down in the neighborhood. Over to, uh, yeah, just the roofs are stripped off. Uh, man, I'm seeing, I'm seeing roof, I'm seeing trees, I'm seeing debris all over this area right here, David. The only good thing I can say, David, is right now I'm looking and, uh, oh, wait a minute, there's a house I think that's got de demolished over there. Uh, let me see where you are. Uh, red roofed house, tilt, uh, Hey, Go Jim, back to your left. Jim Gardner. Back to your left. Jim Gardner, if right you can here, hear right me, center screen. Uh, JD was saying, okay, there's, okay, yeah, there. Yeah, that house, Yeah. It, it got hit pretty hard, David. Uh, there's so much debris on the ground uh, down here. I'm just trying to, it looks like pretty much all the Seminole. old buildings in, in Seminole here, David, had the tar paper roofs stripped off of them okay. and peeled back. Okay. That's what it looks like to be is pretty much major downtown all here we come up to pull back one so I can tell where you are. Rich. Jim, right here. Jim, right there. Uh, the tilt up. Jim. Tilt up. Right here on the right. Yeah, I know. Tilt up. There you go. Uh, tilt up. Where are you at? Go back. Tilt down. Tilt down. And come back to your left. Slowly. Right there. Okay. okay. Here's here's downtown that damage. That is that is downtown. Yep. David, that's downtown right there. Downtown Seminole, folks. Okay, Jim. Now look, Jim, back to your right. There's another building that was heavily damaged with a red roof i just saw it when you went by it's back to the right it's back okay that that roof's gone off that look at that building folks more tornado damage now look at the scope look at the width of the damage lots of damage very wide large circulation this is what we were showing you on the air live when there was multiple vortices so basically a two mile wide area of circulation went right into seminole it slowed down, it stalled, and you got hammered with multiple tornadoes at the same time. Okay, this wasn't okay, just David, the one vortice. Go ahead. Yep, take it, Jim. It's all yours. Okay, come back slowly. Okay, now stop. Now go to your left and follow that road. Follow that road. Follow that road. Tilt right up. Tilt right there. Top of your screen. And top left corner. These got, these got wiped out, David. This is a yeah, these got really, go. really hit hard right through here. Yeah. Uh, major okay. damage through here. Yep. Okay, Jim, that's a major barn. Major damage through here. Okay, that's a but barn. But there's so there's much debris downtown, David. I mean, debris is everywhere yeah. downtown. Trees, now you're getting a good look at the trees, you know. I mean, uh, I ain't sure what this one building is that was right there next to, uh, uh, what road am I sitting over? So that's 270 that comes in. Yep. at 377 270 i'm sitting right over the top of 270 and highway 377 that's the intersection that comes into town there but that whole corner right there david got wiped out on this corner and that's going to be the Lots corner to the southwest yeah of highway 377 and 270 interchange that's right. south there's that intersection right there but just what we've been showing behind me david is just uh downtown's just got debris all over it but uh yeah, this was definitely very, very wide, but again, it's a perfect example of a multi-vortices dropping out of this wall cloud, because there's some areas that are not touched and other areas that are just, yeah. you know, like this, this stripped. David. Jim, that's fine, and right here is, is, is untouched. Look at that, that, that big barn there. Um, so, I, and I want to point this out, folks. Uh, again, every event, there's always a lot of looky-loos that want to go over and see an event. If you don't live here and you live around this area and you want to go see this, do not. You are not helping anybody unless you are a first responder, unless you are part of the emergency network that you're on call or you're scheduled or you're, you're being called in to go help these Come people. If you're just wanting to go in because you're bored, do not. Stay home. Let people get in here and help these people that need to be helped right now. Okay? This was not an EF4. This was not an EF5. Um, it is light to moderate to pockets of heavy damage 
in Seminole. Right now I'm seeing EF1 damage for sure, okay? EF1 damage, roofs peeled back, EF0 up to EF1 damage, and there might be some EF2 damage in here. Okay, so uh, have Jim stay over that shot. Let's go back to radar, links three, and JD, does he have the shot? Uh, Justin, if we can get JD to get his shot ready, I'll come to him. Cromwell, you're in the line of fire. We'll get you a storm track. Tornado continues. There's JD, and he's just to the south and east of it as it continues to spin. There, okay, that circulation is weakening. Yeah, that one's weakened, and the new one is new further one. east, closer to Cromwell. Yeah, it's going right into Cromwell. So there's your first tornado. Bye-bye. Gone. Here comes the next one now. It's going to be just to the north of JD. Just to the north of JD. Okay, Cromwell. Which is tornado warning for you. Four miles south of town. Go ahead, lapse that. Is it going to go on okay. or south of Cromwell? It's going to be very close. Let's see. Uh, no, no, no. If it occludes, if it makes one left turn a mile, it's going in to Cromwell. Dear Lord, we don't need another city hit today. Are you kidding me? All right, so here it comes. Here's Cromwell. All right, so right here. Right here. Okay, so there's your tornado. Let's go to JD. You bring him into it. JD, tornado looks like probably, yes, on the ground, just to your north. You're about ready to make a turn coming up to Cromwell. Um, I'm going to wait for you to make the turn. And I want to see what you're looking at to the north. Go ahead, give us an update. What's going on? I know, get out of the trees there. Bus north. Tell me what you're seeing now. Yeah. Do you see the tornado on the ground? Go ahead, JD. It'll be on your left. Uh, I, I do not. I do not right now. I'm heading north on 56 and uh, to Cromwell, I believe. Yes, and it's going to be just off to my left. I should get a, a visual of it here any minute. Uh, there's a, a little bit of a hill in between us. I did see it briefly on the ground just a few minutes, uh, maybe 10 minutes ago. So I have no reason to believe why it wouldn't be on the ground. So if you're in Cromwell, go ahead and take your, your tornado precautions uh, just like it's on the ground. But I uh, still cannot see it, David. There's a hill in the way. I'm going to holler back at you whenever this uh, terrain flattens out. Okay. All right. Great job. Stay with it. And he's going to come out of the trees. And I want to see what's going on. He's just going through the little community of Butner, it looks like. He's going pretty close to Butner. Okay. Uh, the tornado is going to be on the ground. Let's go to a storm track. Let's go to Lynx 4. And this is the only game in the state right now, folks. This is why we're talking about it. Lots of folks live over here. Beautiful part of our viewing area. Look at the hook wrapping up. We have more. It's on the ground. It's going to be on the ground. There's no way it's not. I can just tell by looking at velocity data. Okay, so here's JD. Confirmed tornado on the ground. Going to, going to Cromwell. It's going to go to Cromwell. Storm track, Cromwell, 723. It's 719. Lowest level, center part of the house. We just saw what happened. Same storm, different mesocyclone. We just saw what happened in uh, Seminole. Seminole got hammered, and uh, I'm just looking at Jim's shot. Lots of damage, lots of damage in Seminole still we're finding. Tornado was, the circulation was two miles wide. Underneath it, we had multiple vortices spinning, and it stalled on top of Seminole. It didn't just move through. It came into town, and it set up shop for about five minutes doing damage in Seminole. It happens. Remember, the atmosphere is fluid. Everything's flowing. Okay, uh, let's go back to, okay, so one more time here. We're Lika, 801. Uh, uh, let's say Okmulgee at 839. Okmulgee, 839, Preston, 844. There you go. There you go. If I live in Cromwell and I have a family there, I have anybody I care about, I'm calling them. I'm going to my safe spot. I'm telling them if they don't know. You might have somebody that's maybe older that's not real, real good with a cell phone or, or they have a landline, whatever. Make the call, okay? Make the call. Tell somebody in Cromwell, if you live south or north of Cromwell, hey, Mima, whatever, there's a tornado and it's coming at you and it's on the ground if you're in Cromwell. And if you live west of Cromwell, you've got to be in your safe spot. Lowest level, center part of the house, okay? you got to get there now. Tornado's going to be right here. Let's go to shear rate. Let's go back to Link Street control room. Go to shear rate. We'll check back in with Jim. There is, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, the tornado. It's going to be right here. Shear rate It's just to the west, northwest of JD. He's almost on it. And I'm looking at his shot. He's coming out of the trees. Cromwell, it's a mile southwest of town. Tornado's going to be on the ground a mile southwest of town. Okay, I'm looking at, where's Vaughn, by the way? Is Vaughn still back southwest? Okay, just want to make sure. Okay, so JD and Bob. Okay, so let's go to JD. And JD, you are hot again. We had your shot. JD, it looks like it's on the ground to me. Keep going. Keep busting north. What do you think? It's going to go right over Cromwell. Or mainly just to the south of Cromwell. What do you think when you look back in there? There it is, right there on your right. There it is, JD. It's on the right. There's the left side of the tornado. 
It's right there. Is that it? Right what there. do you think? Right there, David. Right there, you can see the cone. Uh, it's not. It doesn't look Backside, very strong. Tornado. It's not fully. Uh, it's not fully condensed there, but yeah, it's gonna. Right now, it's southwest of Cromwell. Oh, lightning's picking up. A uh, lot of crazy motion with this thing still. Uh, it's right there. That's the edge of it. Still not getting the greatest visual because of this hill at the trees. Uh, we're gonna ease on up a little bit further to the north. It's gonna. I don't know if you can see it in my shot. Kind of hard to. Uh, Here's the deal. It's right there. Did you yeah, see it, yes. David? Yes, that's a tornado. That's a tornado now coming into Cromwell. It's it is, on the ground. It's lifting more northeast. It's going to come straight towards Cromwell from yes. the southwest. J.D., bus north, bus north a mile. Go one mile north. Go almost into Cromwell. I won't hurt you, I promise. Go, go one mile north. Trust me, go one mile north, J.D. It'll, it'll pass just north of you on the highway. Okay, so J.D.'s going to bus north. Let's go back to, um, let's go back to links three. There's the tornado. Cromwell, it's the lowest level, center part of the house. You have about one minute. And next down the line is Okima if it stays on that track. Yep, yep. Here's Okima. Heads up, Okima. Bigger city, more populated. And uh, again, folks, this is I 40. What's scary is a lot of folks that don't live here, it's, it's an artery. It's one of the main arteries of the country. People that are from gosh knows where travel I 40, they don't have any idea what's going on. They know it's raining and they're going to. That's a problem, right? So um, if, if, we can, if we can get, in the next few minutes, if we can get the Oklahoma Highway Patrol to shut down I-40, if we can get the Oklahoma Highway Patrol to shut down I-40 from Okima back to west of 40, that would be great. If we can shut down I-40, okay? Can we shut down I-40 from west to east? It would be great from Cromwell over to Okima. And folks that travel on I-40 yes. north of Cromwell, that's King's Travel Plaza. Yeah, it's huge. Um, you're used to seeing that. Yeah. And it's going to be very close to there when it crosses I-40. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, Okima is a, a beautiful little city over here. We need to close down I-40. We need to close down I-40. We've already got tennis ball size hail on it. Okay, let's go back to what J.D. shot now. There's the tornado and J.D. shot. And J.D., you're coming up to a better spot there. There's the tornado on your left it is not crossed it is not crossed the highway but it hasn't missed it it's going to cross it here at any time what do you think what do you see back in there jd radar says it is on the ground coming into cromwell right now go ahead give us an update yeah i just caught a peek of it through a little bit of a low spot of valley there and uh, it's definitely on the ground i'm just south of cromwell here and uh yeah, yeah, he's in a bad cell area over here. Cell towers are not the best once you get off in eastern Oklahoma. A little more sparse. Uh, beautiful country, right? Right? Beautiful country. Great place to live. I'm all in on it. Okay, so there's a tornado. Here's the debris ball now setting up. Uh, CC, what do you see in that? I don't right see here. any. Yeah, hold your finger there. It's a little. It's kind of in the in the okay. vacancy. Uh, go to our live. Just curious. Go back to next gen. Okay. That looks like, boy, it sure looks like it's it, It's close. It sure looks like it. Okay, so uh, I think the tornado's probably on the ground coming into Cromwell. You folks in Cromwell, Lois, there's the tornado, folks. It's southwest of town. There's downtown Cromwell. What are our streets here? It's crossing uh, 366 Road. Three, yeah. Uh, yeah, 3660 or 366 and 116. Back down to, what's our east-west here? Lacey, uh, 180. 180, and it's it's very close. That's State Highway 56 that JD's on. Yeah, State Highway 56. It's crossing State Highway. Did it just lift more north? 56, maybe. Yeah. 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 I, if I'm in, I'm not. No, I'm not going to Vegas on it's going to miss Cromwell. It's almost trying to do the same thing. It did, the storm did yes. in Seminole and lift up from the south and kind of come yeah. right into town from the south side. It's, it's occluding. Wow, look at the damage from Seminole. It is absolutely, it's bad. Seminole has bad, bad damage. There are trailers flipped. I'm looking at it right now. Okay, Cromwell, Cromwell, lowest level. There's the tornado. It's crossing. It's crossing Highway 56 right now. Um, if you know anybody that for some reason you can get a hold of that's on I-40 in between Okima and Cromwell, they need to, they need to not do that. They, they do not need to be driving it on 40. First of all, the rain's too heavy and the hail's too big. And it's just, you won't see it coming. You're going to get blinded with big hail and rain, and then you're going to get walloped with a tornado possibly coming from the south. Okay? Not good at all. Okay, so tornado warning continues. 
News 9, tornado warning now. This is going to be for you folks in Cromwell, okay, in eastern Seminole County. Seminole has been hit hard. And then from there, um, it might go... Um, it might go west of Okima, maybe. We are not going to make that call right now. We have you well into the line of fire in Okima. Okay, so tornado uh, on the ground. We think it is right now. Bob's there. Uh, okay, there it is. Let's go back to JD again. It's on Highway 56 right now. Let's go back to JD. There's the tornado, JD, right to the left of the highway. Tornado right there, folks. This is the right side of the tornado above uh, this uh, emergency vehicle. And there's the left side. It's, it's, it's tilted back. It's tilted back. It's a horizontal, not a complete horizontal, but it's a northeast, a southwest tornado. It is tilted. Go ahead, J.D., give me an update on what you're seeing right now. Go ahead. Yeah, you're seeing it. It's getting ready to cross Highway 56 right here uh, near Cromwell. There's a lot of people that kept going north up this road. They're going to be driving right into the path of it right now. And uh, so this thing's going to probably take a pretty close direct hit to Cromwell, just like it did Seminole. If you're in Cromwell, you need to get down, get in your safe spot. Back to you, David. Okay, perfect. All right, great job. Okay, great job, everybody. Okay, all right, nice job. There's a tornado now. It's crossing Highway 56. Look at the cut right here. See that dry air? That's the tornado. This is the tornado right here, folks. It is crossing Highway 56 right now. And, folks, I can't say it enough. I can't stress it enough. It is moving into Cromwell, okay? If it misses you, you're living right and you're praying hard. I'm telling you, it's coming into Cromwell right now. Look at the sinking air. See this sinking air right here? That's, that's sinking air on the back side of the mezzo. Classic, classic formation, right? Saw this a bazillion times, storm chasing all those years. And I'm telling you right now, that is the back side of the tornado. That is the right side of the tornado. And that tornado was on the ground and it is doing, it is gonna be doing some damage. And I'm worried about Cromwell. I'm worried about Cromwell. Let's go back to Link's three. Look at the hook. It's right here. It is now on 56. It's, gosh, it is just barely south of town. Yeah. It is, it is a half mile south of town. Doesn't but, mean you're not getting damaged. But damage look at the wind. motion. Yeah. Look, look at it. Oh, it's, it's, it's doing the exact same thing that it did on 377. It's going into Cromwell. It's going into Cromwell. It's going into Cromwell right now. Okay, look at Jim Gardner's shot, folks. Look at the damage from Seminole we've been talking about here. Cromwell, tornado for you. It's imminent. It's knocking on your front door, but don't open it. Yeah. It's coming into town right now. It's coming into town right now from the southwest. JD's there. Bob's there. We've been talking to him live. We've been talking to him live. Tornado now coming into Cromwell, crossing Highway 56. Crossing okay, Bob 56. has debris in his shot control room. If we can take room 125. 125. That's Bob, who's right there with JD. Well, and yeah, you can see leaves and things blowing yeah. across the street. All right, control room when you get it. I see Bob, I think, up at 117. Am I not mistaken? No, sh sh they're routing it in. Okay, go ahead. When you get that shot up, I see debris there it is. in the air. That's it. See it on the bottom of your on the bottom shot there, yeah, David. Yeah, go ahead. That yep. That, okay, there's debris. Uh, leaves. Looks like probably some insulation. This is a west wind coming in. This is debris from the tornado. The tornado's to my north. Look at the west wind. Bob's coming in on the tornado. Can Bob hear us or is no. he in Tulsa? Okay, just checking. Um, we have, okay, look at the wind picking up. He's just a little further north of JD. JD's going right to be in here. that. Okay, have, GD, have JD get farther north. Look at the wind. It's a west wind. The tornado's on the ground. It's right here, folks. Tornado is on the ground doing damage, crossing Highway 56. Crossing Highway 56 now in eastern Seminole County. It's now coming into Cromwell. It's in Cromwell right now. The tornado's right here. That's the tornado. That's the tornado coming into Cromwell. Okay, let's go back to... Um, wow. 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 It's just horrible. Okay, look at the wind here picking up. Look at the debris. We have leaves. We have, looks like maybe some insulation. Okay, not good. Okay, let's do a quick shot. Let's go back to Jim Gardner, get a quick update from Seminole here quickly. Let's go back to Jim. And Jim, real quick here on the damage. Lots of damage down in Seminole here. Lots of damage. Go ahead. Well, that's right, David. This is the Seminole Academy School. And it is pretty much uh, destroyed. The, the trailers are rolled over. The tops are off of them. Some of them are just completely destroyed. Like I said, the, where's that sign at, Rich? Uh, I think it's uh, the Seminole. Yeah, the Academy of the Seminole. And it is. it took major damage. This is on Struther Avenue is where this sets, David. And if we tilt up, you can kind of see a little bit of a path through here into downtown, all the debris. But downtown is just covered up with debris. David, we're going to have to break here. Seminole 
if you got people to live out here, you know, they're going to need your help. Jim Garpro in life. Bob Bell, Scotty is nine. Back to you. Okay. All right. Great job, Jim. They're Seminole folks, and we were jumping up and down. I said Seminole. I don't know how many times today. Beautiful little city, and I am so sorry. I am so sorry, but it was coming right into Seminole from the from the get go. And we were saying over and over and over again, we have not heard of any reports of any fatalities. It's hard to believe we don't have any injuries. Uh, we are checking on that. It's hard to believe we don't. We pray, we hope that we don't, but it's hard to believe that we don't with the amount of damage that we've seen so far with that tornado. Okay, let's go back to it here. Cromwell, it's well, over you. It just went right over town, now northeast of town, maybe by a half mile. Okay, and there it is. And, uh, you know, we, we've got going to have some damage uh, west, west of Cromwell. And it, did, it, did it weaken? What are we doing on radar here? Look at downtown. Look at the shot from of, uh, Seminole. Look at the shot from Seminole. Golly. I mean, there is heavy damage. There is heavy tornado damage in downtown Seminole. And that's sad because downtown Seminole, uh, you know, it's a turn of the century city. Beautiful old city. It looks, you know, kind of reminds me of Guthrie a little bit. Old buildings made of the old brick. They don't make them like that anymore. And I see buildings that are absolutely, uh, basically, not flattened, but maybe one or two walls standing. Right there in, in Jim's shot. We can get Jim's shot up here. Okay. All right. So, once again, tornado warning now is, is going to be east of Cromwell. East of Cromwell. We know we've got damage near or west of Cromwell. We don't know what we have in Cromwell. Has J.D. or Bob gone through Cromwell yet? They're coming into town, from what I can tell. Okay. So, have they, has J.D. come into town? Justin? Is, he said he he's coming like he's into town. Oh, he's coming into town. Coming into town right now. Okay. All right. So, there, uh, control room, get Jim shot up here. Just for a second, control room. One of these. And I know Jim's moving his camera around, but get Jim shot up in our box, if you don't mind. Okay. So, um... Severe storm again. Did that other storm go severe down south of the metro? Yes, and that's what that storm has been colliding. A lot of other storms have been pulling into it, and okay. it's actually strengthening. Okay, so we got to so watch we're, that. We're watching the storm north of Purcell. Okay, yes. so we have trackers on that. We're not worried about it right now, but I tell you what, it is still turning. Okay, so tornado still on the ground, or at least intermittently on the ground, off and on on the ground, east of Cromwell. We've got major damage, at least a 20 mile path of a tornado doing damage. We had a multiple vortex tornado live right here at News 9 from the beginning to the end with that. And uh, let's go ahead and we can lose Jim's shot as he repositions. Okay, this is developing now. It's Okay, here we go. Gosh, it's heading up towards Okima that Cromwell storm is. Surely we're not going to have a third town hit. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so this is going to Okima. You folks in Okima, lowest level, center part of the house. Uh, if, okay, so here's there's the tornado. It's northeast of Bob and J.D., Okay, it's northeast of Bob and JD. It's right here. It's going to Okima. Let's go back to JD if we can. Let's go back to JD, bring his shot in. Let's see what he has in it. JD, the tornado now is going to be to your north and east. Let's bring JD back in here and bring up his shot control room and uh, get an update from him. And there's the, the, the tornado, right? There's the tornado. There is JD's shot. Let's get an update. JD, the tornado now is crossed to your north and east. It is still on the ground, and J.D., the tornado is going to Okima. It's going to Okima. Go ahead. Take it. Hey, I've got some great news, David. This thing uh, must have uh, lifted or passed just north or something of Cromwell because I didn't see any damage at all. But I did get some strong, uh, uh, some strong winds back in Cromwell, so there was a lot of tree limbs and treetops broken off, uh, but they were all of the small variety. All the power poles and everything were still standing. So I, I think they got spared by the tornado, David. We're going to try to jump back in front of this thing and uh, rain Ladies, back to you. All right, great job, J.D. So he just went through Cromwell, power poles down, no. some minor, what, say again? He's, the power poles were still up. Power poles were still up. I don't know what I was hearing. What else did he say? Trees are, tree limbs are down and things yeah. like that. Yeah, okay. you, were, you were positioning everything else. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah, tree limbs, okay. there are some tree limbs down is what he was saying, okay. but no major damage in Cromwell. Got it, got it. No major damage in Cromwell. Tree limbs down, yes, okay. That's fine. We can we can deal with that, but uh, to the southwest of there, the velocity, the couplet was stronger. But still, Cromwell, you went it went right over you. I mean, you were so lucky in Cromwell. Okay, let's talk about our friends in Okima. There's your tornado. There's Okima. We've got the next supercell developing down the line. 
Okay, let's quickly do that, and then guys, I'll come to you all coming up. Let's go back to the line down here, and let's talk about this storm down here. What I don't like about this is that it is getting stronger, and what's happening is we have a hook here, we have a hook here. We have two individual supercells. Tom is on this one. Vaughn has a good shot of that. Okay, yep, let's, and uh, we're, and uh, Vaughn, okay, here, Justin, hang, Justin, come back in here just a second. Vaughn, is he looking at, he's looking at the western hook, right? Yes, and Tom's looking at the eastern hook. We have two hooks, right? Is that what's going on? Let me get verification. Okay, and his, G, his GPS might be off, I get it. Um, let's go to Vaughn. Let's go to, let's get, let's bring Vaughn in. Justin, go ahead, bring him in. Uh, Vaughn, give us your exact, okay. give us your exact location. Vaughn Caster, you are hot, take it. Storm beginning to rotate quickly now. Go ahead, it's rotating. Yeah, uh, David, I am uh, just west of Slaughterville and it is definitely rotating. Uh, and it, 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 it come up really, really quick, David. So this thing started spinning very, I'm right uh, over Slaughterville right now, I guess, just to the west of it. Uh, right where it meets the uh, Highway 77. So this is getting ready to cross 77 here momentarily, uh, probably over I-35 right now, David. Okay, uh, you are, yes, you are just about correct. Great job. There's a wall cloud. It's developing now. This is the next one down the line, okay? This can easily produce a tornado. And if I'm going to Vegas, I'm putting money on it that, yeah, it's going to try. It's going to try real, real, real hard, okay? Let me show you what this looks like on radar. Link straight, look at the hook now developing. And then we're gonna go to Tom. Uh, Justin, when you get Tom back in the mix here and get his shots uh, going. Okay, so here's our problem. Folks, if you live at Lake Thunderbird, to Pink, to Bethel Acres, to Shawnee, I'm gonna scream it, jump up, jump up and down here. Okay, Shawnee, back to Pink, back to Etowah, down to Macomb, over to Tribby, you're in the line of fire because this is going to try to produce a tornado and that is going to try to produce a tornado. Okay? We've got the other storm to our east, but look at the hooks now developing. Boom, boom. I want to point out, this is not headed for Oklahoma City. We're going to get storms here later this evening in the metro. We do have, let's come up to the metro real quick okay. here, Lace. Let's talk, okay, this is, this, is, this is junk right now, okay? I'm not worried about this. It's not serious. A uh, little bit of lightning and thunder, some small hail. But this is not serious. This is thankfully lifting north of the boundary, which the air is more stable here. This, these storms are alive and well because they eat and drink. Their fuel is warm, moist air, and it is warm down here. It is moist, and that's why these storms are living life and uh, they're breathing and, and keeps, they're bringing in all that warm moist air. Go ahead. Keeps Mark. pulling in multiple little showers that go up. So it's basically all merging yeah. into this one big storm. And there's another one that's gone up. Um, further to the southwest near Godibo. Okay. So monitoring that because that's making kind of that northeastern trek. Yeah. Hank, Justin, hey, real quick, you got the little cell uh, near Godibo and all that? Yes. Okay, Hank's on that. He's heading north. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. And we've got tornadoes out in the panhandle. Von shot is getting more uh, impressive. Uh, hey, Jack. Jack, Mills, if you can hear me real quick. Hey. Um, Tom shot. It looks to be locked up. Would you take a look at that real quick? Oh, he is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Okay. So there's a tornado here, and I want to talk about this. Okay. This is coming into Western Oklahoma. Uh, it's taken all day for this to happen, but we had the two areas today that we talked about. We were concerned about South Central, south of the metro, in southwestern Oklahoma. So this is at Wellington, Texas. It's going to go to Vincent. You're going to get big hail up to tennis ball, maybe softball, and there's your tornado south of Wellington. There's your tornado. If you live north of Hollis, you got to be thinking the tornado is coming in and it's going to be on the ground when it gets here, okay? All right, is that the only problem we have out west? I assume it is. The next one is further south, and for now, it looks like it's staying way south of okay. the Red River. All right, so that's good. Not worried about that right now. You folks in Frederick, the hook is well to your south. We're not worried about it. Other severe storms in the north, those are not going to produce tornadoes. They're north of the boundary. Those will not produce tornadoes up here, okay? Yeah, and the boundary's in cool. Eric. North wind's in Eric, so, so most it, of Beckham County is yeah, good to I, go. I-40 North, I-40 North, these are going to be wind and hail producers. The tornado threat's going to be where Marty is and south. Okay, so let's go back to, we're talking about this storm in Hobart. Yeah, it's that's coming increasing. up quick. Mm -hmm. This is coming up fast. Hank is going to bust north and get up here. Fort Cobb Lake, Fort Cobb Lake, watch out. This is an environment for tornadoes. 
We have a low level jet beginning to increase. We are going to have tornadoes into this evening and after dark. We will be chasing tornadoes at dark this evening. Okay? So that's the problem. And that's a bigger problem. Okay, so this is increasing. Hank's going to get in on that. And uh, we have Vaughn here. We have Tom there. Okay, what does Tom have? His shot is still locked. Okay, so Hook developing right here. This is going to Macomb. All right, going to Macomb. We'll do a storm track on that. Let's go to Lynx 4. Stor wow, it's really ramping up. Okay, so here's the deal. Let's do a storm track on this one first. Tribby, 754, Macomb, 8 o'clock. And Okima, we're coming back to you. Tecumseh, 816. Shawnee. Shawnee, you are not out of the woods by any means. Shawnee, 824. You have time, but you need to get things lined up. Think about lowest level. Where's your safe spot? Shawnee, and then down to Seminole, uh, 840 in Seminole. I don't even want to say Seminole again, but Seminole is uh, in this line, right? Okay, Seminole's way over here. But here comes that hook. we got to watch that. Okay, let's jump to the northern storm, and let's get an update from this storm here. Uh, Etowah, 757, Thunderbird Casino. That's uh, east and southeast of Lake Thunderbird there. Little Axe, 8 o'clock. Uh, Twin Lakes, 823. Tecumseh, 827. Shawnee, at about 833. OBU, 835. Meeker, 851. And Centerview at 906. Possible tornado developing here now. Possible tornado developing where Vaughn is, okay? Let's go to Vaughn Caster. Let's look at his shot. I see tags hanging. I see tags beginning to hang. Oh, underneath it, tags rising. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go to Vaughn and give us an update. Go ahead, Vaughn. Go ahead and take it. You know, this, this area is still spinning. It's struggling right now, though, I think, David. Um, but I'll tell you what, this is moving more to the east than it is to the northeast um, because I'm watching it come right at me, and it's going to pass to my south. So uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pass to my south, um, south of Slaughterville, or maybe right over Slaughterville. So we're going to keep watching it. Back okay. to you. All right. All right. Yeah, hey, you bet. Thank you. All right. Hey, great job. So Vaughn's right there. He's looking at the southwestern storm that is now crossing uh, I-30. Wow, look at that shot. Okay, boy, it is, it is going to Okima. Okay, so yeah. if this produces, Vaughn will be there. Um, who, who is in? I'm, I'm showing Okima. Who, who shot is that right there? Oh, wow. Look at Bob's shot. That's Bob. Let's take that shot, control room. I know it's freezing up off and on. That's okay. And this is coming right to I-40 and Highway 48 yeah. right now. Okay, there it is. Okay, folks, there's, there's Bob's shot. And again, Bob, these are our other trackers out of our sister station. We've got 15 trackers out here today, uh, more than any other station in the country, I promise you. Okay, so there's the wall cloud. Wow, that is bad. That is bad. Let's go to Lynx 3. Okima, Okima, Okima. We've been saying it. you got to go. Safe spot. Uh, it is crossing I-40 right now. It's crossing I-40. And look at the, well, the hook's a little bit messy in this yeah, last update, right but here. I'm telling you, it has been it's right here. very intense. There it is. There's the tornado. If it's on the ground, if it's on the ground, is Bob in our system? We see it KO. Okay. And JD's coming in from, he's just, just behind Bob there okay. on I-40. Hey, uh, hey, Justin, do me a favor. Tell, K, tell KO that we need uh, JD to stay with us. Okay, let, him, let them know that we, we got to keep him on our side of the state for now. All right, so uh, there's JD. We have his shot. Okay, he is. It looks like it may be on the ground, David. What do you think here? Right where Bob is located. Yeah, it, in his Bob's shot, on the edge of it. It would be debris just north of him, potentially. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah, it's right here. Okay, so lapse that. Go back to debris yeah, detector. Yeah, just east of him. Okay. Go ahead and lapse that. Let's just see what it looks like. So we lapse can get a this. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Lapse debris detector. Okay. Because I know what you're talking about. There's a couple areas of weakness, though, I wanted to see. I, you're thinking it's that? It's cl it's close. It's in this. Yeah. It's, in a, it's very near the, or, the vicinity, or, yes. Or maybe right here. Basically where Bob's GPS location yeah, is yeah, showing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Th this is another negative. Yeah. Another negative over here. Okay, I, I think you're right. I think it's right here. And that's where the circulation is the most intense. Yeah. There it is. And that's it's Highway 48 in, yeah. and I-40. Okay, it's just to his south. Okay, so Bob's right there. JD's coming up behind it. Let's go back to JD's shot. JD is on I-40. Wow, it is right over JD and Bob. JD, you are in it. The big, hot, red bullseye's looking right back at you. Go ahead, JD. Tornado's going to be probably on the ground, either on I-40 or close to it. Go ahead, JD. Yeah, 
I can't really tell where it's at. I've I've lost uh, all my cell signal, so I'm getting some strong winds right now. I can't tell if it's just north of I-40. I see a lot of wrapping around just north of I-40. Uh, I can tell you that there was a little bit of debris along I-40. It's right here. Um, but I don't think it was from a tornado. I think it was just actually from the wind. Yeah. So it's, we're it's starting right to get hit with a few things right now. It's JD, we're going to try to. Can you tell me where this thing is? Yeah, JD, I can. It's, it's, yeah, JD, it looks like to me it's going to be on or just barely north of I-40. First radar says that, and also the caller on the thing to your left is on, and that thing is rotating from left to right. So it's going to be on or just to the left of I-40. It looks like to me. I think you're looking right at it. I think it's wrapped okay, in I rain. Think I think that's it right there, David. Yes, I, no, you are right. I think that's it right there. Yep, that's it. That's the tornado wrapped in I'm rain. Gonna try yeah, Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to try to get you a, a, a better shot here by backing it down this uh, embankment here. So, so yeah, that, that should be it right there. I see it going around like a merry-go-round, like a uh, carousel. Yeah. yeah. That's it right there. It's yep. just to the north of 40. Okay, and I'm at 40 and 48 intersection, David, so people know. They, I, need, to, they need to stop traveling if they're on 48. Absolutely. You're at Highway 40 and I-40 and Highway 48, and he's looking off to east, east, northeast. That's the tornado. Look at the motion. The trees are blowing. He's on the back side. This is where the tornado is rotating from left to right. It is north of I it's on and north of I-40. Just to the southwest, 4.2 miles from Okima. Okay. All right, let's go back to Link 3, talk about velocity data, what it looks like. And there's the tornado. Just got there's, another scan. Yeah, there, there it is. Go. Just like what we said, right? We looked at a shot. We didn't need radar because we know what we're looking at here. From the visual, I could tell you where it was, and it was north of I-40 just because the way of the whole thing was moving, and I can see that cut there, right there, boom. Okay, so that's where we thought it was. Radar confirms what we were saying, east of Highway 48. Okay, here's, here's Okima, one, two miles. Are we three miles west-southwest of Okima? If you live in Okima, west of Okima, tornado safe spot, lowest level, center part of the house, you gotta go now. You have to go now, you cannot wait. Now, is this gonna miss Okima? Possibly. It's trying to wobble and trying to occlude and lift a little bit farther north. That's been the trend today. Everything moving off to the northeast, and then in the, when the thing really starts to produce, it makes a left turn. It's called occluding. It and happens you, a lot. You can see the wind there in Bob's shot. He's, he's there further north than JD. He's got a, looks like his winds are out of the south. Now, what are his winds? I can't tell in that shot, but uh, yeah, okay. So there's the tornado, or there's where it's going to be. Um, right there, let's go back to uh, debris detector. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. Tornado warning continues. You folks in Okima. Um, I mean, it's definitely not debris south of Okima. No, that's what you're no, thinking no, no, at home. But. No, 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 that's, that's not it. Okay, I don't see, golly, it is spinning though. Wow, okay. Uh, Lace, I tell you what, I just saw what Andrew was doing. Go back to velocity and go to base. Okay. Just one more time. Okay, then back this up just a second here. Watch how fast this includes right there. Okay. We were looking at that. I just I just saw that shot. Okay. So it's 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 gonna it's hang on. There's a tornado. Okay, it's gonna miss Okima. I mean, right? Unless it just to the west. It's very I mean, close. west yep. sides of, of town, west of Okima. But we're talking about I mean, you're going to have possibly wind damage in Okima, but if you live west through north of Okima, there's the tornado. It's right here. Gosh, right where Bob is. Yeah, that's why I keep looking at his shot. Bob um, has no fear. Bob has no fear. Um, again, that's the difference between really, really good storm chasing and <laughs> really crazy. But he is right. He is right there. Uh, he is reporting, though, for our sister station in Tulsa because we overlap into o Okima, okay? But Okima, the tornado is going to be just to your west and northwest, okay? JD has it in his shot. It's right here. It is right on top of Bob. Okay, look at Bob's winds now. Look at his wind. See how the wind's blowing into him? Okay, and Bob is, uh, Bob is looking east. The tornado is east of Bob. Wow, okay, so the tornado... Oh, hang on a second. Hang on. Bob's getting some crazy wind right here. Bob, we can't talk to Bob, correct? Correct. I'd give anything to talk to Bob right now. Okay, so we have a west wind. Uh, okay, so, okay. Uh, here's, okay. The tornado is, 
Is that debris? We have leaves and stuff? I can't tell. Okay, so this is on the west side of Okima. Yeah, He's that's a, leaves, that's leaves. That's leaves, so uh -huh. we, we think we've had a tornado at least on the ground here off and on. Okay, so the tornado is west of, of Okima. Here's Bob's GPS, right? And he's right here, just so it's right, gosh, folks, it's right here. It's on the west side of town. It's on the west side of Okima. Okay. Wow. It, uh, Okima, safe spot, lowest level. Looks like it might be a little broader on that last update on velocity. Look at the, look at the area of spin. Okay. So All right. Huge circulation. Yeah, big circulation. Looks like Since it might have Seminole. weakened. Might have weakened Seminole. I might, might, might have weakened slightly. You're, I'm repeating things that you're now saying. Okay. Let's go back to let's go to let's go to the news desk if we can, and uh, let's check in with uh, again you guys. I know uh, we have crews on the ground. We've seen the damage from the air. Let's do a quick update. Go to the news desk, and uh, then we'll bring it back to me here in just a minute. Go ahead, guys. Yeah, we saw those heartbreaking images coming in from Jim Gardner up in Bob Mills Sky News 9 over Seminole, showing widespread damage. A lot of the damage in the Main Street area, downtown Seminole, and that includes the Academy of Seminole, one of the schools there. Yeah, and I've just been talking with uh, with with Paul Campbell, who started the school basically there a few years back, mm -hmm. and uh, he was telling me that there were people there at the school when the storm came through. They went to the safe room, and the safe room right now is pretty much the only thing that's intact from the Academy of Seminole. So um, our hearts go out to, uh, to all those uh, in Seminole, including those who uh, rode this thing out, and the, the Academy of Seminole that uh, looks to be decimated from, from Jim's pictures right, right there. Quite a few portable buildings in that area. Yeah, and, and obviously the, the, the safe room was that, the brick and mortar, and it was uh, and it's where everyone was. So uh, we do want to go uh, get, get more information now from Seminole, kind of get an idea of uh, the damage from the ground, and we do have a crew there. Felice Romero is standing by for us. She's just one of our crews, our News 9 crews there in Seminole right now. So Felice, what are you seeing? Yeah, a lot, a lot of damage, guys. We are near Phillips Avenue, and as you can see behind me, this brick building is completely destroyed. The tin roof is down, and we had some some tape in, in guiding traffic. Now we are told by OHP that they have troopers coming down to Seminole to help, but we have several power lines down. There's a lot of trees just coming into downtown. There was a lot of streets that were blocked off completely by debris. We had to take some back roads, um, but as you can see, a lot of traffic, a lot of first responders here trying to get people to safe spaces. There's some damage to the Sonic nearby and then of course that brick building across the street but I mean I just spoke to one woman she tells me that she was actually at work just down the street closing the store and running running to her apartment so she could get to a safe space uh, so a lot of people here shucken up a lot of damage but the good thing is right now there are no reported injuries now we'll bring you more as we find out more reporting live in Seminole Feliz Romero Oklahoma Zone News 9. Yeah and a while back I I was talking, Felice, thank you very much for talking to uh, to Robert, manager there at the AutoZone in Seminole, and he basically said that uh, he knew the storm was coming. Uh, he had enough warning. He sent all his employees home. He started securing the AutoZone, securing all the all the entrances and the doors and all that, and, the, and the, basically the tornado was right on top of him. So, uh, you know, super quick. So he, he had nothing to do but to, to run to a back room. He went to the back bathroom. He said he thought that was the safest place to be. And it was. And it was, yeah. And he, he got under the sink and he rode the thing out and he said that the roar was deafening. He had never been through a situation like that. And I talked to him on the phone about like 30 minutes after it came through and he said, you know, he's just now calming down. But uh, he's thankful there's not there's, there's not much damage uh, to, to the store. He said, he said the outside, the, the auto zone sign looks like a beer can. That's what he okay. said. But he's he's well, thankful to be that okay. Be yeah, for sure. absolutely. We are hearing that some people are stuck in a cellar right now. Some people are trying to get out to their location to rescue those people because there is a smell of, of natural gas um, in the air in that area. So they're trying to get those people out. This is some video shot earlier on from Jim Gardner up in Bob Mills Sky News 9. You can see just some of the damage there in Seminole. I talked to a Zachary Billy who lives there uh, and was working there in the time, and he says everywhere around Main Street is damaged. A lot of the houses and buildings, but all over town there are signs that are down and trees that are damaged. A lot of power pole, uh, poles were knocked down as well. A quick look just right now, OGNE services a lot of that area, and OGNE has 11,434 customers without power. 
a lot of those in the Seminole and also the Mod area. The Mod area, we brought that to you live right here on News 9, the tornado as it was going through when we saw damage there. As yeah. far as any injuries or fatalities, because that is always such a big concern for all of us, we have our crews, they are calling, they are checking. Understandably, first responders are very busy right now. So we haven't got any word one way or another, but but nothing, we, nothing we haven't new heard to anything pass so along. far. So, so that, that that, that's the good news uh, on the injury front. But uh, David, when you're looking at the, the damage here, you're, you're thinking EF1 and maybe pockets of EF2 yeah. for Seminole. Yeah, absolutely. EF1 for sure. Winds upwards of 100, 110 miles per hour. There might have been some EF2 damage, okay? So, yes, no doubt about that. All right, guys, we got to get back to it here. We're talking about new uh, big storms coming out of the Texas Panhandle into Harmon County in southwest Oklahoma. And, uh, we've again, there's a lot going on. We have tornado warnings now coming into Harmon County. Uh, there's Val right here, Marty Logan. This is going to have tennis ball to baseball size hail, okay? And we'll get Marty shot up. Val's right here, looking right at it. Let's go to Val Caster. Let's bring Val Caster into this, and Val's looking off to the northwest. Val, tornado warning for your storm uh, down near Gold, and this will be coming into Oklahoma down north of Hollis, and that will be a tornado warning here. It's coming across out of Texas right now. Go ahead, give us an update. So, yeah, David, we are uh, right... Right now, we are about five miles northwest of Hollis, and we're looking straight west. And what you're looking at is the lowering with this storm in the base of the storm. So right now we are probably five, six, ten miles maybe north of the front, the boundary. But the storm now has turned right and turned east. So we're thinking eventually it's going to start getting more and more juicy air from south of the front, possibly even pull the front up to it. Uh, but it's, it's warned and it's rotating up above. But And we're watching it. Just doesn't have a huge lowering with it at this time. But... Uh, We'll keep her on it, David. Well, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, thank you, Val. I appreciate it. Okay, yeah, Greg, you're absolutely right. Have him just, just drift north on that uh, tail end Charlie right there, and we'll keep an eye on that. All right, so this is a storm Val's talking about. Uh, it's a little bit elevated right now. Um, we'll see what it does, but tornado warning on that. Let's go back to link three, and that's that storm right here that Marty is on. And uh, we'll get Marty back in here in just a second. There's Val, and this is a big, big storm coming into western Oklahoma. And this is in a tornado-rich environment, okay, in the west, okay? But what's the storm doing in Texas? Does it make it run towards the border here? So far here, I'll lapse it for you. All right, it's, it's, it's going to make it. Eventually. Yeah, it's, you folks in Frederick, in Hollister, Chattanooga, the atmosphere down here is very conducive for tornadoes. And it's very warm. It's very muggy. So you folks in Frederick, um, Altus, uh, Snyder, to Cash, to Lawton, Chattanooga, Ranlett. You don't have a whole lot of time. You've got a good hour before it crosses the line. But then, this is going to be a nighttime tornado as it comes out of the Red River. Frederick, Chattanooga, Cash, Lawton, Temple. Okay. All right. So let's go back to... Oh, okay. Let's look at Macomb, David. Um, yeah, let's go back to the city storm. here. Stay with Link 3 because this one just continues to yeah. become more it was larger in here. size. Okay. And look at the hook. Yep. Tom's, Tom's right there. Yep, let's go to Tom Pastrano. Ooh, look at the ooh, mezzo. Ooh. It's, it's wow. got a just huge north of mezzo. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to Tom Pastrano. And Tom, you're right where you should be. You're looking. Okay, that's okay. I know his shot's frozen. Okay, I want him to talk though. It's okay. It's all good. Go ahead, Tom, give us an update. You're looking back. Uh, I don't know exactly where you are. You are going to be just south of uh, Tecumseh there, looking off to your northwest, it looks like. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm actually uh, driving toward the east. And to my north, I can see a pretty substantial lowering. Um, it is partially wrapped in the rain. I have noticed that the lightning is really increasing, which sometimes is a sign of a stronger mezzo. So we're going to be turning towards the north here in about one minute, and I'll get you a better shot. Back to you. Okay, all right, great job, Tom. Well, here's the deal. Your storm is the southern storm, so it's not being impeded on to the south, but you do have the northern storm. Folks, this is going to try... Okay, let's talk about Tecumseh. If you live in Tecumseh or south of Tecumseh, you need to be thinking about a safe spot right here. Here's your tornado developing right here. It's right here. It's wrapped up. It's going to go right over Tecumseh or just south of Tecumseh, okay? So listen to me. If you're at home, there's a developing tornado. Tom is there. It's going to go on and just south of Tecumseh. There's going to be 
We're going to drop a tornado warning on this. We'll get a storm track on it. And folks, from there, it's going to Earlsboro. You folks in Earlsboro, two nights ago, had the tornado just south of town, right? An EF1. We're going to do this again. I hope not, but you need to be thinking about it, right? There's your hook. Tornado is right here. See the inflow notch, right? This thing is breathing and eating right here. It's pulling in warm, moist air right above Tom's head, and it's going right into it, right? This thing is breathing and eating right here. It's alive and well, and it's a big, big storm with another hook back here where Vaughn is, okay? This is our problem. This is our problem right here. Okay, and that's going to Earlsboro. So you folks, again, if you live in Tecumseh, the tornado developing is gonna be right here. If you live in Tecumseh, down 177, you need to be thinking about going to a safe spot, okay? Okay, let's go back to Lynx 4, doing a storm track, and we have the storm track on the, right now the circulation is fairly broad. Uh, Tecumseh at 8.07. Earlsboro, 819, Seminole, 832, Little, 837, Prague, 849, Peyton at 9 o'clock, Bowley at 906. Right now the storm is still severe, but I'm just telling you, by looking at radar, this is going in the wrong direction, which I'm telling you, this thing is ramping up. It's doing exactly what we, what it, we don't want it to do, and it's getting stronger, and it's getting tighter. All right, so don't panic. Just plan. If you live in Tecumseh, if you live south of Tecumseh, you got to call somebody. You got to let them know, hey, this is coming into town, all right? Let's go back to Tom's shot. Tom is on 177. Let's get an update from Tom. Tom, circulation now, just to your northwest. It's going into Tecumseh. Tornado warning is almost imminent at this point. Go ahead, Tom, give us an update. Take it. Yeah, I got everything feeding into that lowered area to my northwest, and it, it looks pretty significant right now. The lightning is just insane. Uh, but it, it is partially wrapped in the rain, so I can't see underneath the base or underneath the mezzo. Uh, but, yeah, it, there's a lot of motion. He's just about to do something, but I can't tell just yet. Back to you. Okay. All right. Well, great job. Tom's right there. He's exactly where he should be. We are slicing and dicing these storms from north, south, east, and west because storms have changed. They're evolving. Big storms going up. Some storms go away. And there's not just one storm, right? We've got a lot of problems going on right now got a lot of problems all right we're gonna get through it but right now we've, we've got some problems with this storm down here we've already had heavy damage in Seminole I'll show you some of the video coming up so there's where the tornado is gonna be Tom is just south of Tecumseh look at links three folks to see that right there that is right there boy that looks like it's on the ground oh my gosh it looks like it's if it's not on the ground I'm telling you it's a tree hugger yeah, and it is now coming in. Let me just put a it, it, uh, measure this here because yeah. it's close to Tecumseh, four we, four and a half miles southwest of Tecumseh. Yeah, it's a ground scraper. It's a tree hugger. It is. Yeah, there, there, there's a mesocyclone in here that is just above the ground. Okay, when it looks like this with our shear rate, once again, this is uh, a product with our live radar that is only on News Nine. Right, when it's live, it's only on News Nine. There's Tom. There's Tecumseh. There's your developing tornado. Uh, hey, uh, is, is Tom still moving? Is, uh, let's go back to Tom. Looks like his shot might have froze up. That's okay. Let's take his shot. I want to take it and talk to him. Tom, what do you think? And then I'm going to go to Jim Gardner. We're going to go to Jim next. Go ahead, Tom. Give us an update. Wow, look at Jim's shot. Okay, David, there is rapid rotation just to my northwest. I'm trying to get the wrap around, trying to get some hail. Uh, the winds aren't too strong right where I'm at. That's, there's a, a that's lot the of trees. So I can't really see much, but there's, I can make out a left-hand side of something. I, I just got a better view. There's a lot, a lot of motion in there. Okay, great job, there, Tom. There should be something on the ground. Tom, no doubt about it. This is going to be a News 9 tornado warning. We cannot wait any longer. Let's go to uh, Link 3. Then we're going to go to Jim Gardner. Link 3, there's the tornado over Brooksville. You folks in the small community of Brooksville, lowest level, right there, right? Lowest level. I don't see any debris yet, but it's right here. There's a tornado right over Brooksville. It's to Tom's. There it is. There's your tornado. Tornado warning now. Tecumseh, if it lifts and includes, it's called occluding to the north, you're going to get a tornado. If you live in Tecumseh or south of Tecumseh, down 177, safe spot, lowest level. There's Coker Road. There's Coker Road. It's going to be the western road on the back side of that tornado, and then the eastern side is right now going to be 
177. What's this road right here? What's this road? Uh, Old Highway 18. Old Highway 18. Old Highway 18. It's a snake. Right here is a tornado. Let's go to Jim Gardner. Let me show you what it looks like from the air. Let's go to Jim Gardner and Bob Milsky News 9. And uh, we'll get Jim shot in here. And there it is. It's right there. Let's go to Jim Gardner. And uh, I thought, man, if Jim's on the ground, we got problems. Let's go up top. Take a look at Jim. Take it, Jim. There it is. It's tornado warning now for that storm again, Jim. It's stronger. It's much stronger, Jim. It's probably on the ground. Look deep in there again. Look deep. Go ahead. Yeah, that's right, David. We're just uh, coming out from up uh, Asher Way to Macomb is going to be Macomb's about six miles to my north right now, and then we're shooting back to the northeast, uh, back up in there, and we're coming around. There's a tremendous amount of the cloud of ground lightning. This is low to the ground, David. I'm having to drop pretty low to try to shoot under this shelf cloud right there. But, uh, yeah, it's right back in there, David. What we're looking at, we're looking for power flashes. We haven't seen anything yet. But, again, this is, uh, man, this is just almost a replay of just what happened earlier this afternoon here. So we'll keep tracking it, David. Keep you updated. Jim Garpoint Live from Bob Mills, Scotty's 9. Back to you. Okay. All right. There it is, Jim. So here's the deal. This is Jim's shot. And right right, right here, maybe on the right. Go uh, to your right. Yeah, go to your right here. What I see motion. Go to your right. I, I'm just seeing, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get motion here. Trying to look for something that's trying to localize and tighten up. Okay. It's, it's, I know the visibilities are getting hard. It's, 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 it's hard to see. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, there's where the tornado is going to be. Folks, it, it looks like it is so close to being on the ground, it is not even close. I mean, okay, all right, so we'll come back to Jim coming up. Let's keep Jim in that shot. And there we go. There's Tecumseh. There's the tornado four and a half miles south of Tecumseh, west of Highway 177 and Old Highway, did you say 18? Old Highway. Yes, Highway 18. Old Highway 18. There it is. And U.S. 177. Okay, there's the tornado. There's Tom. Let's get an update from Tom Pastrano. He's in rain, which tells me he is just on the outside of the bear's cage or the lion's den. Pick your poison. Let's go to Tom and get an update, Tom. Looking off to your west. Tom, it is going to be at your left window, maybe about a mile, maybe a mile to your west. Go ahead, Tom. Give us an update. You are in dangerous, treacherous driving. Go ahead. I just turned to the right. I'm on Tucker Road. Tornado was right outside my window. I'm getting a tremendous amount of mail right now and inflow. But I'm going to try to get outside of the precinct so I can get you a better shot. But there's definitely probably something in there. It, it looks pretty big. Back to you. Okay. All right. Great job there, Tom. Good job. Stay with it. Tom's going east. Okay. And uh, let's go back to links three. Let me show you where the tornado is. And uh, we're losing light on this thing. It's going to be right here. Tom, it's going to be right behind Tom. Tom's got to get, get north and get back east. Roads are not great. Okay. All right. So let's go back to Jim Gardner. And the tornado is going to be on or south of Tecumseh. And it's going to Earlsboro. Uh, tornado is going to be going to Earlsboro. Could be on the ground at any time if it's not already. So if you live in between Tecumseh and Highway 177 and Highway 9A at Earlsboro, lowest level center part of the house you got to go now let's go to jim go ahead take it jim gardner you're looking right at it go ahead well that's right david it's just off to my north but uh, like i said it's getting really dark out here and uh, we're gained up as high as we can on the camera we've been looking for power flashes still haven't seen whoa that was really close uh but uh man it, boy look at the lightning popping out of this david just the exact playbook of the one we followed earlier this afternoon it had a tremendous amount of lightning in the front of it that is the shelf cloud right there off to the front that you're looking on the right side of your screen. So that tornado is right back in there where you see the rain, you know, the rain curtain and stuff. It's right back in there, David. But again, I'm having to drop really low to get down to even see under there. I mean, it's another one of those things, like I said earlier, you could walk through there and probably scrape your head on it as you walked along here. So again, David, uh, that's the look, look of it. And right now I'm just about, uh, I'm south of Brooksville, Brooksville uh, probably southeast of Brooksville. And uh, what's that road right there? That is going to be Highway 9A again, David, that I won't be coming up to. And uh, parallel and, uh, are flying over 9A here. I have a lot, uh, I got some emergency vehicles down below me here racing around. So again, this is, uh, this is nothing to play with. It's moving your, if it's moving your way, get in your safe spot and stay there until this is over. Jim Garpoint Live from Bob Mills, Cuddy's 9, back to you. Okay, all right, great job there, Jim. So Jim is, again, looking at the storm that it's just going to be uh, over Tecumseh, big hail, quarters, golf balls, 
uh, maybe tennis balls in that storm. Tornado warning continues. If you live in Tecumseh, from Tecumseh to Earlsboro, along and east of 177 and west of 9A, you have to be in your safe spot right now. You've got to be in your safe spot, lowest level, center part of the house. Look at the look at the hook, folks. Let's, look at this right here. There's the lowering. Man, I'm looking hard in there. God. Yeah. I mean, it looks like it could, it's so close. Velocity data, radar data supports that it's so close to being on the ground. So close to being on the ground. Oh, okay, God, it is. I mean, what is going on right, right in here? Yeah, it's getting so difficult to see now. Yeah, yeah visibilities are not good. I, folk, I mean, listen, I chase, storm chased for a long time, and Jim Gardner is, a, is incredible. To be up in this environment with the wind, the inflow, and the lightning, and and all this going on. That's why he was pilot of the year after the May 3rd, 1999 tornado, because he does stuff like that, right? He's good at it and he knows what he's doing. Nobody in the air is better than Jim. Nobody, hands down, hands it down. Looks like the circulation is at Skag City Road and Ruggles Road, okay. that's all how right. you say it there, right along the Little River. Man, I'm just, I'm just looking for power flashes from Jim. Let's go back to Jim one more time. Let's bring Jim back in here. Jim, I'm looking for power flashes. Every now and then it looks like I see condensate on the ground. But I, I'm not sure. I can't confirm that. I, mean, I don't see any power flashes, though. Go ahead. Give us well, an update. That's right, David. It, it's <laughs> it's tough to see out here. I mean, it's uh, it's really tough. But we are we are low, and this thing is a monster here. And it's starting to get that cigar cloud coming into it on the right hand side again. It's starting to form a really good cigar cloud. Let's go to the right. Let's pan to the right, and right in there, you can see that cigar cloud just like the one before starting to form and being pulled in there, David. So, again. This is a big storm, nothing to play with. And uh, if it's coming your way, just get in your safe spot and stay there. Jim Gar Point Live from Bob Mills, got his nine back to you, David. Okay, all right, Jim, stay with it here just a little bit longer. We have a little bit of light left. We're looking for we're looking for power flashes. And Jim's right there. Whoa, let's... whoa, man, I'm in the Okay, hang on a second. Okay, let's go back to Links 3 control room. See Jim banking around there. Folks, here's the deal. I mean, you gotta realize what's producing a tornado is a low-level jet. Anywhere from like three to 5,000 feet up, the winds are like 50, 60 miles per hour. And he's having to battle up against that as he's got, because everything's flowing into this. There's low level winds that are ripping into this. Look at that, wow. Okay, that's, that's gotta be on the ground. How is that not on the ground? That, that's gotta be on the ground. Okay, so there's Tecumseh. There's where the tornado is. It's right here, crossing 177. Okay, it's going to Earlsboro, the way it's going now. I'm looking at Jim's shot, I'm looking for power flashes. And okay, ooh. God. Yeah, Andrew just said check CC and take a look at it, David. Just south of Tecumseh, there where is. that is. That's it. So take a look at that. Okay, go to shear rate. There it is. Watch this. I'm gonna leave my finger here. Tornado, tornado, shear rate, velocity data. Go to CC. It's negative. It's negative. Boom. Tornado. There it is. Confirmed on the ground. That's a tornado. Let's go back to Jim Gardner. Let's go back to Jim. I think that's it, David. That's right it, there. Jim. It's on the ground. We have debris in the air, Jim. We have debris in the air on radar. Three miles south of Tecumseh on Highway 177. Yeah, it's right behind Tom, Jim. You're looking right at it. That's the tornado, folks. There's the right side. Just cross 177. Cross 177. We have debris in the air being detected by radar. Go ahead, Jim. Take it. Well, that's right, David. We're still looking for power flashes, but we got so much lightning out here right now. It's hard to tell between power flashes and lightning right there, but you're looking at it right there, David. That's it. You, it's really so dark right now, you can't see it from our shot that it's on the ground, but it is on the ground, and it is working its way through there, David. So again, don't play around with this one, David. I mean, it's it's just almost a picture, a perfect deal of the one we shot earlier this afternoon. It just, this one's gonna be at night, David, and which even makes it worse. Jim Garpoin Live from Bob Mills, Scotty's Nine, back to you. Okay, all right, Jim, so there it is. And that, that's the tornado. See the dark spot in the middle? The dark spot in the middle, that's the tornado right here. That is gonna be just southeast of, of uh, Tecumseh and it's going to Earlsboro. Okay, it's going to Earlsboro. There's the tornado. It's right here. Jim Gardner has another one of many, many tornadoes today live on News 9. And uh, Jim is the only helicopter in the air right now, by the way. Yeah, yeah, he's the only helicopter in the air right now tracking tornadoes almost at dark. It looks like Harrison Road and Little River Road south of Tecumseh. Let's go back to Link 3. There's the tornado right here. It's this. Like Lacey was saying, Harrison Road and Little, Little, 
Oh my yeah, a little river little road. Little river road. And so wow. the intensity, I hope wow. that's not debris that we're seeing on radar, but look how the intensity on yeah. radar there is higher yeah, than crazy. the surrounding areas. Wow. And I'm sober too. That was, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking completely fine. All right, there you go. Look at this right here. That is it right there. There's Tecumseh. This is going to be just south of Tecumseh. Here's the tornado. It missed you folks in Tecumseh. Here comes Vaughn in from the east. Uh, here's Earlsboro. There's the tornado. Okay, we believe we have debris lofted in the air. We can see it on radar. Jim Gardner is still looking at it. Okay, so there it is right there. That's going to be the tornado. And uh, seven miles. There you go. Seven miles southwest of Earlsboro. Let's go back to Jim Gardner one more time. I want to see it from Jim's shop control room. Let's take Jim. And Jim, it looks like it's still on the ground, or if it's not, it is certainly close. As you look at that tornado, go ahead, Jim. Give us an update. Well, that's right, Dave. What you're looking at is the back side of that uh, storm that the tornado is in, and you see how it kind of wedges in to the back of that rain. It wedges in and go, go to the right, go to the right, and then that tornado is right down in there. There it is right there, David. There it is right there. So, again, it's just kind of classic like the other one was, David, and this is uh, nothing to play around with. We're still look for power flashes, but we're getting rain wrapped around us, and so we're bugging out of here. We'll talk to you later. All right, great job there, Jim. So, Jim... Still watching this thing. Big storm. Lots of wind with it. Okay. Jim did an incredible job today. Hats off to Jim. I owe him dinner. Doing a great job. He was all over this thing from start to finish. Minute by minute, blow by blow, mile by mile. When all the damage was going on, I'll show you some of that damage coming up and the video from Jim. All right. So Earlsboro, line of fire. That's the bullseye right now. There's the tornado. There's the tornado. Now what's going to happen here is this little feature here is part of the flanking line and there we have another mezzo that's not doing anything too crazy. We're watching that. Right. There's not really any circulation back to the no. west. Uh uh. It's, it's going to be mainly mid level. There's your tornado. Golly, it's almost turned hard right. And that has just looking down the road at Seminole. I mean, think of the folks that are outside right now assessing everything. Not saying it's going to Seminole, but man, this is, we're talking five, six miles to the west of Seminole. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Folks in Seminole, I, yeah. And people, I, it's coming. All right. So here's Seminole right here. You've already been hit hard. We've already got. We've already had one tornado on the ground all through here today, right? Yes, yeah, so and people just left exposed from yes. what happened a couple hours ago. So here comes the next storm. The tornado is going to be right there, southwest of Earlsboro, and it's moving towards Seminole. Oh my gosh! All right, we said this earlier. Tell me it's not going to happen twice. All right, let's go back to Lynx Four. We'll do a storm track. And what's going on in Southwest Oklahoma? Anything I need to be? Val and Marty are right there underneath, looking right at it. Justin for Southwest Oklahoma. Tornado warning continues. Okay, we'll get back on that here in just a second. Okay, um, okay, so this is where the tornado is. Tom's here. There's your storm track. Harjo at uh, Earlsboro, 824. Seminole, 836. Seminole, 836. And the time is, uh, what time is it now? Sorry, somebody's it's trying to... It's 8, 8.20, but the, yeah, they're, they're going to get heavy rain, storms. I mean, they're getting heavy rain right now in yeah. Seminole. Lightning for folks that are trying to get out with any rescue efforts. Right, right. Okay, so yeah, and you saw the people driving into Seminole. People are trying to help people cover up roofs, pick up damage, pick up debris, pick up whatever was blown out of your house. We get it, but folks, this is coming into Seminole, and, and it's raining in Seminole now. So it's already raining there. And then from there, we have the tornado possibly, which is right here. Okay, so I see Val's shot. I'm looking at Val's shot here. I, is, that, is that producing a tornado? Is that a tornado or is that just a, a, a scud attached or what is that? That doesn't look like it's a weakening area of rotation. Look at the dust on the ground back there. All right, Val, go ahead. Hey, Val Caster, we have yeah, you so on. What? There it is. Is that the tornado? Yeah. No, David, what's going on is it's a weakening area. It, it's the rotation with this storm is elevated, but this is back behind. The gust front wraps in behind. That's a funnel that's actually weakening and getting more ragged looking. Uh, the dust you're seeing over there is kind of detached away from where the funnel is. Uh, but, uh, you know, it could be, you know, some of that circulation might be, you know, have reached down towards the ground to kick up that dust. It looks a lot more like RFD, but we're watching it to see. Right now, I don't really see any of that dust rotating. Uh, put it on the, the dust real quick. So that funnel just dissipated up above, and you know, we figured it was going to do that because it's basically occluding 
Uh, there's a big surging gust front right now out ahead of this storm. The storm is north of the boundary, about eight miles or so. But uh, nonetheless, it's still rotating, David, strongly up in the air. And zoom up in that way back there. So we continue to get these areas. Look at that shot right there, too, way off to the northwest. Yeah. Okay, so, about, so yeah, go ahead. That's rotating up above. Okay, yeah, no, no doubt about it. Okay, so Val uh, is in southwest Oklahoma along with Marty Logan on uh, these storms down there. We'll, we'll do an update. We'll do a storm track here coming up in just a second. Okay, so there it is. Uh, okay, let's run through this here. Uh, Bob uh, Moran, Moran, excuse me, uh, 826, hope it didn't offend you. Harmon Field, 906, Mangum, 906, Martha, 923, Granite, 927, Lake Altus, 935. How about Hedrick, 10 o'clock, and Hobart at 1007, Roosevelt at 1011. Okay, the storms at El Dorado and Olusti and Altus, these are not severe yet, but they're getting stronger, and these are in an environment they could produce tornadoes. These are severe down here, with tornado warnings confirmed on the ground southwest of Vernon. Those are headed towards Loveland, Walters, Ranlett, Frederick, Elmer, El Dorado. You're going to get severe weather. It is developing right now and or it's coming out of Texas. Okay, so one storm to the north, though. We're talking about, and the big storm down here, Davison 942, Frederick 1003, and Hollister at 1015. Okay, control room, let's do this quickly. Let's take a look at um, some of the damage from Sky News 9, just from a little bit ago from Seminole. We'll do this quickly, then we'll get back to the city here. Get that video ready. Just Let's go back to Link 3, but when you get the video up, hit it. There you go. Lots of damage in Seminole. We have the one tornado, tornadic storm headed toward Seminole again right now. We won't stay on this long, but... Lots of damage in Seminole, some of it light, some of it heavy, with buildings, um, basically one or two walls left or standing, lots of roof damage. It was a two mile wide area of circulation, actually about two and a half miles wide. The mesocyclone was two and a half miles wide, pr producing intermittent tornadoes, dancing around like a merry-go-round around this big area of circulation. We were talking about and jumping up and down Seminole, 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 and unfortunately, it went right through Seminole. We've got a lot of damage there. All right, so it's been, a, it's been a crazy afternoon, now going into a crazy evening. Let me show you some of the greenhouse video. And this was also live on News 9 from Jim Gardner when it was coming through Maud. And it was northwest of Maud on the northwestern sides of town. This was live on the air. We had this thing live for like 30 minutes, right? And watch it. Look at the vortice. Look at the vortice. Look at the condensate develop. Condensate forms like that. The pressure's lower. It's going through greenhouses. Watch the trailers where people live. And uh, again, watch the greenhouses being destroyed. Now watch the trailers here. This is why we say you have to get out of a trailer. You cannot stay in a trailer or a mobile home. Watch these trailers in here. There goes the first one toppled over. There goes the second one. That one's rolled and there goes the debris. We don't know if or people are in there or not. We don't know the answer to that right now. If they were, that is not good. Okay, let's get back to it here. Look at the tornado there. And it was dancing, it was dancing all day. All right, so here's what's happening now. Earlsboro, the tornado is going to be just to your south, crossing 9A. Vaughn's right there. Here's Seminole getting in on some heavy rain right now in Seminole. There's the tornado. It's back near Harjo, right? Back near Harjo. Tornado there. Here's Vaughn coming in from the north. There's the hook. Big hail and wind to the north. Big hail and wind to the north. All right, what, what does Sheer It look like now? While we're looking at this, David, the Seminole County Sheriff um, asked that we advise people to avoid the area because he said first responders are actually having a difficult time to get to those who are injured. They're trying to do a grid search. That, so with folks flocking in, that's yeah. just what they're asking. And, and of course, right now, the storm is threatening, threatening Seminole again. And, and that's what we said on the air. We said, no, looky, Liz, if you're not, here's the deal. If, if you don't live there and your house wasn't damaged, go home, go away, don't go there. They don't need you. They don't need your help unless you're a first responder or possibly friends or family trying to help people. But if you're just going to go look at damage, don't do that. You do not help anybody. You make it worse, okay? Let's not do that. Stay home. Let's help these people out. And how do you do that? You don't go into a tornado scene. It'll be there tomorrow. It'll be there in a week. It'll be there in two weeks, okay? Do not go into Seminole. Do not go into Seminole, right? Friends and family and first responders are still trying to get to the scene to help people and to clean it up. And if you're going in just to go look at damage, 
No, don't do that, okay? Let, we're better than that. Let's not do that, all right? Let's stay home. Let's let the people that know what's going on take care of that. All right, so there's your hook right there, south of Earlsboro. Here's our problem. Here's Seminole. Now, here's the deal. This thing is lifting north again. That's what they've done all day. Every tornado event is different. Some will stay on a bee line east-northeast. Others will occlude. Every tornadic supercell today has occluded. It's moved east-northeast, and it's moved north. And some days when the event begins to happen, you will start to see telltale signs of how the day is going to unfold. If one does it and two do it, hang on. We've got a pattern. That's the flow in the atmosphere. We're, we, everything will try to occlude, okay? So that means that Earlsboro and to the east, you're in the line of fire. Er, Seminole, this hook is going to go north and west of you. There it is. It's happening right now. There's the tornado. If it's on the ground, it's right there. Okay, it's right there. There it is. Okay, let's go. Let's go to. Uh, let's go to Vaughn, and bring Vaughn in here. It's going to be just on top or just south and east of Vaughn, if we have Vaughn Caster. Go ahead, Vaughn. Great job. You're right there, looking right at it, looking off to your southeast. Go ahead, Vaughn. Yeah, I'm trying to get a clear shot here of. Uh, I can see where it is. It's just off to the south of Highway Nine still. Um, th there's a big lowering there. I just can't see because of the trees right now. I'm not seeing any power flashes. That's good. Very good. But uh, like you said, if this thing includes, it's going to whip up to the north and got to be very careful uh, here on Highway 9 uh, how fast it moves back up to the north. Back to you, David. All right. Great job. So Von Castor there on the north side of this. He's right where he should be with the spin that's going on. Okay. Let's go back to Lynx 3. Then we'll go back to Lynx 4 and do a storm track. And uh, yeah, we got to make sure we include, yeah, may, uh, widen that out maybe a little bit, Cassie, because this thing is trying to lift to the north. Um, Earlsboro's not out of it. If you live east of Earlsboro, this thing is lifting almost. Uh, it's moving northeast. It's going to cross. What is this Highway 9 right here? Uh, well, it's also called it's 270. 270, yes. 270, Highway 9. There's where the tornado is. Man, if I'm in Earlsboro, I'm at the lowest level, center part of the house. I'm right where I need to be to be safe and to keep me or my friends and my family safe, okay? Earlsboro to the east right now. The way it looks, this is going to go northwest of Seminole, okay? It, th this is going to try to go north and west of Seminole. It's going to try, all right? But if I'm in Seminole, I'm paying very close attention to this, and I'm thinking, oh, gosh, are you kidding me? Are we going to do this again? Again, we've got, uh, obviously, heavy damage. It ranges from light to moderate damage in Seminole. And the, the tornado path, remember, went from Seminole all the way back to down near Macomb, right? Here's Maud, and it went all the way back down towards Macomb. So the path was about 20, 25 miles up and down on the ground, up and down on the ground, right? All right, so tornado warning does continue for eastern Pottawatomie County, coming into western Seminole County. If you live in Little, if you live in Little, up to I-40, safe spot, lowest level, back to Earlsboro. Let's do a storm track. Let's go to Lynx 4, and here it is. On Lynx 4, then we'll go back to, I saw that, Lacey, on that last update. Man, that yeah. is right over town. Okay, so here's your storm track. Tornado warning continues. Tornado could easily be on the ground. Uh, Little at 841, Cromwell at 903, Payton 908, Bowley 913. How about Henrietta, 1005, and Beggs at 1017, Okmulgee at 1018. Okay, tornado's right here. Now let's go back to shear rate, and radar's got it right over. At, right while over. you're looking at that, the emergency manager of Pottawatomie ahead, County Lace, for just a is saying yeah. where some damage is. So debris path, Highway 177 and Sooner Road, just south of Tecumseh. That's the area we were talking about, just south of where Tom was. Units are en route to actually check a house that's potentially damaged, and that would be at Ruggles. That was the streets we were naming off at U.S. Highway 177. So that would be just south. Um, of Tecumseh that would have been east of Brooksville and that's the same circulation that right now is over Earl's And Tom yeah. says he has a funnel cloud. Okay, oh, go to Tom. Let's go to Tom. There it is. Let's take it. Tom, uh, take your shot here. Tom Pastrano's shot. <clears throat> and Tom, get, there it is. What do you think? Give us an update. Is it okay? Let's go back to Tom's uh, shot. That is not Tom's shot. Tom is in 115. There we go. There we go. Okay, Tom, go ahead. Give us an update. Yeah, I'm looking due right to my southwest. There's a pretty large, fat funnel.
Um, it, it's not on the ground. I haven't seen any power flashes. And I did just have some really strong winds in my location, but they've they've stopped. Okay. He, yeah, it looks like it's occluded. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, Tom, you nailed it 100%. Tom's a veteran storm tracker. and he, Tom, it has occluded. It has occluded and lifted to the north. There's the, the oh, back side. Hey, yeah. David, I got a power flash. Power flash. Okay. Just well, there, to my west-northwest. So that's an occluded funnel. And I bet you the tornado is just to the north in the rain. Okay. I had two power flashes just to my west-northwest. Okay, so... Uh, it's going to be really close to Earlsboro. Oh, yeah, it's like on or just, Tom, it's like maybe a half mile or less east of, okay, so that's where, right by that light is where he's saying he has, okay, so we're going to go with the tornado is still on the ground, he has power flashes, it's either going to be that or roof lake downdraft winds or the winds wrapping around the tornado, but we'll just, it's, it's too dangerous to call velocity data, says it's going to be a tornado. Hey, Justin, if he has anything else, jump back in and we'll, we'll get right back to him. We'll come back to him anyway, but let's go back to Link 3. Great job, Tom Pastrano and Tom is right here and this is the tornado is going to be just a, he said he was looking west northwest it's exactly where he's looking now let's go to velocity data boom right let's go to shear rate yeah we got problems yeah just north of highway nine I just, yeah it, it is occluded and lifted north it, it is on the eastern sides of earlsboro if you live in earlsboro here's the good news about seminole you're out of it all right at least as far as this storm goes here don't worry, there are more storms coming later this evening and overnight tonight. By seven miles. By seven miles. They missed, missed, isn't that unreal? Yeah. Um, so it didn't hit the same place, but Seminole, you had a tornado seven miles away from you. Right here. All right, so there's the tornado. It's now north of Highway 9. It's just barely, I mean, I'm talking barely east-northeast of Earlsboro, right? barely east-northeast of Earlsboro, and that's the hook. That's what we're worried about right now. All right, let's go back to Link Street. We'll do a storm track, and then we'll jump back into southwest Oklahoma. There it is. Wow, look at the, look at the velocity couplet on this. Let's go ahead and zoom in tight. Okay, so Little, you're in the line of fire. If you live in and around Little, if you live up and down or near Highway 377, okay, south of I-40, uh, if you live between Earlsboro and I-40 and Little, right in here, right in here, you need to be going to your safe spot, right? Lots of farms, beautiful country, lots of ranches over here. And let's go, back to, let's go back to Tom, tornado on the ground. Let's go back to Tom now. Tom's looking right at it. Go ahead, Tom. Give us an update, tornado yeah, on the David, ground. I, I just saw a power flash and there's a pretty substantial tornado on the ground. It's just to the northwest of me. And I can't see it anymore, but yeah, 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 here's another power flash. It's definitely there. It's a fairly large, substantial tornado. Correlation coefficient just pegged it. We've got large debris in the air now. Large debris in the air west of Seminole. This is not going into Seminole and about a half mile east of Earlsboro. There's the tornado. There's the debris. East of Earlsboro. There's the tornado. Th there it is. There's the... There's the eye. There's your bullseye looking right back at you. Tornado on the ground now. Tom's right there. Okay, so lapse this real quick. Lace okay, see what it's doing. Just a little bit. Tornado on the ground, Turn east of Earlsboro. Lightning. Lifting north. Andrew, great job over there. I see what you're doing. Great job, man. That looks good. Okay. All right, so there it is. Uh, it's kind of ugly. It's not hanging out. We're going to have some rain on it. And don't, don't ignore this back here. Is that a new mezzo oh, trying to develop on the flank? I was flank? just looking at the debris updated. I know. Um, there we go. Okay. Just, I'm just saying, it wouldn't surprise me. The low-level jet's kicking in, so that's we start, to, we start to get things like that back in there. Anyway. Okay, so tornado on the ground. East, northeast side of Earlsboro. If you live north and east of Earlsboro, let's do some of these towns here. Along Highway 98, there's the tornado. Wow, it is, God, it is almost in Earlsboro. It's so close. we got to be checking Earlsboro. Just make, I mean, it's, uh, yeah. You know, I know, and Earl, downtown's right here, but downtown does stretch out just a little bit to the east. Yeah, the school is on the east side of town. Okay. Uh, multiple homes on the east side of town. Okay. There, oh, uh, by the way, here's uh, from Neal back down to southeast is Highway 3E. Tornado on the ground right here. We have debris in the air detected by radar. Let's go to... And it might be looking like there's a new circulation to the east, too. Yeah, to the east or back to the to west? To the east. 
okay. of where Tom is, oh, back over here? where Vaughn is. Oh, northwest of Seminole. Yeah. Oh, with that same. It's the old, yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's not as it's not as defined. It's not as organized. But there might be an area right here. Right here. Okay. Hopefully this will just stay to the north of Seminole. Man. Poor Seminole County, Pottawatomie County. The last this week has been rough for you folks, and we are sorry. Okay, so there's the debris in the air, tornado on the ground, doing damage right now on the far eastern sides of Earlsboro. Let's do a storm track on, on that, and let's bring that farther to the north here, Cass. We really need to bring that. We need to bring that up towards Centerview, possibly. Let's include Centerview. If we can. All right, so Little, 848. Peyton, 917. Bowley, 920. Okima, 932. Bristow, 1014. Okay, Cromwell, 907. 907. So there's your tornado on the northeast sides of Earlsboro headed towards I 40. If you know anybody that's for some reason leaving Oklahoma City on I 40 or trying to come back out of the east, tell them just to don't, don't do it right now. Um, don't do it right now. So has it, has it made a little more? Well, look how it kind of lifted to the north that weekend, and now the new circulation is actually east on Highway 9 a little bit. Okay, so... That's what it so, looks like to me. Yeah, okay, so here's what's happening. It looks like this is occluded, lifted north, done its thing, produced a tornado, debris in the air. Tom had it live. That's lifting north. And now what we're going to do is the new circulation is off to the east and southeast, and it's ramping up on the northwest sides of Seminole, right? of Seminole. Okay, let's go back to it here. And Tom is here. Circulations right. God, it is still on Highway 9. Yeah, it's almost like that lifted and it's due east. Watch, watch the laps here in just the last okay, go ahead. couple scans. Go ahead. What north, do you think? That falls apart. And then there's a new area yeah, direct, right here. Um, yes, yes. Okay. And look at a correlation coefficient right there. Okay, take that back. So it's north of town and now it's due south. Okay, all right. Hey, hey. Justin, does Tom see power flashes? We have another debris ball back to this, back to his west. Okay, let's bring Tom back in so we can hear him. Just to my north. I'm trying to get a better vantage point. Okay, Tom, here's the deal. Your first tornado occluded, lifted north of Highway, is that yep. Highway 9? Yes, that's Highway 9. Highway 9. And then there's another area that is now showing debris east of Earlsboro on Highway 9 which is right behind you about a mile and a half to two miles. So. Okay, yeah, I believe that. You know, as I was okay. leaving, I started getting, it's gonna win maybe 70 plus, nice. and they were coming from the south, so I had to move, and I moved around. I'm getting, trying to get a better vantage point. Okay. While he's I'm looking all over. I, I don't see any power flashes yet. Okay. All right. Great job, Tom. What do you have, Lace? This is the shear track. We know this produced a tornado south of Tecumseh. We know we had damage, and now yeah. we we know we have damage too, just to the east of Earlsboro, and it's it may still be on the ground. Yeah. We also had. Look at the hook now. We had yeah. We had damage back. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah south, south oh, Tecumseh yeah, on uh, 177. Uh, Tecumseh. Yeah. So damage here. And now we've got a tornado on the ground here at Earlsboro. Same storm. Watch Same. how it lunge like that. I know. Yeah. Folks, these things are mean, ugly, and they're crawling, and they have a mind of their own. Remember, I know when you look at a tornado track, you go, oh, yeah, it moved east, northeast. No, they never stay in a straight line, ever. They always wobble. Now, if you're looking at the whole state of Oklahoma, ah, yeah, it's a straight line. But when we're doing what we're doing, mile by mile, it is now south of Highway 9. The tornado has reformed south of Highway 9. Hey, Justin. And it's a mile closer to Seminole at this point. How close is Tom to that? Because tell him he needs to turn around and look back to his west. It is a tornado on the ground crossing Highway 9 again. You folks in Earlsboro have to be on your seats right now. I'm with you. We're with you, Earlsboro. Hang on. It's right here. The tornado is right east of town. Okay? But you're getting hammered with the north wind rain and some hail in Earlsboro, but it's just to your east, okay? There's the tornado. It's right here. And I tell you what, the way this is going, we, uh, yeah, Seminole's, Seminole's in the clear out of this, it looks like. Okay, let's go back to, wow, okay, go back to, go back to CC. Look at the debris ball now, folks. Look at the debris. When she goes back to CC here, it's going to stand out. It's going to be a big blue 
dot looking right at you. Is that the latest? Okay, take that back just a second. Boom. I don't hear you. It literally went from the north to the south, from the north to the south and intensified. Did it not? Or is this a new circulation? Yeah, well, I, I'm with you because the first circulation here, went I'll north. Take, I'll take CC back. So CC went. Yeah, okay, well, okay, watch it here. It occluded and went north. North. Okay, it's, it's still debris. Yeah, it did. It it's like it circled. It retrograded back to the south. Jan, I saw that, I know. Boom, right? Okay. So it was moving northeast. It didn't want to finish the track it was on. It stopped and it backed up on the east side. Uh, man, I mean, folks, and people live here, right? If you watch it, it looks like it did a 360. Watch that loop. It does. It did it. And, and again, uh, May 20th, 2013. Yes. The year five and more at the hospital, right next to the 7 Eleven. Same thing, did a full loop there too. Which makes me wonder how intense it was and how strong it was when it did that. Yeah, I know. To have that type wow. of motion. It did a total loop east of Earlsboro. Right oh. on Highway 9. Right on Highway 9. We have damage. We have damage east and southeast of Earlsboro. How do we know? Because radar is telling us, and that debris is going up about 20,000 feet in the air. What do you got? Okay. Oh, let's take that control room. Thank you, Jen. Great. Let me show you what the tornado looked like from Tom. This is a power flash. It is frozen for you. This is what it looked like just a few minutes ago. And we'll bring that up and show you what it looked like. Okay. So, wow. We'll get that picture and I'll, I'll show you here. Um, okay, so there it is. There, there's the tornado. There's the tornado. That's what it looked like from Tom when it was... Uh, yeah, back to Just the west. Just east of town, yeah. Just east of Earlsboro. There's the tornado. There's the tornado right here. And That's where, the tornado. where it is now is nice. east-west 121 road just along State Highway 9, kind of nice. in between there. Okay. Tell Michael Johnston, thank you for that. Great job. Great job. Okay, let's go back to, uh, wow, the velocities are coming up on this. All right. Uh, All right, here, I'm going to put it back in, in velocity mode. Okay, what's going on in southwest Oklahoma, guys? Anything crazy in the southwest? Severe or tornadic? I know we got severe. Kind of battery, but a lot more storms developed. Okay, a lot of storms. That's what's going to come ripping up into Oklahoma City later this evening and tonight. Also, where's the boundary in the metro? Are we, are we, still, are we still on the boundary? I mean, has, it's, it hadn't lifted north of us, right? Okay. All right, so here, here's the tornado now. It's a, it's a broader circulation, and it, it's going towards Vaughn. There's Tom. Looking back to the northwest, is it wrapped in rain? There's the tornado. Okay, there it is. Let me put it on reflectivity. Uh, you can probably still see that. Okay, let's get our top Pastrano. Tornado, go I ahead. I was just gonna say, go Vaughn ahead, is on the north side of the second one, the one to the east, and he's getting 60 mile per hour north, northwest winds. That new. Look at that, those wow. two areas. Wow, okay. Wow, uh, top Pastrano, another tornado is gonna be just to your north and east, about three miles. You've got the other tornado probably still on the ground, three miles to your west. Tom, so you are in between possibly tornadoes on the ground. Let's get our Tom Pastrano. And uh, Tom, you're living right, you're living wrong. Let's take it. Go ahead, Tom. David, um, I'm looking to my west. I'm in Seminole. One thing about Seminole is there's no power, so I'm not, there's no sirens. I'm not sure if anybody's getting our warnings. Hopefully they have our app and are listening to us. But it's, you know, I'm looking towards the west. And I cannot see anything. I don't see any more power flashes, but that also could be because the power is out. So I'm looking for any other sign I can with the lightning. Right now, I don't see anything, but that doesn't mean that it's not there wrapped in the rain. Back to you. Okay. All right. Yeah, Tom. And uh, yeah, it's rotating for sure. Do we have Vaughn? Is he with us or is he back to KO? I'm good. All right. Let's go to Vaughn Caster. Great job, Vaughn. Tornado looks like. Vaughn, it looks like it's just to your southeast. Is there a tornado warning on that yet? Is there? It, the warning is kind of including every, both, uh, yeah. both circulations. Okay, the well, way it looks. It's, it's a News 9 tornado warning if it's not. South a little. And folks, this is going to Cromwell. Uh, it's going to try to. Let's go to Vaughn Caster and get an update. Go ahead, Vaughn. Yeah, David. Uh, I'm north of Sentinel on the second rotation that's kind of northeast of that other one that Tom's on. And I was getting about 60 to 60 mile an hour north northwest winds. Uh, just a while ago, and it looks like it's just tightened up. So there's got to be someone on the ground. 
just to my southeast. Uh, of course, I've got now. I'm starting to get hail. Uh, probably uh, dimes and nickel right now, but uh, just to my south southeast, uh, there's something going on right there. Back to you. Hey, Vaughn. Let me tell you, uh, velocity data says that it's it's on the ground. Let's get hey, Vaughn. Stay with me here for a second. It's mm -hmm. going to be one, uh, one, uh, one, two, three, mi two miles, Vaughn, to your east southeast. If your GPS is correct, a little bit of delay here, but uh, it's 5.6 miles north northeast. Uh, Seminole and one and a half miles east of your location. Tornado, let's go to 10 4. Yeah, go, go yeah, ahead. I'm, I'm going to find a better vantage point here, David, um, and uh, see if we can get some kind of lightning shot uh, that, that illuminates it back to you. It looks to me like CC is going negative there too, David, where yeah. that circulation is. West of Seminole. Okay. Well, so, I'm, I'm talking about the one Vaughn's talking about. Oh, see, yeah, the, right here. Right here, yes. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. So, there's your tornado. Okay, Justin, that's going to be another tornado Look right at here. It. There it is. There's a tornado. Let's go to CC okay. and see how the, the, uh, when, it, when it gets in the blue, you've got tornado in the air. When it goes to the blue, you've got problems. Now, I, you're thinking, well, pain, well, no, ignore that. It's got to be in the right spot. That, that doesn't mean anything down here, okay? It's right here. See how that's going negative? It starts off here, and then we go back down to blue. Blue is bigger, larger, and taller debris in the sky. Bigger, larger, and taller, and more debris that's higher up. When you get to the blue, we had blue at the Earlsboro tornado. That, though, is in the yellow and the orange. That is the, the tornado. It's right here. Look at the hook wrapping around. The tornado's right here. There it is. That's five miles north of Seminole. I mean, unbelievable what's going on in Pottawatomie, Seminole County yeah. right now. Well, and, and th these same areas might be having... The, the same, a, a different tornado. I mean, right here, the, the tornado that came two, out of Seminole right. went to here. Yes, yes. So we might have a tornado moving over the same damage area north of Seminole that we had earlier. Not, the tornado's not in Seminole, but it right. lifted north and went right through here. So there's another tornado right here, and then a possible another tornado right here. Goodness. Yeah, t the circulation to the northwest of Seminole has broadened out. It's weakened some. Yeah, it has. Um, it's still circulating, but it's nothing like the one now to the north and east of Seminole. It, it is, but wow. Here, I'll zoom it out and lapse it. Okay, and let's, yeah, okay. Uh, and there's your circulation. That might have weakened some, too. I'm looking at CC. I'm looking at uh, Andrew Adams, 848. Oh, look at that. Yeah, look, folks. <laughs> okay, man, that, that's, that's so close to being on the ground. I think it's still on the ground. And look, we were talking about Cromwell earlier. Yes. Guess what? Because Cromwell missed the first one from, according to J.D., driving through town. Yeah. Did not see any significant damage. No. There was tree damage. Yeah, tree limbs, and um, it lifted and weakened slightly as it came Someone into... Someone has a funnel. All right, let's go. Who does? Let's go back to Val in southwest Oklahoma here, and then we'll come back to this. If you live in Cromwell, go to your safe spot. Okay, Valcaster, we're looking at it. Take it. Go ahead, buddy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we have a funnel. It never did touch down. It's, uh, it's, it's with the occluded circulation here west, west of Mangum. And you can see it right up there. If she'll pan up, tilt up just a little bit there. There it is. What's left of it right there. It's kind of roping out, if you will. Never did see it. The there it is. Included mezzo. Yeah. We've been seeing that all day. Uh, not all day. We just we've seen two of those so far out here. Right. And I tell you what, once this storm interacts with the boundary, it's going to get stronger. David, back to you. Okay. Great job, Val. Stay with it here. This is all lighting up into western Oklahoma. It's going to be a long evening. Going to be a long night. Let's go back to Seminole. And we understand that the sirens cannot blow, cannot be sounded in Seminole because there's no power. And some of those are on backup. Uh, some are not always on battery backup. Either way. They cannot sound those. Look what's going on into western Oklahoma. Lots of storms out here. Tornado warning on the storm that Val is on southwest of Mangum, right? That's going to be northwest of Marty. We're watching that. That's the one that Val is on. He's had a funnel. And we'll get back to that. We'll do a storm track. Let's go back to Seminole here. Talk about our friends here. Now, let's get back to, and again, Oklahoma City right now. I want to point out some showers. And God, those, huh. they're going up a little bit of shear on them. A little bit of shear. Not good. We'll keep an eye on that. Okay, so um, if you're an early to go to bed kind of person, that's fine, but uh, make sure your News 9 app is on your phone and your phone's turned on, okay? In other words, don't go to bed yet. All right, let's come back to Seminole now. You folks in Seminole, let's jump back here. Let me show you where the circulation is. The circulation is northwest of Seminole 
Let's go ahead and zoom on in here, Lacey, and let's do a storm track. Here we go. The hook, Tom is, in, is on the north side of Seminole. The hook is down Highway 270 or, or Highway 9, one, two miles, two and a half miles west of Seminole. Am I right on that? Yes. And then, uh, hang on a second. Yeah, that's the, that's the one that did the loop-de-loo near okay. Earlsboro. Yeah, okay, hang on. Go back to Velocity here one more okay. time. Okay, we're right. I just, something looked weird to me just for a second. Okay. Okay, so I, I, tornadoes on the ground here. Tornadoes on the ground, southeast of Little, five miles, that's going to head towards Cromwell. If you live in between Little and Cromwell, tornado soft, uh, safe spot, you got to go there now. And if you live in Seminole, the circulation is west northwest of town. And it's moving east slowly, but it has weakened some. If I'm in Seminole, I'm going to my safe spot for the second time today. Yes, yeah, especially the north side of town. Yes, if you live along it, uh, it's, it's just not, that's yeah, not it's mess so with close. it. Yeah, so close. And again, and I don't want to be wrong on this, if I'm in Seminole, and if I live from downtown Seminole up to the 377, 270 juncture, I'm going to the safe spot right now, lowest level, going there, I'm going to just stay there. Go to your safe spot in Seminole. Hard to believe we're doing this twice within a two or three hour period. You've already been hit hard in Seminole. We understand. We're with you tonight. But you, you got you to go to the safe spot one more time, okay? Okay, it's west of town. It's a little bit stronger now. Circulation a little bit stronger. And that is a big, that's going to be a strong tornado. Let me look and see correlation what coefficient. Is, it's, it's showing up it, yeah. now. Here, the, here's, here's our debris. Does Val have a tornado on the ground? So the, the debris that you're talking about is the one that's to the north and to the east of Seminole. Yeah. Versus the other one that is just north of town. Yeah, so the, the strong circulation is right here, right? Am I good yes. on that? Yeah, there's yeah, debris. Yeah, yeah. That's debris. That's going to try to head up towards. There's debris. Okay. There it is. There's the tornado. It's right here. Tornado. There's your couplet. There's your problem. Boom. Look at their velocity. That's at uh, high uh, East West Road, 1180 Road. And our north south, what is it there? North. Um, uh, there's 1360. What is this? It's, kind of, it's a broken road. It doesn't it, go all the way through. Yeah. Okay, so. Oh, there um, it is. There it is. 3610. 3610 and just north of uh, Road 1180. Okay? It's, it's northeast of Seminole. That circulation is. Now, look at that. Look at that right there, folks. That is going to pass on or west of Cromwell. You folks in Cromwell, you dodged a bullet earlier, but you really got to keep an eye on this, okay? If you know anybody, once again, who lives in Cromwell, you got to go to the safe spot, lowest level again. If you live in Crom Cromwell or west and north of Cromwell, okay? So listen up. Listen to me, okay? That's what you got to do. If you're a young person at home and you can hear me and you're watching and you live in Cromwell, or if you live one, two, three, four, five, six miles west of Cromwell, safe spot, lowest level, center part of the house. Bathroom, closet, center part of the house, lowest level, okay? This tornado is more than likely on the ground. Look at the debris now. Yeah, it's more, came up in intensity. More pronounced debris in the air. This is debris lofted in the air, upwards of about 10 to 15,000 feet. Okay? Debris in the air, right there, wrapped yeah. in rain. You're not gonna see it. All you're gonna do is hear it and feel it, okay? So you gotta go to your safe spot. You're not gonna see this with power flashes. You're not gonna see it with, with lightning. It's, it's, it's too much rain. This is heavy rain where this tornado is. Where this, uh, the, the, the tornado is right now. Let's come back to Seminole. Talk about Seminole. Um, and this oh. is the one heading towards Seminole is what did the damage in Earlsboro and getting reports from the emergency manager. Large trees down at least. And then uh, Cassie was pointing out no power in Earlsboro either. No, yeah, yeah. As you can imagine. I can, I can imagine that. So Seminole, the circulation is still, boy, it's a slow mover. This thing will not move. What, what's our movement? What ground speed? Are 15, 20? Well, that's the problem with it moving so slow is there's also reports of significant flooding in and around Tecumseh. Oh, and you think, yeah. With this too. So this is probably going to be the same trend over little. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting, copious we're getting, amounts of rain. Yeah, we're getting two to three to four. And they've had tons of rain over here too. So we're getting two to three to four inches of rain per hour. So flooding, it's just a mess. All right, rainfall amounts. It's going to be two to three inches, locally four in here. And I'm going to do 12 hours because this area had a lot of rain this morning, yeah, too. Yeah, lots of rain this morning. There, there's your rain. Yeah. 4.3.
So we're going to have flooding, flash flooding. Do not drive into water, right? Our storm trackers are doing it, but they're not doing it. They'll go around water. They won't drive into, into deep water. They won't do it, right? They just won't do it. Um, okay, so you folks in Seminole, circulation is still to your northwest, but it is not making its way down 270, and it's weakened. Yes. It's weakened substantially now in Seminole, or northwest of Seminole, excuse me. Okay, so right now, the way it stands right now, there is, there is not a tornado headed towards Seminole. That's not happening. It was coming down 270, but it has weakened. I'm a little concerned, though, because the atmosphere is still set up. By the way, what, what are the winds over here in Seminole County and from there? I'm just curious. Well, when I try to check the mezzanine for Seminole, as you can imagine, it's down. So um, okay. there's no reading coming out of there. The next thing is Holdenville, southeast, yeah. and 69-degree dew point. How strong are the winds out of the southeast? Uh, 20? Uh, 15 gusts. Okay. It's gusts close to 20. Mm. Okay. All right, so there's not a tornado right now. Headed to Seminole, there's an area of circulation back to your west and northwest, up uh, Highway, State Highway 33E, excuse me, State Highway 3E that comes into Seminole. Back there in Highway 9, there's an area of spin there that we're watching, but it's weak. So there is not a tornado headed into Seminole right now. You missed it on this one. But what I'm talking about here is back towards Earlsboro, another area of spin might be developing. We've got to keep an eye on that. Okay, so let's talk about what's going on north and east of Seminole here. Let's get up west of Cromwell. And then we're going to jump, uh, ooh, the Carnegie. Interesting, Carnegie sale looks interesting. Okay, um, God, this thing is still, yeah, it's still legit. All right, there's your tornado west of Cromwell, five miles. I'm going to guesstimate here. We can go ahead and take a closer look. Okay. What, how far is it? I just guessed there. One, two, three, four, five. Five miles. There's the tornado. What highway, what road is this that runs between Little 99A. and Cromwell? 99A. Okay, thank you. 99A. It is on Highway 99A and in between Farm Road 3600 and Farm Road 3640. There's your tornado. In between State Highway 99A North-South Road 3600 and North-South Road 3630, which is east of, of uh, 3600. And that is exactly five miles. That's on the ground. That's five miles west of Cromwell. You folks in Cromwell, lowest level, center part of the house. You got to go there now. What does CC look like out of that? I don't see it at the moment as no. far as, you know, really high lofted debris, mm -mm. which is a good thing. But, man, that circulation is tight. Yeah. And it's big, too. It's, it's a big area. It hasn't, it, oh, boy, it really tried to, really tried to tighten up. Okay, we have showers developing in the metro, just to make sure the metro's covered. I don't see anything here. Okay, so tornado warning continues for northern Pottawatomie County, excuse me, northern Seminole County. Pottawatomie County, you're in the clear right now, my bad. And the tornado is going to be just five miles west of Cromwell. Cromwell is wrapped in rain. You're not going to see it. All you're going to do is hear it as it approaches you. And um, it looks like it might have lifted, but it's only, you know, could be temporary because the circulation is still strong. Good news for Seminole now. The storm is along and north of 270, but no strong circulation back down, at least not right now. Now, we've done this before where this stuff weakens and we get a new mesocyclone to form, and that can happen. That's just how these beasts are. That's why they're called supercells, because they don't just one and done and move on, all right? They cycle, they produce a tornado, or they try. They'll cycle, they'll weaken, they'll ramp back up, and we'll do it all again. Why? We have a powerful upper storm coming out. It's 1st of May. <laughs> We have low-level dynamics in place. We have lots of warm and muggy, humid, unstable air feeding this storm. All right, so tornado continues. Tornado warning continues for northern Seminole County, okay, and going into Okima eventually. Tornado is going to be five miles west of Cromwell. I want to point out, 
big hail up in here too. Big yes. hail. But look at this wrap. Look at that. Quarters, golf balls. Eh, quarters. Quarter size hail. Not out of control, but quarter size hail. And just so much rain. Crazy A rain. A lot of flooding. Yeah. Will yeah. start to Crazy be a rain. big problem. Crazy rain. Flooding. Uh, is there a flash flood warning now for Northern Seminole County? Uh, I know there was for okay. Pottawatomie, but let me look. Oh, okay. it's a flooding mess, yes. Yeah, flash flood? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Flash flood warnings going on here, folks. So, again, if you're thinking, well, you know what? Um, I'm trying to get home, but there's water over the road, so don't drive through water. Don't drive through water over the road. You can drown, right? Right? Floods kill more people than... In, uh, in the U.S. every year than really anything else. Very dangerous, very dangerous. And especially at night, water over the road at night. All those years I storm chase, I'd drive 100 miles out of the way and then I'd drive through water. I never did it. It's the only thing that scared me. In the field, storm chasing wasn't, I, tornado I wasn't worried about. I was worried about flooding and driving off into a deep hole. Jim, hang around for just a second. Hang around, why don't you come over here for a second? Come over here, uh, uh, get him a mic real quick. Get him a mic, and here's what we're going to do. Get him a mic, and we're going to re-rack some of his video real quick. Um, that's fine. Or just get him that mic, and then we're going to re-rack some of the video. And uh, control room, let's do the, the Sky News 9 mod, uh, and then uh, the greenhouses, and the multi-vortex from Jim. So just give me all three of those. Let him re-rack, okay? I want Jim to come in here just for a second, okay? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead and take it, and we'll get back over okay, here. Okay, I yeah. just want to let people know where a shelter is if you need one in Seminole. The First Baptist Church of Seminole, you can find it at 420 West Reed Street. They're opening up what's called their bridge room, their bridge building to any storm victims, anybody who needs a place to stay or just to get something to drink. Yeah, they're saying there they're, you can take a shower if you need one. You can also get some water there, and so they're, they're there to help again. The First Baptist Church of Seminole open right now. Another thing we're hearing about is the public schools. As you can imagine, Seminole Public Schools, they are all going to be canceled for tomorrow. They are hoping if power can get restored, opening up on Monday. We're also hearing from the Academy there, and they're closed as well. The Academy of Seminole is, is pretty much decimated for the most part. You saw all those trailers. Th those are some of the earliest shots that Jim had that the trailers were all tossed and turned. There were people there actually riding out the storm. They did so in a safe room. They are all okay but uh, uh, the school is, is heavily damaged right now and it might be, I don't want to call it a total loss, but uh, big time damage there at the Academy of Seminole, which is a, a right. charter school that's been operated since 2018. And they have a lot of portable buildings mm -hmm. there and those were heavily damaged. Also, Seminole County Sheriff Shannon Smith just saying to avoid that area in Seminole because there is so much damage there and first responders are having trouble and they're still now, they picked back up doing a grid search. Yeah. They had to put that on hold as that second storm was coming through, but they've started that back up where they are going to be looking for anybody who may be injured. Want to head back over now to David Payne with Jim right. Gardner. All right, guys. And uh, Jim just got back to the station here, and uh, you get, we got to get you a tie when you're out and about. But <laughs> I know. All right, I know. Here, here's the deal. So, Jim, so you were, you were, we were down in southern Oklahoma here. The storm took right. off. It wasn't very big. And then take a look at some of the video. I'm going to step out of the way and look, look right there. And oh, I, I know, David. So, it, tell us what was going on, what were you thinking, and wow, crazy. Well, you know, We've had so many this year, but it looks like it had the ingredients to drop a tornado. It never did. Right. And at first, right. it's like, okay, is this is this going to be one of those where it's just going to hug the ground, really never do anything? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, we spotted a little suction spot. Vortice, yeah. And then a little vortice, then it built. And what was really strange about that is every time it would do this and die away, it would get bigger on the next one. Right, cycling. But then pretty soon, like right before it went into Seminole, like when you said that thing was two miles wide, David, Yeah. we had tornadoes dropping everywhere out of the thing. It was just remarkable what was going on, and, and I feel so bad for Seminole, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, the damage looks really bad, but a lot of the homes just lost part of the roofs. They didn't get totally destroyed. Right. Right. There's some business that's totally destroyed, but these were just look, incredible. Look, look uh, at that right there. I mean, it's I mean, a double helix yeah, tornado, right? and look how fast it was forming. And then at the one point, you had this one, and then you had another one back to the right, left. Right, and I was looking around. Tornadoes. So while I'm talking, I'm not just focused on, on looking at the screen or looking at... I'm, when I'm flying, I'm always looking around, and, and I told Rich, I said, man, there's another one up in front of that one. Mm -hmm. You know, and then pretty soon we had double ones, and then pretty soon there was one dropped out of the back of that. And then while we were tracking it as it was going into Seminole, there was another one actually dropped out to the back side of it on the leading edge, which was just crazy. And I mean, that storm was just yeah. massive. And it was, it was, you know, 
I just hoped we did our job and people in Seminole took our warnings and were able to. to well, Jim, to get again, out, you, you know. went above and beyond you know. and you were the only one chasing after dark with this whole thing was still moving through. Right. Let me show you the video. This is from the greenhouses. Remember this? Right, right. And I don't know what uh, growing greenhouse, I don't know what they were, <laughs> but there was a lot of them. Look at the video here. When you were on that and the right. vortice formed right there and then right. this, folks, this was all live. And this is live right now, right? But the, look at the vortice ripping right. through there. And, and then just, you saw the trailers, right? Right, right. They just, yeah. it went right down the middle of that thing. We came back, we'll have pictures uh, in the yeah, morning or up. later on at 10 o'clock. Yeah. We shot it and look at that, man. It just, I mean. Yeah, look at the trailers. Right, the trailers are on there. And there was a lot of trailers out there. And, and some people are, live in those that are right, at that greenhouse. Right, right. And some of them are completely destroyed. Some of them are just rolled up. But yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it went right down to the middle of that thing. So. Again, it's just one of them Oklahoma storms that you never know what's going to happen, David. Yeah. You never know. It's something different every year. Well, and, uh, you know, they're, they're like a thumbprint. They all put on a show somewhere right. or the other. They all look different. This was a two and a half mile wide area of spin. Right. And like you said, multiple vortices multiple, underneath. Yeah, it, so. it wasn't just one solid tornado. No. It was just, they just dropping everywhere. No. So anyway. So yeah. could have been much worse. Could have been a big right. tornado that did a lot more damage than Seminole. Right. Seminole's bad, but certainly could have been Oh, could have been uh, worse. Could have been just been mowed down the ground. And yeah. Been, luckily, it wasn't. Yeah. You know, so. Well, man, as always, great job. Hey, hey thanks. Uh, yeah, great job as always. I'll talk to you here in just a second. Right. Um, let's go back to Link Street. Lacey, take that just for a second there. And uh, let me just run this by Jim here real quick. Okay. Go ahead and take it. Yeah, so what we're watching right now, we're still watching the ongoing tornado warning as the storm is approaching the town of Cromwell. Still getting confirmed damage in Earlsboro, multiple locations across the area with damage, as you can imagine. And we were seeing that lofted in the air. One thing we're going to do is switch radars here and take a closer look. Vaughn is on that storm just north of Cromwell. Looks like the hook is coming in just over town. Switching radars again here, and you can see the circulation maybe just to the north and north uh, west of Cromwell. Either way, that hook is very near town, and you definitely need to be still continuing to be in your safe spot taking your tornado precautions as we speak. And next down the line is going to be Okima in Okfuskie County. So this storm is moving up, approaching uh, I-40. Once again, these storms have crossed I-40 earlier today, very near the same location. Vaughn, I know you're looking back down to your southwest. Can you give us an update? You've been watching the storm here as it's making its way up towards I-40. Go ahead, Vaughn. Can you hear me, Vaughn? Yeah, yeah, Lacey. Yeah, I'm at Highway 56 right here at I-40 looking south. Uh, that, this part of that rotation is going to pass not very far south of me here. I'm starting to get, I've got 60 mile. I had 60 mile an hour north winds with looks like a quarter sized hail hit me in the back. So um, it's definitely passing across, over 56 right now uh, if it hasn't already. And it's to my south or south southeast right now, Lacey. Back okay, to and that's the thing. If Vaughn has a north wind, you know the circulation is down to his south exactly right it is to the southeast excuse me and that's state highway 99a that it is crossing and approaching state highway 56 so it looks like the circulation is going to go very near the town of cromwell if not just to the north so constantly looking for correlation coefficient that's looking for debris in the air not seeing that as of right now um, but that doesn't mean this is not on the ground. And I know that we've been putting a storm track on that. Cassie's working on that now to get it, you know, bringing this from Cromwell up to I-40 back up to Okima because it's still a very active situation with that storm still very intense. It's had a history of producing multiple tornadoes. And Vaughn was saying he's got at least quarter size hail. Radar is indicating, yes, at least quarters, if not golf ball size hail with this. And Okima, if you don't get the circulation and the tornado, the hail, you're definitely going to get out of this. And we've been talking, of course, about the flooding threat as well. That storm is moving off. What's the speed on that, Cass? I've got it going at 20 miles. At 20, 20 miles per hour. It goes in these phases where it just kind of crawls. It moves very slowly, and then it picks up in intensity. But you can see the hook is about to come right over Cromwell. And from all indications from Vaughn, we know the circulation is at least just south of him, so very near. Yeah, he has west winds now, Lacey. Now he has west winds. Okay, so the circulation is crossing. It is crossing State Highway 56, and it is making its way over into Okfusky County, David. Wow, okay, so yeah, and okay, so the tornado, war okay, Vaughn's right there. Did uh, you just checked in with Vaughn? Yes, what, what just checked. Winds? He had a north wind and now Justin said he has a west wind. Okay, he has a, okay, well, it makes total sense. Yes. Man, it is right here, though. 
Okay. Now is, he has a northwest wind, is that what he said? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, as he should. Okay, so it's going to Okima, is it not? It's, On or south of Okima? Yes, and Cassie just did the storm track for that. Okay, yeah, yeah. God, man, how many times can Okima, Cromwell, and Seminole... In, in a two-day period. Be in, yeah, well, yeah, we forgot the night before last, but just this evening. How many times? So there's the tornado. Vaughn's and right there. Just direction-wise, so you know, David, we switched radars to INX, so you can see... Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, anything? Okay, and let's, let's do this. We'll do a storm track again. Okay, so from Cromwell, uh, just right here, there's the damage. Excuse me, there's the tornado, possibly doing some damage now. God, it is just so close to... I mean, it's... Is it over? Is it in Cromwell? It looks like it is. Yeah. It's very close. Very, very close. Okay, and is Vaughn where we think he is? He... Yes, yes. Okay, hey, let's, go, let's go to Vaughn and uh, one more time. Bring Vaughn back in here. Vaughn, it looks like it's it's either on Cromwell or maybe a, I mean, a quarter mile north. What do you, your winds look like they're ripping, Vaughn Caster? Go ahead, give us an update. Yeah, David. The winds have just Ooh. now. This, this is passing just to my southeast right now. These winds are whipping now from the west. Uh, they just switched from the northwest to the west, so it's just off to my east. It's crossing 40. Got to be crossing 40 here. Pretty quick, David. All right, great. Wow, look at that, folks. There it is. And uh, he is on I-40 with the wind and hail that is blowing around and into that storm. Okay, let's go back to our... There we go. There's radar looking at the storm now. Uh, again, there's Vaughn. There's Cromwell. It's going to Okima. Correlation okay. coefficient still every indication this is on the ground. That's on the ground. Just north of Cromwell. Just north. That's the tornado. That is debris in the air at 20,000 feet up. That is debris in the air, okay? I'm surprised our, the uh, debris detector hasn't hit that yet. Well, I had just turned it off because it was okay. pegging earlier, yes. And that, that, there's a tornado. Folks, it's wrapped in rain. Look out, see that? Oh. Gosh, it went close to Cromwell. Oh my, it went right it over. It lifted north. It's gonna be the exact same situation it's that depleting. happened over Cromwell earlier and they didn't have damage. I know, well, they might have damage now. But it looks like they do now. Okay, hey, Jan. We need to check on Cromwell again for the twelfth time this evening. I mean, this is yeah. This is virtually what happened yeah. earlier. No. Yeah, it's uh, tell Vaughn. Tell Vaughn it's coming into Vaughn. Um, let's go to Vaughn Caster. Tornado's on the ground now. Let's go to Vaughn. Vaughn, we have a debris ball. We have debris lofted in the air now of twenty thousand feet, just to your southeast, about a half mile. Vaughn, you might be in the tornado. We're right on the very edge. Vaughn, it is just south of you, a half a mile. I have debris lofted over your head. Go ahead, Vaughn. Absolutely, David. Yeah, absolutely. These winds went from the north back to the west a while ago, and I'm, I'm telling you, they were screaming. So this thing just passed just to my south and southeast, and uh, I'm telling you what, the winds have now quite, are quieting down a little bit, which is kind of eerie. Um, but uh, I'm gonna, I, I cannot see a thing, David. The, the rain and the hail is just relentless. So uh, I'm re relying on Justin here a little bit to uh, give me some uh, updated fortunes. Thank you, David. All right, I hear big hail. Okay, so big hail, big wind. And let me show you this. So he, let me show you where he is. There's Vaughn, there's Cromwell, and that's the debris we had lofted. He just updated, right? Okay, so take it back. Okay, look, here's the tornado. Right, and watch the watch the the big blue eye look back at you, which is what we don't want. Right here, that is debris. That is debris. The radar is seeing debris in the sky that that is aloft, 15, 20,000 feet up. That is debris in the air. Now it's it's less debris because it's it's weakening for now, right? But so I'm telling you, it's a white knuckle ride. If I'm in Okima right now, you were under the gun earlier. You're under the gun. Now, if you live in Okima and to the west of Okima, and by the way, this is in our viewing area. Okay, Okima, heads up. You've dodged uh, one bullet today. Let's see if you can do it again. But if you live, this is on I-40. If you live near I-40 and in between where Vaughn is, which is uh, north of Cromwell here, three miles between there and Okima, you have to be in your safe spot. Lowest level, center part of the house, You've got to go. You got to go low. You got to go low on this, okay? And uh, we don't know how many tornadoes we've had today. We've had a lot. We had a dozen with what Jim had live in the air from earlier today. 
okay? But that's, that's what's going on. There, there's the debris that the tornado has picked up in the atmosphere. The debris gets lofted in the updraft in the tornado that goes up high, and then the radar beam hits that debris, right? And then it sends back that picture of us, of the debris in the air. That's the tornado right there. And we mentioned it earlier when the storm was also cycling and lifting north from Cromwell to I-40, the King's Travel Plaza. I think that's very near to where Vaughn is. And of course, that's where the circulation is very, very close. It's now to the southeast of there, but folks on I-40 know where that is, that King's Travel Plaza right there on the highway. Yeah, it's, it's a big one too. Yes, right, there. right on Highway 56. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, the whole area is just really, really pretty and hills and you get to start getting to bigger hills and all right, so there's the debris from the tornado. Let's go back to velocity data here. Let's see if we're tightening up or if we're okay, give me one spinning second. down. Spinning up or spinning down. All right, there's, okay, there's the reflectivity. God, and look there's back velocity. There. Okay. INX? Yep. Okay. So it's right here. It's still southwest of Okima. One, two, three, four, five, six miles. Southwest of Cromwell, excuse me, of Okima, about a mile and a half east of Cromwell. Okay, so Lacey, take that just for a second. Run okay, over here. yeah, we're, what, we're looking at the, the direction that it's going, trying to look at this. These things would kind of wiggle and wobble quite a bit. It looks like it's kind of hugging I 40 to the south. So, going to be headed up towards Okima for sure. Does it go south of town? Does it come into Okima? Still too early to say, but definitely folks in Okima need to be taking your safety precautions right now. Lowest level of the home, center, most center room that you can get to, room with no windows, whether that's a closet or a bathroom, that's where you need to be. This thing has produced multiple tornadoes over the past hour from Earlsboro uh, back to Tecumseh and now up near Cromwell. These have been confirmed by debris in the air and it is now tracking towards highway 48 up towards okima latest storm track cassie has here in okima at 9 37 um, golden pony casino at 9 53 and then eventually over towards walika by 10 p.m so we'll see what it looks like by the time it gets here switching it back over to the uh, debris detector and david there's still um, there's still debris being lofted in the air. We hope that's from something earlier and not that it's still on the ground, but it's you right can't here. say that at this no, point. No, not at all. So in, see the green? That's, oh, hang on. See the pixel of blue right here? Oh, no, yes, so, further south. Oh, okay, what, what's this right here? Uh, hold we, on. We gotta make these, uh, we gotta make these city streets bigger. So just me or these getting we'll get smaller? You, we'll get your glasses a little thicker if we need to. What are you saying? Well, I know, right? I'm, I'm closer to the screen. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's it. That is so sweet. Okay, here's Bearden. Okay, so here's Bearden, and uh, oh, there you go. Okay, just had a report that the power's out in Prague, and, um, and just from the Seminole tornado, and right now, Prague, there's no, there's no threat in your area at the moment. Uh, what's that? Say that again? In Prague, there's no, there's no power, but there's no threat in Prague. Just, just for folks there. If you're, no. You're no, watching not on at your all. phone or, yes. Okay, all right. Uh, Gardner's going to come back in here just for a second. What? I'm going to give these to you. Why? Because when we landed and refueled in Asher, this little girl walked up to me. Aww. My name is Oakley. Oh, that's give sweet. Give this to David Payne for saving our life. Where, where was this? At Asher. You're kidding. No. So I wanted to give those to you. Aww. I forgot. Hang on, my, my mic. Is Oakley. That is so sweet. And she said, give them to David Payne for saving our life. Wow, okay. There you go. Little Oakley. Now, what, what city? I'm sorry, one more time. Asher. Down near Asher. Wow, how sweet's that? Oh, that's All right. very sweet. Well, found my replacement. <laughs> that's how you do it. You bring in flowers. Well, that is so sweet. Well, thank you, Oakley from Asher. Thank you so much. That's really, really sweet. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, I, I want to point out, we have. I know we have thunder and lightning here in Oklahoma City, but none of this is crazy, okay? This is what's going to give us flooding, but there's nothing severe in here, okay, right now. Uh, but this is rain increasing. And the atmosphere is still unstable, so we can still get more severe weather in behind this line. But nothing in here is too crazy. This is moving north of the boundary. Remember, we have the warm front in here, and north of it, it's mainly a wind and hail threat, okay? It's uh, I-40 south is where the atmosphere, what we said all, all week long. The last, what, two days here is that, in last week, that it, it was going to be an I-40 south kind of a deal. 
where the instability was going to be was going to be much higher. Okay, so um, Lincoln County back into Oklahoma County. This is all just rain, general thunderstorms, lightning and thunder, maybe some small hail, heavy rain. We got to watch out for the flooding threat here in Oklahoma City, increasing. We got to watch out for that. Okay, um, let's come back to the tornado warning now. Uh, tornado Tom, warning. Tom's also showing some uh, damage okay. there in Earlsboro. Just oh, let you know. Okay, let's go back to Tom. And he's back in the Earlsboro area. He's right here. And uh, Tom, there you go. Tornado damage. Bah, he, guess where he is, folks? He's, what, a mile on the east side of Earlsboro with some damage there. How about that? Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, that's right. It looks like it's about half a mile, maybe three-quarters of a mile wide damage. Um, so far, I'm seeing a lot of trees. I'm going to try to go into some of the roads. I, I'm seeing a lot of emergency vehicles kind of doing a search and rescue. But there is some substantial tree damage. You can smell it, you know, the, that fresh um, tree that you know, has been cut at the top. Um, it's all been seared at the tops. I haven't seen any structural damage. Uh, there was a two-by-four that was shredded uh, just here in this driveway. And there's a whole bunch of that siding that's wrapped around a, a telephone wall right there. Back to you. Okay, great job, Tom. And like he said, a half mile wide, possibly damaged path just to the east of Earlsboro. We were saying Earlsboro, I don't know, 10 times tonight. This was the last tornado that we said, we have debris in the air, we have damage. There's that damage, there's some of that debris. Just one shot, and trust me, there's a lot more in here, okay? There's a lot more in here that uh, we're gonna find come daybreak tomorrow, all right? So it'll take through tonight and tomorrow to figure out, look at damage pass. We, we, we had over a dozen tornadoes on the air today, uh, right here at News 9, at least a dozen. At least a dozen right here on News 9. Okay. Um, uh, Justin, real quick, on the big storm south of the red, we have somebody going to that? Yeah, we can. Well, let's, let's back out of this. Uh, let me just take a look at it here. Yeah. Yeah, let's... Here, I'm going to uh, zoom in. There is a tornado that's been south of Vernon that has been on the ground since... Is that Kroll, Texas? Is Kroll? that how you say it? Uh, Coral? Yeah. Yeah, oh, this, Kroll. Kroll. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes, Kroll, this Texas. storm started back there, and now it's lifting north, and it has been a okay. long track tornado. Okay, back back out of this just a second. Back okay. out. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, yeah, uh, either either Val's got a bus south, or where's Brandon right here? Is this Brandon? There's Marty. Okay. All right, oh, yeah, he's, as cl he's closer than, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, Val's heading that way. Yeah, okay. and that hit the town of Lockett, Texas, and it's been kind of staying south, okay. but it is tracking further north now. Okay, so it's in Vernon, Texas here, long track tornado. And you folks, again, uh, in Frederick, this, we said this, what, an hour and a half ago when these storms were down in Texas. These are not tornadic right now. This is nothing to worry about. This is a monster. That's the biggest storm today, probably on the Southern Plains. That's a big, mm -hmm. big, big storm. That would cover up basically almost almost half of Oklahoma County or a little bit more. That's a big, look at the couplet on that. It looks like it might have weakened some. Yeah, and it's almost lifting northwest yeah, at the it, moment. Okay, but so here's, here's, we'll see what it does. El Dorado, uh, Elmer and Tipton, you guys are in tornado country down here. Here's Frederick. That is a violent tornado. It ha has it been, they are calling it violent, big tornado? Uh, it's considerable, been yes. considerable, yes. Okay, so that's, that's a big tornado right there. And that's gonna go, gosh, it's gonna barely miss Vernon, Texas, thank goodness and then lift north up 283. So if I live in Elmer or Tipton or anywhere down here, uh, west of Lawton, east of Altus, uh, Altus is right here. Yeah, here, I'll zoom out a little bit. And Altus, um, you've got a tornado warning to your northwest, which is weakened now, that's good. And then we've got, the, 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 these went up north of the boundary, that's why they're weakening. But this is not weakening, this is well south into a very favorable environment, okay? So if you live in Frederick, back to Davison, back to the west, and east of Altus, you have to watch this. Valcaster is busting south, coming in from the north. God, that thing occluded so hard. Yeah. My goodness. Looking at like radar you said, here. said, that's what they've all done. I mean, they're moving east and Same. then. I know. And, and then every the one storm near today. Earlsboro did a complete circle. Yeah, every, every storm's done that. Okay, um, back to. Links, let's just stay with this. this okay, well, uh, uh, real quick, Hobart. Let's go up north. Yeah, Retrop, uh, these storms are severe now. East of Mangum, not a tornado threat. This is a wind and hail threat. Quarters, golf ball size hail over Retrop. It's going to Hobart. Coming into Hobart here in the next uh, 15 minutes. And Hobart has a north wind. Hobart has a north wind, which is a good thing tonight. You will not get a tornado 
with a north wind on top of you like that. You got to get down to Altus, to Snyder. Medicine Park has Cash. a south wind. Medicine Park, the front's down here. The front is, see this line? I guarantee mm -hmm. it, that's the front. Yes. Right there. So there's, there's the actual warm front. So anything north, I tell you what, Lacey, go ahead and just draw, draw something, just kind of draw right here. Oh, okay, hold on. Yeah, anything. Trying to look over here at your mom under where are you right here? Yeah, I don't know where I am. I'm right here. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So this is north of the, of the, of the warm front. This is all going to be heavy rain, wind, and hail. Now, something can ride this front and try to tornado because south of here, it's warm. Up here, it's still warm, but it's not as warm and not as unstable. It's cooler. Temperatures are in the 60s, and it's much cooler here. Down here, it's, it's, it's ready for prime time, okay? So, but as long as these storms stay north of this boundary, we're going to get wind and hail. But whatever is south of the boundary, you're going to have that tornado threat, okay? And that will come... Notice how that boundary rides up into Oklahoma City. That's why we got to keep the metro in and under the gun mode here for a while. That storm down there, that tornado's weakened. I'm looking up there at uh, Lynx 2. It's come down some. It's even weaker now. Yeah, and the shower, the storm behind it is merging into it from okay. the west. I'll so. mess it up and see what it does out of yep. that. But man, that's a big, big storm. Okay, back to Lynx 3. Here's your wide view. And let's kind of back out of this just for a second. I want to point out northern Oklahoma, heavy rain. Lots of rain, thunder, some small hail, no tornadoes across the north. You're not going to have any. Okay, you're not going to get tornadoes in Enon or Ponca City. It's not going to happen up here. You're too cool. Your area is just too stable, and you're north of the boundary. It's going to be basically from south of Tulsa to the south metro down to about Altus. From that line right in here, okay, right in here is where that tornado threat will continue through this evening and into tonight, okay? That's the way it looks. And the boundary is, is pretty much where it is, okay? Do we have a north wind here in Oklahoma City? Yes, so north wind in Oklahoma City, by the way, Jay, um, Tulsa, all up in there, south wind. Okay, what about like... So it's, uh, it's raced pretty far north on the east side. Norman? Norman has a north wind now, south wind in Washington, so it's in central Cleveland County. Okay, so there you go. That, unless the boundary lifts north, that that really, really helps Oklahoma City from getting a tornado. We are gonna have rain, we're gonna have storms, we're gonna have some hail, but it's what we've been talking about all day. It's been this boundary, and you know, some of the data had it way down here, lots of data had it like right here, and then it ended up being about right here. This is pretty close to kind of what we thought with our moderate risk of severe weather and our tornado zone. That's where we had it. Okay, that's enough about that. Let's get to it here, and let's go to off to the east here, um, severe storms, uh, Cromwell, where's our rotation now? Inflow notch South. is big hail in Okima. Who's in Okima? Is that J That's JD. He is getting hammered. Yes. Yeah, that core went right up over Vaughn. Okay. Vaughn's coming in on the back. Let's go to velocity data here. Take a closer look. And there it is. Wow. Just southwest of Vaughn. And what are we doing here? Let me switch over to shear rate. I'm going to switch radars. There you go. Okay. That's so, where it's lining up out of INX. Okay. Okay, so let's think about that. Okay, go back to, go back to velocity here. Okay. And go to INX out of velocity. Okay. Boom, boom. There's that. And that may just be... That just, I don't think that's anything. Let's go just check. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, I don't see so any. I still don't see any debris. I, I don't see a couplet there. I think that's all, I think, right? I don't yes. see a couplet here. I see a couplet, obviously, back here southwest of Vaughn. Okay, do we have Vaughn in the yeah, system? He's off. he's off right now. Is he with KO? He said he was going to stay on for a while, but he's not on right now. Okay. Well, maybe JD's reach out. There. Huh? JD's on KO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe, uh, if you can, reach back out to Vaughn. Tell him we'd love to talk to him. All right, so, yeah, it's still, it's... <laughs> It's still intermittent, yeah, producing a tornado. Okay? It comes and goes. All right, but here it is right here. So, yeah, well, now that might have been some bad data, but that is not bad data. Let's go to velocity data here. Okay. Take a look. And here's Okima, and it is still south of I 40. There's your tornado. It's going to be a mile and a half northeast of Cromwell. The tornado is going to be coming up on. Uh, I-40 and Highway 48, that's where Vaughn is. So the tornado is going to be coming up on 
Highway 48 and I-40. Which is exactly where the one a couple hours ago. Yeah, say, so didn't we just yes, say this? Yes, we just said that, yes. Coming towards yeah. Okima. Okay, so, all right, let's go to shear rate. Okay, that's what it looked like back there, and, and we're, we're still we're pretty far away. We're pretty far away. It looks a little, still there, but doesn't look as impressive as it did. Um, okay, so the tornado is going to be, it, it's, it's, it's right here. Okay, so it's at Highway 48, just south of I-40. Okima, you are in the zone that if I live in Okima, I'm going to the safe spot right now. It's pretty close to you, just to your southwest. And it's going to try to occlude and try to come in here again, probably. I mean, why not? That's what every one of them have done so yeah. far. Yeah. Is Tom back on damage? Yes. Let's, let's get our Tom Pastrano. I think he's back by Earlsboro. And we'll take Tom. And, uh, oh, what's going on here? We have animals in there. Oh, no. Okay. Go ahead, Tom. Give me an update of what you're seeing right there. Looks like some livestock, yes. possibly. David, this is a field um, at the probably in the middle of Main Street in Earlsboro. Looks like the tornado might have crossed on the extreme east side of Earlsboro, maybe like a mile to the east. And this is some damage to a little goat barn. Um, I do see the emergency management here. Everybody's doing a search and rescue. So we're going to go down Main Street to see if there's any more damage. Back to you. Okay, yeah. Tom is... Uh uh, yeah, great job, Tom. So Tom will check it out. Let's go back to links three, and let me show you where Tom is. Yeah, I know the school's there on the east side of town, too. Right. I don't know the exact address, but it's somewhere okay. over there. Yeah, no, here's, you're right. So here's Earlsboro. Tom is right here where he has damage, and this is where we were saying the whole time it was on the east side of Earlsboro and southeast of Earlsboro along the highway. So we have tornado damage in here. How significant, we do not know yet. Tom is one of the first on the scenes, along with some of the first responders. And what they're doing is they're going from house to house, home to home, just like they were doing in Seminole, and probably still are in Seminole. Um, let's talk about Seminole here quickly. What's going on over there? Anything? Make I think change. we're in good shape. A uh, little bit of rain to the north, but uh, yeah, nothing, nothing headed to, but Seminole gets rain and storms overnight tonight. So you've got time now to cover it up, wrap it up, bring it in, whatever. If you're picking up debris or picking up belongings you have time you've got hours of time before this will eventually fill in all right that's what's coming through oklahoma city with some heavy rain there going on but um right now uh seminole who was hit hard today you're doing okay you're doing okay uh it's quiet there now it's cloudy i know i get it it's damp it's all that but uh, no severe weather headed towards seminole that, that other severe storm is is well to your north and east all right, so tornado warning continues. Uh, Seminole County, Okmulgee. Uh, Henrietta is here. Here's Okmulgee, right? Well to the east. They've got severe weather ongoing in the Tulsa area. That tornado warning up there has been dropped. And uh, trackers up there are tracking that. So yeah, that was the original Seminole tornado mm -hmm. storm. Yeah, yeah. so uh, there you go. So there it is, and the area of spin is right here near Vaughn. Now, this is looking interesting to me. Yeah, further south. See that? That's a problem. That's a problem right there. So, this is going to be, um, this is Okfusky County. Here's Okima. And here's Cromwell. Okay, and this is what I'm, I'm interested in right here. Watch how that hook starts to redevelop on that back side. Okay, what does is, what is shear rate look like with that? Take a look. Okay. Nothing crazy. So tornado warning continues. East of Cromwell and southwest of Okima. It looks like it's a little bit broader than what it was. It's definitely still there, and it's definitely, uh, tornado warning is definitely warranted. But see how broad it is? You're on X? Yes. Okay. Okay, so yeah, tornado warning continues. Running from, again, uh, and, and notice just how broad this is. It was tighter earlier right here. Now it's, it's broader. Uh, do we have, uh, Justin, I'm sorry, do we have uh, Vaughn back in here? I'm trying to get a hold of him. Okay. All right, well, Vaughn's right here. JD's in Okima, and the circulation's going to be there. Big hail up in here. Quarters, maybe some golf balls. 
So we'll do a storm track on that coming up, and we'll do the storm track from the broad area of circulation, which is gonna be right here, and we'll, t we'll take it off to the no northeast. So uh, the uh, tornado warning continues for southern Okfusky County, from Okima to the south. From there, it's gonna head up towards uh, Sunrise and Henrietta. Henrietta's gonna be in the line of fire here. Hopefully this thing will weaken a little bit more. And uh, it's still a, uh, a strong storm. Yeah, take it right. I'm, it, yeah, there you go. Henrietta right in the middle of it. Moving northeast, 2025. And uh, let's go back to Lynx 4 here, control room. Uh, Okima at about 950. Golden Pony Casino. I've got to go there someday. 1001. Henrietta, 1031. Okmulgee at about 1048. And Boynton at 1127. Morris at about 11 o'clock tonight. All right. And then when it gets over here, Tulsa will, our sister station in Tulsa with their trackers, and uh, their team, they'll take over this storm and then we'll have our own, other own problems to deal with with the other storms coming out of the Southwest. Okay, so, wow, that's a big storm down there in Texas. Big storm. Um, okay, so tornado warning, Ofusky County, uh, circulation now south of Okima, northwest of Olika. What, that still looks interesting down here. You see this west of Walitka here? Right, that's what we were just looking at and talking about. It's it's it, lo it looked weird of, earlier. Yes, but I'll show you back on here on links three. Yeah, what is? Um, just look at the re look at reflectivity. I mean, there definitely is a little area of inflow. There is right there. Yeah. Okay. Well, keep an eye on that. You folks in Walitka, southeast of Okima, uh, you need to be watching this. Right there is Wewoka. This is all north of Wewoka. Uh, you are gonna get storms later tonight, but right now this is. Uh, this is well north of you. Where everyone gets rain and storms tonight. Big wall, big rain, potential for more flooding and more severe weather. That'll be tonight as the main wave moves back, moves back in. All right, so that's the latest from there. Guys, you guys at the news desk, man, what an afternoon. We're still tracking severe weather and uh, we'll pitch it back to you guys and we'll jump back on this again. Guys, take it. All right, well, we've been talking to our crews. We have four different crews out there on the scene in Seminole, which is a really hard hit area. I want to tell you that OHP, they are out there right now. They are blocking off certain mm -hmm. roadways because one of the concerns, all the power lines that are down. So they're out there just to make sure that they can protect any drivers so that they don't go over them accidentally. And, and just kind of checking around there, I know we were talking about Cromwell. Uh, showing that radar indicated right. tornado. I did check in with uh, Chief Sullivan, the Cromwell Volunteer Fire Department Chief, and uh, he says right now they're just assessing damage. So they're going out right now, just kind of beginning the process. Right now he sees trees in the roadway uh, blocking Highway 56. That's one thing, but uh, they're actively looking. He, he wrote up the storm. He, he said, you know, got really loud and, and uh, he, all that hail and all that. But uh, right now in Cromwell, they're not sure. So we'll see if they had dodged another bullet, obviously. They had... Um, uh, they had that one come through already. Hey, we have uh, Trooper Eric Foster on the phone with OHP giving us now uh, more on, on, on what troopers are doing. I guess uh, a Trooper Foster just kind of hunkered down there uh, in Seminole trying to uh, uh, protect residents from getting out there where those down power lines are. Yes, we are. And we have multiple crews both in Earlsboro and in uh, in Seminole just assisting. Really what troopers are doing right now is uh, we are going out uh, outside of these townships and and going down up and down these county roads to make sure there there are no other people out there that need help that aren't able to communicate and so that's really what our troopers are doing they're going from place to place making sure that no one else is in need of help we know in these towns there's a lot of debris down a lot of power lines down any specific roadways we need to let our viewers know about that they should not be traveling on uh, I would say just anywhere immediately around Seminole. I know that we have a lot of down power lines there. I'm still getting reports from Earlsboro and Cromwell as well to try to, to see what those are. I'm unaware of those, but I do know of Seminole because I was there. Uh, and so there are a lot of down power lines. There's a lot of debris. Uh, just avoid that whole area if you can. There are a lot of emergency uh, equipment and personnel going into those areas uh, to triage and to try to make sure that everybody gets the assistance that they need. And so if you don't need to be in that area, please don't be in that area to allow us to, uh, to be able to reach out to each person that needs it. And in Seminole right now, are there a lot of people like to kind of describe what's going on there now as far as there's this window before more rain comes in tonight? Are there a lot of people out there kind of securing their homes because they lost roofs or, or just saw damage altogether? 
Yeah, really what they're what we're trying to do is try to make sure that people do have shelter. Uh, you know, when that first storm came through Seminole, uh, we had troopers on scene and then, you know, we had to take cover again uh, because, you know, another one was, you know, coming up behind. So um, that may continue all night for us, uh, you know, especially with the rains and things like that. So we're just trying to make sure that everybody is accounted for, number one, uh, and that everybody has uh, shelter uh, that we can make sure we get them out of the rain. Uh, and then also we're trying to reestablish communications and things like that in and around those areas. Trooper Foster, what's the biggest challenge for you guys right now? Really the biggest challenge is just trying to locate every person. That takes some time as homes are spread out. Um, you know, it's not just one big metropolis. There, you know, there are homes all across the, the countryside there. So our troopers are going from place to place. That takes time. Uh, and then, you know, uh, mud and dirt roads and uh, being able just to reach out to everybody, make sure that they're okay, uh, because we do realize that some communications may be down, and so we just want to check that. So that will continue uh, through the night, uh, both with us and a lot of other agencies uh, working hand-in-hand -hand to try to make sure that uh, people are safe. Well, Trooper Foster, what was that like for the troopers out there who are trying to protect the people, and then all of a sudden they're being told, okay, there's a threat of another tornado coming through. You need to stay safe. What was that like for them? Well, you know, and the troopers were notified that it was coming, and so they reach out to all of those that are out there and, and pass the word. You know, we need to take sh uh, shelter and cover, uh, and, and know it, that's what they do. And so uh, it, it's just it's something that troopers do they're out there to provide safety and security uh and they'll continue to do that all night as storms roll through if they come through again troopers are there they're not going anywhere uh and not just troopers but you know i have to say deputies and and fire and uh, police officers from other towns uh you know all converging to these areas uh to be able to assist them and we'll be there as long as we're needed all right. Well, nerve-wracking nonetheless, I'm sure, for all those there uh, waiting to see if a second storm came through. Trooper Foster, yeah. we appreciate the time. Thank you, and be safe out there. So we just heard from OHP about what they're doing out there. Grid searches are still going on in neighborhoods just to make sure everybody's okay. If you've been following our coverage since the beginning, you maybe heard us talking about in Seminole, there were some people trapped in a cellar. Maybe you even saw on Facebook people talking about a baby being stuck in there with the family and that they were going to try to get that family out. They needed help. There was a smell of natural gas in the area good news that people were able to get out of the cellar they are all okay they were in a safe spot and were able to get to safety and help in seminole is arriving oklahoma baptist disaster relief they will have assessors out there in the morning seeing uh, uh which oklahomans need help out there so uh the help is coming but uh, in in these next couple hours david you're explaining that this is this is a good time to get out there and secure yeah. what you got before the, the rain comes in tonight yeah exactly so. yeah carl and uh, nailed it hey You've been listening all evening. Look at you. I've only been sitting here for eight hours. <laughs> you might want to stand up. Your legs are numb at this point. I understand. Uh, exactly. So there is a break uh, in Seminole, okay? Uh, let's go to reflectivity here. And here's that break I'm talking about, but here's why it's not going to last forever. And on link three, we can certainly take a look at it here. And let's go back to notice Seminole. It's quiet in Seminole. There's a lot of going like, like, they were saying here, house to house and door to door. You know what? Trying to get in here and check everything out. We have rain to the north. We have the one big severe storm now uh, that is tornado warned again in Okfusky County. And we'll talk more about that coming up. We have rain in the metro, but nothing scary here right now. Lots of heavy rain. And here comes a wall of water. And I'll tell you what I like is that I'm seeing a lot of rain to the west of Oklahoma City, but I'm not seeing a bunch of warnings out here. And this is what I call good old fashioned rain in the Northwest because this is north of the boundary where the severe weather is gonna try to continue for the evening, late evening, I know we're there, into the overnight hours will be from uh, I-40 south and southwest where the air is still unstable in here, okay? That's what we're, that's what we're worried about here. That's gonna be kind of our storm zone with a threat for more large hail, damaging winds, and even tornadoes, okay. So, um, line of rain, the stuff coming into Canadian County, the rain and storms in Canadian County, El Reno, uh, Weatherford, yeah, Watonga, Enid, 
None of this is severe. Up near Ponca City, Medford, none of this is severe up here, okay? So let's go a little farther north here. Lace, if you don't mind, just real quick up north. Ponca City, Medford, this is maybe some small hail, gusty winds, lightning and thunder, heavy rain. None of this is going to be tornadic. This is north of the front. This is going to be some wind and hail producers and heavy rain. Great rains going on for sure. Now let's come back south here down the line. Not severe in Canton. Good rains there. Ames, Lahoma, Enid, heavy rain, moderate rain over Canton and Canton Lake. Let's come back south here and jump into southwestern Oklahoma. Moderate to heavy rain at Weatherford, uh, down through all of Caddo County. One severe storm in the southwest now. That's down near Hobart. And that's a big storm. It is spinning, and, but it is not tornadic. But it does have some rotation with it. This is the one that came out of the panhandle, and it's been spinning here for a number of hours, a long time. Uh, but it's coming into Roosevelt. And it's interesting that hook, David, is, I, th I think, right on the boundary. So you can see how the hook's yeah. starting to develop over Roosevelt. Yeah, and, and right, and that's what we're talking about. If yeah. it rides the boundary, uh, we're going to have some problems in here, okay? We're going to have some problems in here. All right, so uh, there's the hook on that. What does shear rate look like out of FDR? Just curious. Okay, yeah. That's legit. Yeah. So if that hook can get south of the boundary and tap into that warm, moist air. We've done this rodeo before. That will try to spin faster and try to do something. So if you live in uh, Kiowa County, north and west of Cooperton, back to Roosevelt, and from there over to Carnegie, you, you gotta keep an eye on this. We have to watch this right in here. It's broad, nothing crazy, not jumping out of windows yet on this thing, but it is certainly something we need to watch. Okay, and uh, I think Cassie has a storm track on that. She does. Let's go back to that on Lynx 4. And yeah, it's moving east northeast. I think, Cassie, go ahead and expand that down to Cooperton. Let's just go ahead and bring them in it. Go ahead and yep. Just take it on down there. Uh, include Cooperton if you can. Okay. Well, not yet. We're, we're almost there. Is it there? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I forgot. It's to the right of the. Okay, boom. Rocky. 957, Cooperton, 1005, we'll say Mountain View, 1035, Carnegie, 11 o'clock, Fort Cobb, 1123, uh, Anadarko Airport, 1151, Anadarko Downtown, 1154, Lakiba, 1201 in the morning, Lake Chickasha at 1214. Okay, and this is going to make its way towards Oklahoma City. This is coming toward the metro, but we have the front, the boundary, which is going to try to kind of keep Oklahoma City. Uh, away from that tornado threat. As long as we keep the boundary south of the metro, and I think it will stay south, we're going to be okay in Oklahoma City, but just south of Oklahoma City, uh, the tornado threat will still be there as we get into uh, the next several hours and into tonight for a while. All right? Okay. So let's take a look at some of the video, and I'm just going to go down the, the list here. Let's take a look at the uh, Sky News 9 video uh, from near Maud today. This was the tornado, and uh, there it is right there. This is when the whole thing began southwest of Maud. We had this live on the air. This was a News 9 tornado warning. It was a circulation of two and a half miles in length. And there's the tornado on the ground. It was doing damage, at least off and on and intermittently. And uh, folks, we had several tornadoes on the ground at the same time. We had twin tornadoes, big mesocyclone, and that thing was ripping through the trees, ripping through the pasture land here in the fields. There's the tornado. Look at the wind here. Look at that tree whipping, man. Just look at multiple vortex, double helix cone. Look at the debris. See the debris? Boom. There go the trees. Look at there. Look at it snaking now. That, there you go. There you go. That vortice breaks down and falls apart. A new one fills back in. So many physics going on here. So much physics in the way of how this works. Now look at this up here. Okay, hang on. We're thinking, oh, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Okay, and watch it, watch it again. Watch it here. Watch the next one, right? We're just going to go down the list. Look at the tornado there. Look at the condensate forming in the trees as the pressure's lower. Remember, this whole thing is an area of low pressure. Look at the helix, double helix, rotating around each other, doing the dance, doing the dance, doing the dance. One, two, three, four, four tornadoes, right, coming out of the main cone, but still four separate vortices rotating. Look at that. Look at that. Dancing around each other near Mott at 629. It was live right here on News 9.
Wow, Jim Gardner and Rich Kriegel all over it. Nobody better in the air. I'll say that till the day I die, I promise you. Nobody better in the air than Jim Gardner. Um, that guy's a bull. All right, uh, now, going through the northwest side of Maud. Um, yep, there you go. There's your nursery. Watch the tops of the nursery. Watch, watch the water vapor. There's your tornado. Winds, you know, 80, 90, 100 miles an hour, maybe a little more. Watch the trailers. Here's a problem. People live in these, right? These, or these are offices. There goes debris. Watch the trailer. Watch the power. There you go. Watch the trailers flip over. Trailers have rolled over. And I think, Jen, we have video of that taken. Um, Jen uh, Billings, I think we have video of that that was taken when Jim was flying back. So do we have that video? Uh, just of the aftermath of the... Uh, okay, just let me know. Okay, so uh, that was a greenhouse. Now, uh, this is the other multi... Multi-vortex, there's the debris in the air. Tornado on the ground, tornado on the ground, right there. And wow, tornado here. It's weak, this is stronger, but two tornadoes on the ground at the same time. And this one has become the dominant tornado. Watch it, it's ragged, right? But it doesn't matter. And look at the condensate develop out ahead of it. Pressures are lowering out ahead of it. And you start to get condensate rip, ripping in. And what's crazy, when you're storm chasing, you're in tight, you'll be up close to this, and you'll start to get this water vapor developing around your car. And you're like, hang on a second. <laughs> yeah, that happens when you're, in, when you're hugging it tight, for sure. And another shot here, tornado on the ground. Uh, this is when it be was becoming a little more rain-wrapped. Okay. And there's the tornado on the ground, and it became a little bit stronger. Here's the problem with Seminole. It was two and a half miles wide, the mesocyclone was, and we had a merry-go-round of the whole thing spinning and up and down, just like a merry-go-round. We had areas of, of small vortices, right? Multiple vortex, little vortices, sub-vortices around the main mother meso. That's what was going on with this tonight, right? And there's the tornado there again. Folks, this went on forever, and all of this was live right here on News 9. And it was getting dark out, but you know what? Jim's not going home. He's hanging in tough, he's hanging in tight. Tornado on the ground there. Let me show you some of the, the uh, uh, damage from Seminole. And uh, let me show you what it looked like. And this is when JD pulled into town. This is like two minutes, three minutes after the tornado goes into town. Yeah, the tornado's right here. The tornado's right back here. It's just lifted north of town. This, he's looking east right here, coming into downtown Seminole. All right, there's the damage from JD. He's pulling in. Damage scatters throughout Seminole. It's, it's so widespread. The whole town has, not the whole town is completely damaged, but there is damage scattered across the entire city of Seminole. There's one of the roofs blown off there. You can see it peeled back. It's hanging. Yeah, in Seminole County, 8,500 customers without power, and most okay. of those are in Seminole. Yeah, yeah, 8,500 customers. So that's roughly 24,000 people right now in the dark. Now. Jim, after he left the tornado, came back to Seminole, up top, looking down. Roofs peeled back, roofs peeled off. Damage, right? Some roofs collapsed, some roofs are gone. Uh, peeled back, and then look at all the damage back here. Yeah, everything's peeled off. Peeled off and facing this way. Look at that. Look at that poor guy's roof, right? And look at the house next to it. Look at that, there goes your barn. Probably a pole barn, gone. Right? Damage here. The house is fine. That house is okay. Tree damage, tree damage, tornado damage, tornado roof gone off that. Right? So it varied quite a bit. It varied quite a bit from Seminole. All right. So, wow. Look at the damage there. And it looks like this scattered across Seminole. Not every, you know, Seminole's not lost by any means. It was not an EF4, EF5, or an EF3. This will go down probably is a, uh, what I've seen so far, maybe a, uh, an EF1. There might be some EF2 tornado damage. We'll find out probably as early as maybe as tomorrow. But uh, lots of damage down there in Seminole. You missed it two nights ago. We were on the air. It was going to be a Seminole thing, and it died and weakened as it was coming into Seminole. Okay, let's go back to Links 3 and talk about what's going on. And uh, here's the Cooperton storm. Severe storm at Hobart, and I want to point out, it's, it's severe with some large hail damaging winds, but this is the only severe storm in western Oklahoma now from Hobart, back down to 183, that's going to Godibo, that's going to Carnegie.
Yeah, and then the one crossing the Red River, which was tornadic earlier, has really yeah. fallen apart at the moment. Yeah. What, what, is, what does shear rate look like in that? But it's so close to the radar, it's hard to, oh, that, yeah, hard it to is. pick. But Val's right there watching okay. it. Okay. All right, Val's looking at it and here. And then this one uh, that's now south of Hobart, up yep. near Cooperton. Here, I'll turn on velocity. What's, yeah, what's that look like? Okay, there it is. It's uh, yeah, right there. It's right here. Okay, go back to velocity. Okay. Just curious. Okay, yep, okay. And go back to shear rate. Okay, it's right here. There's a weakness. Okay, there's a toward and away. It's coming at you. It's going towards you. All right, right here. So the circulation's actually getting east of the warning. Yes. But damaging winds in here right now, 60 to 70, quarter size hail. And uh, that's going to, we'll do a storm track, Carnegie, Fort Cobb, Fort Cobb, Blake, Pine Ridge. Uh, Brandon's on the east side of that. Let's go to Lynx 4, doing a storm track. And Cooperton, 958, Goaty Bow, 1004, Mountain View, 1017. Fort Cobb, 1045, Fort Cobb Lake, 1046, Anadarko, 1102, Grace Mon, 1105, and Verdon at 1117, Chickasha at 1129 in Chickasha. It is not tornadic. It has a mesocyclone with it, and it is spinning, okay? Um, Lace, take that, take that just for a second here. Let me step off. All right, so we're watching that storm in the southwest. That's the severe storm. Nothing along the line on Lynx 3 is severe. So if you look at downtown Oklahoma City, the rain coming in, we have heavy rain and storms in Canadian County. And I'll turn on the lightning. You can see they're still very electric, heavy rain. Um, this goes up to Fairview, all the way up to Enid. Still could have some small hail. And then further up towards the east, not severe, still water cushing down into Lincoln County. And then we still have the storm that is still rotating, although it has become much more broad throughout the lightning here. It's a lot going on there in uh, in Oklahoma County. So there's been a couple of different areas that we've been watching over the last 10 minutes or so. The one again south of Cromwell, David was talking about this, had the, the area of circulation south of Cromwell, kind of a new hook forming, not spinning enough that it's imminent as far as a tornado is concerned and been looking for any debris over in Oak Fusky County. Not seeing any of that, um, but this is the storm that had produced multiple tornadoes from south of Tecumseh back up to Earlsboro and now um, near the Cromwell area all across really northern Seminole County and then back up towards Okima. So what we'll do is we'll take a look here, another look on radar, and look for any, any what the rotation actually looks like with this because the hook went south of Okima. It's now pushing up towards Walitka, and then we're watching the second area back to the west, is what I was pointing out, David. It went over Cromwell again, or south of Cromwell. Yeah. No tornado there, but it's just another hook that's developed mm -hmm. and another area has been. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, this has been a breeding ground for tornadoes this evening. Uh, and we had warm, moist air in here. We've got a boundary, warm front draped in here. And man, it's all about low level shear. And you get a boundary, you get a southeast wind, and you get a jet stream overhead. And it's May 4th. What is today, May 4th? Yes. Yeah. Of course it is. Yeah. And that's the, the really the height of circulation there is what's moving into Mulgee County, northeast yeah. so, of Henrietta. Yeah. So that, that's, that's moving away from yep. us. Okay. All right. So that tornado warning will move into and north of Henrietta. This will be out of our viewing area. Okima, nothing crazy for you except more rain, wind, and some hail. Okay, let's come back to uh, central Oklahoma here. So that tornado warning is going to leave Okfusky County. And then we have rain and storms in Chandler. We have rain in the southeast metro, but let's go back to the west metro here. Okay. And I just want to show, here comes this big wave of heavy rain. And this is good news. This is just rain. And it's, it's going to rain a lot. And we, we, we could have some flooding developing, so we have to watch that. And we still could see more severe weather. But I like the fact that I don't see anything that's cranking up really scary right now. Just a lot of rain coming into the metro. We have to watch that, and we will watch that carefully. So, guys, it has been a long afternoon and evening. We have lots of video to cover, and we will give an update on how much more rain and storms we see overnight tonight. Now back to you guys at the news desk. You're absolutely right, David. Thank you so much, and thank you for joining us in our continuous breaking news coverage. We are covering the tornadoes and also major damage in the town of Seminole. That's about an hour drive east, southeast of Oklahoma City, as multiple tornadoes touch down there and around that area as well. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We saw that damage from Jim Gardner. Roofs blown off, trees torn down, windows shattered there in Seminole and elsewhere. We do have team coverage with all this damage. We have crews all over Seminole. 
with various angles. We will get to them in a few moments, but first we do check in back in with check back in with David Payne in the Bob Mills Weather Center. David. All right, thank you guys. And uh, yeah, what a day. We've had at least a dozen tornadoes today. And it all began this afternoon. We've been on the air nonstop and the hardest hit, talking about Seminole, it looks like to me EF1 damage in Seminole might have been stronger. We've had a tornado near Earlsboro. We have had a lot going on to our southeast. Hang on, more on that coming up. No severe weather in Lincoln County. It's light to moderate to heavy rain, some small hail. Kearney, Chandler, Stroud, back down to Meeker. The one tornado warning we had is now moving into and out of our viewing area into the Henrietta area now, east of Okima. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. And I want to take a closer look at what's going on. Seminole is in the clear right now, okay? But we have heavy rain in Okima, a little bit of a weak hook back here, developing bonds, watching that along with JD. We'll see what that does. But that tornado threat now is east of Okima, at least at this point, and moving away. Lace, what do you think on velocity here? Let's take a look. Yeah, look at the, the latest kind of couplet area. It's still That's earlier. Yes, that was earlier. This is still well up to the north yeah. now uh, yeah. and moving into Omulgee County. Yeah. Nothing very tight in central or eastern Okweski County. Yeah, so if you live in Okmulgee over to Morris, watch this. Tim's there. JD's there. We'll see what this does. But right now, this is, is where the tornado warning is that it now, again, is in Okmulgee County, okay? So back to the west. Sparks, Jacktown, not severe. Southeast Metro, rain there, a wall of rain coming into Canadian County, back through El Reno. Let's just keep going west and north. Billings, moderate to heavy rain. None of this is severe up here, folks. This is all good. It's just rain. We got to watch it, though. We still have the instability in that boundary just south of Oklahoma City. But for now, for the Metro, it is just all rain coming in. We might, though, start to get some flooding if this rain gets too heavy. And then we have the one severe storm coming out of and moving through Kiowa County. Now, east of Hobart, going through Goaty Boats, going to Carnegie. We'll do a storm track on that. But that storm is severe. And the other storm now severe coming out of Texas. So big storm running from Goaty Boat back down to Cooperton. It's going to Carnegie and Fort Cobb, Fort Cobb and Anadarko. And then we have the other severe storm, which is coming out of uh, Frederick here down to the south. All right, we'll get a storm track on both of those. And uh, we'll take a look at it here. Okay, so Lace moving east at about 30. Mm -hmm. There's your storm track. And uh, Cass, if you get a storm track on that southern storm coming out of the red, that'd be great. Mountain View, 1016, Fort Cobb, 1049, Apache, 1052, Anadarko, 1110, Cement, 1117, Verdon, 1127, Ninacaw, 1140, and Chickasha at about 1141. That's with that storm there. It is severe. It's going to Anadarko. Winds, 60 to 70. It has a mesocyclone. But right now, it's not strong enough to get a tornado warning. It's on and behind the boundary. If it stays there, we won't get a tornado. We will just get wind and hail, and it'll spin. Doesn't mean you're going to get a tornado, okay? Let's stay with Link Street. Let's drop south. Other storms going up near Mount Scott. Big, severe storm down here east of Davison. Look at the hook now coming across the red, and that's going to go towards Hollister, Loveland, and Chattanooga. That storm down here is severe. It has a hook on it. We're watching that. And let's go to shear rate and velocity data on that one. Let's see what we have. Still there as a couplet, almost too close to the radar. Shear rate right there. There it is. This is well south of the boundary. If we're going to get a tornado here in the next half hour or whatever, it's going to come out of this. All right, and it's going to Grandfield, it's going to Loveland, and it's going to Chattanooga, okay? And eventually it's going up towards Geronimo and Walters. Okay, so we're watching that. Okay, so let's do a storm track on the southern storm. And Lynx 4, let me show you what that's looking like currently. Chattanooga, 1023. Faxon, 1034. Empire City, 1124. Duncan, 1134. Central High, 1142. No severe weather. Again, headed for Oklahoma City right now. Let's go back in time here. Take a look at what happened with the first video of the day. Sky News 9 near Maud. This whole thing was on the ground for, we think at this point, over 20 miles. It was a long track tornado. It was a two and a half mile wide mesocyclone putting down tornadoes. At the same time, we had sister tornadoes on the ground. That was a double helix tornado doing damage near Maud. It was headed to Maud. It went on the north side of Maud. But that was from Jim Gardner in Bob Mill Sky News 9. That was live on News 9. And uh, again, that tornado was moving east. And there it is. And you can see the debris. You start to see debris pick up. So it hit something. And then you see trees start to snap off. Condensate goes all the way to the ground. Look at the helix on the backside. Look at the vorticity tube. 
form and wrap around and watch, watch it break down. One vorticity, two breaks down, it reorganizes, and then we do it again. The next piece of video uh, from Jim Gardner, and uh, once again, watch it fill in. Watch the tornado today fill in. It looks like just like it's dancing. It looks like it's just dancing with so much motion going on. Tornado all the way to the ground. Another double helix going to a triple. All right, and then we end up with four vortices in here at the same time. One main area, but we still have several vortices rotating around. Jim Gardner and Rich Kriegel. Another tornado here coming in. Another one, one, two, three. They're forming right before your eyes. Boom, boom, boom. Moving from left to right. This was live on News 9. Look how fast it weakens. Still on the ground. Condensate, right? It's wet over here. That's not dust you're looking at. That is condensate on the ground. Look at it going through the uh, greenhouse. Watch the greenhouse get shredded. Here comes the tornado doing damage in and through the greenhouse. Watch the trailers flip. We're going to flip these trailers. People live in these on these greenhouses. They live in these greenhouses and watch the tornado hit these trailers right here, folks. Watch from Jim Gardner in Bob Mill Sky News 9. Boom, 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 hit the trailers. And then the tornado continues to push on to the east. So what a wild day. And of course, let's do one more piece of video. Let me show you Seminole from the air. When Jim was all, look at the debris in the air. Look how high the debris is, 1,000 feet up. Look at the tornado still on the ground. And then Jim over Seminole. Seminole had a two and a half mile wide area of circulation go right over town and put down multiple small tornadoes in the city of Seminole. And there's a lot of damage over there. And it's gonna be days, if not weeks, weeks before they put it all back together. So guys, a wild day, at least a dozen tornadoes. We're talking about more rain, more severe weather, and more flooding overnight. Another update coming up in about 10 minutes. Guys, back to you. And we do wanna take a closer look now at Seminole. We have crews set up all over Seminole getting a first-hand look at the damage on the ground. Our Barry Mangold has been going through the neighborhoods and he starts our coverage there in Seminole. Barry, you are at the area of North Highland Street and West Osage Avenue. Give us an update there. Yeah, Amanda Carl, this is a neighborhood just off of 270 and 377. Trees have been uprooted and slammed onto the roads. This road, Highland Street, has been blocked in two different locations. You can see this tree completely uprooted from the ground. And if we pan over to the left, you'll just see the entire roadway is blocked. And it is just between boards of wood, parts of homes in, this, in the mix of this. There's just a lot to look at. But if you also come back over here, we do want to show you the other side of the street, just down the road, same situation. It's blocked. If you're noticing that it's dark, we also notice that there is not a single light on other than our cars, the lights that we brought with us, and maybe a battery powered light on a home or two. Otherwise, the homes here, this is actually, I believe this is one, there's one home that is trapped or that is enclosed in these two different road closures by itself. I spoke to that family earlier and they said that they actually they were in the center of the house they didn't really know they expect to have to go to their safe spot during this they huddled into the middle and while they were in the center of the home they felt the entire house shake one of the rooms on the outside of the house actually ripped off another woman on the other side of that tree blockage told me that her light bulbs exploded at some point and the sheds in the backyard were picked up and thrown by this wind and if you just go about half a mile over a quarter mile down the road to th uh, 377 you'll see a line of police cars different blockages they're trying to direct traffic away from power lines that have been down in the middle of the highway earlier when we were here we were in Seminole and we moved south for that second round of storms and then we moved back in getting south on 377 was a mess there was just closures all over the place and Honestly, I'm just impressed that we were able to get back in pretty smoothly. Safe to say that emergency responders are doing a lot of work here. We're going to be continuing to talk to people and get video of these uh, of the damage in here. But for now, reporting live in Seminole, Barry Mangold, Oklahoma Zone, News 9. Very great work out there. Let me just say, too, for anybody who needs to clean up, the Oklahoma Baptist Disaster Relief, they are going to be coming there to the Seminole area tomorrow. They're always helping out, so uh, look for them. They will be out with chainsaws for sure. Our News Nights Felice Romero is also in downtown Seminole. Felice, give us an update there. 
Amanda, there's a significant amount of damage here in downtown Seminole. The tornado ripping through this area, taking trees, power poles, and roofs with it. I'm going to have my photographer pan for me. Now, as you can see, um, the whole roof from this building is completely in the street. First responders tell me that they are going to come here in the next few moments and try and clear this up. A woman I spoke to says she works in downtown and was closing her shop as a second tornado warning was coming in. Two minutes later, we're told, like, we don't know what to do. We have no shelter at the apartments. So we go to the laundry room and we kind of just waited out. We watched a tree snap in front of us and then we're watching 10 fly from buildings right in front of us and everything. And I'm like, holy cow, we're in a tornado. Now, because the power was out, first responders were really just going down the streets with their sirens and intercoms warning people. Now, as you can see behind me, OHP is posted up and will still be out here for quite some time, helping clean up and checking on residents. For now, reporting live in Seminole, Feliz Romero, Oklahoma Zone, News 9. All right, good job, Felice. We are live at the Bob Mills Weather Center. The severe weather continues. The rain continues. It's going to be a loud night and a rowdy night. Will we see that tornado threat continuing overnight? How much rain will fall? That's going to be a problem. And more crazy, wild tornado video from today. What about Mother's Day weekend? Your forecast coming up after the break. Also ahead here on News 9, tornadoes ravaging parts of Oklahoma. Our team coverage continues with the damage left behind in the town of Seminole right after the break. Wake up with News 9 tomorrow morning. We're tracking more rain and storms overnight that could create a risk for flooding and impact your Thursday morning. In severe weather, it's all about the warning. This is going to be a News 9 tornado warning. In storm after storm. There it goes, David. There's your tornado on the ground. David Payne and his unparalleled team bring you the earliest warning. With a News 9 tornado warning. More time for you to prepare. This is live data. Everybody else is delayed. The tornado is getting pretty close to forming here, David. Because the locally owned station takes your safety seriously. Get warned first with David Payne, the Oklahoma weather expert. Stanley Chevrolet. Great news. Okay, let me get an update because I think. Alright, so we're we're on Highway 70. That would be That's like a donut hole or something. Well that's exactly where we're looking, but I just don't West because there's something weird going on back there. Yeah. Just let it see all that? Yeah. That looks like, like watch wall, that close. Looks like wall cloud stuff. What was that right there? <sighs> Are we recording on that thing? Uh, yes. Oh, I have to, let me hit the record button. There we go. Now we are. You want me to face that direction? No, I think roof cam is going to give us a better shot. Oh no, here comes another car. Okay. Yeah, let's just watch this for a second. Oh wow, look how low that is. I know. It looks is like that a rain core or is that something on the ground? It's... I, I think we need to face that way 
and you can you can turn both around both okay. cameras man that looks like something on the ground right, could well, be a hill core but i don't know I talked to several people in this neighborhood and they basically hit the nail right on the head. It looks like a bomb went off here in Seminole County. This road is covered with debris. When I got here, I didn't even know where I was until I found the street sign. It says North, it says North Milt Phillips and East Oak Avenue and there's a bunch of other debris in the road. There's down power lines behind me. There's a mattress in the road and there's a bunch of glass on this sidewalk. This is Quasing Farm Center. A lot of their windows are busted out. I talked to a few people that work at this store and they're assessing the damage right now. You can see straight through their store. And I ran into a good Samaritan who was helping assess the damage and he says it's going to be a long road to recovery, but he's going to be here for the ride. Right now, I guess it's all about just trying to do a quick assessment, see what we need, what we're going to need, and just get ready for the damage. Brody says it's probably going to take weeks to get Seminole back on its feet, but he's going to be here tomorrow to help. Live in Seminole, Angelicia Bruton, Oklahoma Zone, News 9. Angelicia, you mentioned the power poles down. We are keeping an eye on those outage numbers. I want to give you a quick update. Right now, 9,669 customers with OG&E are without power. About half of those are in Seminole. So we're keeping an eye on that. That's going to be a big cleanup for tomorrow. We do have a couple of shelters that are open in Seminole. We want to tell you about the First Baptist Church of Seminole. Open now for storm victims. It's a place you can go shower. You can get some water. Uh, and you can get other needs filled, fulfilled there as well. And it's at 420 Reed Street there in Seminole. We do have another one here, uh, Seminole State College. Seminole State College. Yeah. And that's going to be put on also by the Red Cross. Red Cross is saying if you have damage, if you need assistance, to give them a call, 1 800 Red Cross. So two shelters in Seminole available for people. We want to go ahead and send it back over to David Payne and the Bob Mills Weather Center with From the, the very Bob Mills latest. Weather Center, the Oklahoma weather expert. David Payne. Were you going to say something there? I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. <laughs> the big voice took care of it for uh, me. Uh, the big voice. You know, we, yeah, have not met the big voice yet, by the way. We don't know who it is. We think it's Carl. All right, here we go. Hey, we're talking about this was what was going on today. We're going through some of the video here. And uh, once again, that's what was happening with that. Let's go back to, I'll tell you what, control room. Before we do this, let's go back to radar. Let's go back to links three, and then we'll do some video here. Here's the big view, okay? The overview is that severe weather is now in, out of our viewing area. It's in the Tulsa viewing area, south and east of Tulsa. Let's zoom, take a zoom in here to Lincoln County and Payne County. Lots of rain. This could give us some flooding. Val has a funnel down south of Okay, Broughton. and uh, more rain in the north and west, and then back out to the west of El Reno here. Heavy rain coming in, and heavy rain now from Oklahoma County into Logan County. All right, none of this is severe, though. Let's go back to where it's severe. Let's go to... Southwest Oklahoma, check in with Val Castor. He is on that. And uh, Val, you say you've got a funnel. Storm is David, rotating. Go ahead, I think Val. It's, I think oh, David, it's on the ground. David, look, there's a funnel three quarters of the way to the ground. It's, it's, I guarantee it's on the ground, David. Okay, this is seven miles west of Grandfield. Seven miles west of Grandfield. We're on the highway. On Highway 70, we're looking west, southwest. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Get on it right there. Okay, there it is. It's, it's a lot closer to us than we thought. Oh, oh can, man, David. You can see it in the lightning. Right here. Wow. It's getting bigger. It is getting bigger. It's right there in front of us. Okay. Tornado on the ground. This is going to be west of Grandfield, seven miles on Highway 70. West of Grandfield. Uh, yeah. West of Grandfield on Highway 70 in southwest Oklahoma. Val, take it. What do you think? Go ahead. It's, it looks like it's going to miss Grandfield, though, is it not? Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's not going to hit Grandfield. It's seven miles west-southwest of Grandfield. I mean, it's got a long time before it gets to Grandfield. Um, and it, it's, I mean, it's a pretty large funnel right there. And I would say it's maybe, maybe a mile, but I, I know in the dark, things look a lot further away than they are. They're actually a lot closer. So we're recording with both cameras. I know you guys are recording, but it's, the funnel looks like it has lifted just a little bit from what it was. Um, now it's to our South, South, Southwest. And the, the funnel is about halfway to the ground there. It's it's really so dark, I can't really tell if there's debris on the ground still, like there was before. But this thing definitely touched down. And we could tell this thing was ramping up in the last 10 minutes or so because our winds uh, pretty much came strong out of the east once we got out of the core. 
So anyway, it's uh, we're watching it here. I think we're gonna have to go down the road east. Oh, it's still there. Look right there. It's getting bigger. Like it's still south of highway. Val, it's getting, it, hey it, Val, shear rate, shear rate is stronger along with velocity, and it looks like it, it's to your west southwest, south of seventy. Can you confirm that? It's south of seventy, west of yes. Granfield, seven miles. Yes, it's south of seventy. Okay. She's gonna put the camera on it. Um, it's south of seventy, maybe a half a mile, maybe three quarters of a mile south of seventy. Okay. Uh, it's hard to find this thing. We'll find. There it is, right there. There it is. Okay, hang on a second. All Wait right. So it's right. It's right behind us. And I, I really think it's it's going to cross Highway 70, 70 right uh, here in, here in just a minute. But it's it's the way it's moving. It's moving east northeast. Yeah. And it's probably going to be on the highway for a little while. Yes, it is. It still looks like right now, unless it does something nutty, it will miss Granfield, but not by much. So if you live. Uh, Val, we're going to come back to you here in just a second. Let's go to link three and talk about where this thing is. Here's Granfield. This is Lovin. There's the tornado. Watch it show up here. Boom. Right there. There's Val. It's right, right on his bumper. He's looking right at it. Tornado on the ground. We had it live right here on News 9. Val Castor had it looking right back at you. And that tornado, again, is now crossing Highway 70 southeast of Frederick. This is going to be far southern and southeastern Tillman County. This is in our viewing area. And it's moving east northeast. What's the speed, guys? 2025? Moving east northeast at 2025? Yeah, about almost 30. Almost yeah. 30 now? Okay, it's moving. All right, it's moving. So, tornado warning now. Southeastern uh, Tillman County. This is going to be southeast of Frederick, southeast of Hollister. Let's go to velocity data. Let's see what we're looking at here on wind speeds. Let's see what kind of tornado strength we have. And oh, yeah, zoom on in on that. Right here. What? Oh. Oh boy, there it is. Yeah, it's that's pretty tight, no doubt about it. Pretty tight. Okay, what's SRV look like? That's SRV. Okay, I'm sorry, base. My bad. Yeah, and then there's base. It's very, okay. very, be very similar. That's right by the airport. Yeah. Right by the uh, yeah. the side of the radar. Sure, we're good. Okay, so there's the tornado. It's going to cross 70 right on top of Val, and uh, it's right here. You're thinking that thing. Look at this. Look at the hook. The storm. The hail is up here. Look at the hook. The the hook. The tornado is. One, two, three, four, five miles southeast of the main core. It is so tilted. It is so tilted over in the sky that the tube, the updraft, is here and coming back from the north back down to the south. That's how tilted this storm is. All right, let's go back to Val. Val Caster, you're five miles away from the core. How about that? That's how far this tornado is tilted and hanging out the back of this thing. Go ahead, Val. Give us an update. Okay, so David, um, we have, we have pulled off the road, huh? Okay, we pulled off the road again, and it's that direction. It's to our southwest. Um, it looks like to me. I mean, the funnel has lifted a little bit. I mean, it's it's almost like right above us, and I, it's not as close to the ground as it was a few minutes ago. It, it's pretty much right that direction, right at my window. And straight up. So it has lifted just a little bit, David. It does not look as strong as it did before. Okay. Um, it, it, it's almost to come on top of the road here. So it's, and I really think unless the storm changes directions or maybe, you know, starts to occlude or something like that, it's going to miss Granfield to the north a little bit. Yes, it is. So, but even still, people need to uh, take their precautions just in case something happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, here's the deal, Val. The max. Rot and uh, the max rotation and the shear rate. Shear rate has just about maxed out. Let's go back to Link 3. Tornado warning now. This is for southeastern Tillman County. Is that it right there? There's your tornado. There's your tornado crossing Highway 70, right? Here's Granfield. You folks in Granfield, um, it would have to do something really nutty here, like go north and east and then back down to the southeast or, or make a hard right turn and move east southeast. That's not going to happen right now, okay? Can it happen? Absolutely. So, Granfield, if I live in Granfield, I'm watching this carefully. I'm thinking about where to go. And if I live north and west of Granfield, um, we got to keep an eye on this. It's just to the west of the bend, west of town. Been through there a bazillion times. And that is the tornado. That's the tornado. Let's go back to reflectivity. Take a look at it. And again, look at the hook hanging down. We were talking about this earlier. We were saying all these cities several hours ago. As these storms come out of Texas, they are in an environment to produce tornadoes, and that's exactly what this monster is doing. This is a big storm, Screaming Eagle. Wings, wings, 
Screaming Eagle, boom. A little more inverted, a little like this, but that is a, man, that's a big storm. Okay, nothing tornadic down here. Oh, lusty, this is nothing. This is just rain. This is rain. Severe storm to the north, okay? Severe storm up here, going to Carnegie, going to Fort Cobb, going to Anadarko. Uh, let's go back to Lynx 4. We're going to do storm track on Lynx 4, and we're looking at Loveland at 1031, Chattanooga 1052, Faxon 1102, jump down the line, Lawton 1132, Sterling 1203, Duncan 1207, Marlowe at 1215. So there's your tornado, big hail, quarters and golf balls over Hollister. That's going to stay up towards Chattanooga, but the tornado is right here where Val is at Highway 70. Let's go back to Valcaster, bring you back in, get an update from Val. Tornado warning continues for southeastern Tillman County. And across the road. And Val, uh, it looks like yep. it either has crossed the road or it's, it's doing it right now. Go ahead. Yes, David, it just crossed the road right behind us, uh, and we believe it's still on the ground. I'm going to stop here. Every, when I find a turn off, i got to stop and turn around and look at it. But it did cross the road behind us. I'm over where the, you know where the road turns to the southeast, uh, Highway 70. We're right where the road turns to the southeast, and it, it's, we think it's still on the ground uh, just north of the road, maybe no more than a half a mile or so. Okay. I turned my headlights off here. Yeah. It has to lightning. There's not a whole lot of lightning here, but it has to lightning just right to be able to see it. I know you can see it in our our uh, night vision shot. Man, I tell you, the wall cloud with this thing is huge, okay. Here, David. Okay, right then, I did not, I, I saw some lightning. I did not see it on the ground in your shot. Not right there. I, the lightning okay. was, was long enough, but don't take, don't go to Vegas on, on that. I'm just... I'm watching it with you, just like you are. It did not look like, I, you know, here's the deal. It, it doesn't mean okay. there's, it doesn't mean there's not a suction spot. I'm not seeing it spot. either. I'm not seeing it either, David. Okay. But I am seeing a big wall cloud, so I think yes. it is lifted. Oh, wow. Look at the right side of the That's wall cloud, big. Val. Look at the right side of that thing. Hmm. Look, look at the inflow. Look yeah. at the inflow on the right side. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, the inflow is pretty strong on the northeast and east side right there yep that's the wall cloud that's the base and that's that's what it pretty much came out of so uh right now i don't think it's on the ground at the moment um but that wall cloud is there it's probably i know it looks further away in the shot but the wall cloud is about a mile to our west northwest yeah. and okay val we'll move into the east northeast yes okay radar has it now uh almost a half mile north of you almost due north of you now Okay. Is, uh, yeah, I mean, that would make sense. Yeah, it's like, it's lifting. It is lifting to your north for sure. So you've got some good roads down there, Val. You've got great roads. Um, you got a little hiccup uh, where you are to get back north, but you're on the bend. If you take that uh, 2350 road and head north, uh, you'll be in good shape or whatever. You know what All you're right. doing. I, I'm just saying there are some good roads yep. down there for you to be able to peel back north. This is going to Loveland. This is going to try to go to Loveland. Let's go back to shear rate, then we'll come back. Oh, Val, hey, hang on. Wow. Okay, so here it is. Going to Loveland. If you folks uh, live in Loveland, little small farm community down here. Lots of wheat down here. We have cotton. We have wheat. Um, lots of farming down here. Lots of farms, big ranches. Coming into Loveland right now. Tornado is on the ground, at least it has been. Crossing Highway 70, headed up towards Loveland. Okay. So that's what's going on with that. There's the tornado right there. There it is right there. Moving off to the northeast at about 25 to 30 miles per hour. Up in here is all big wind, big rain and hail. The tornado is again right here. And do we see any? That's not, that's not, nope, nope. It hasn't done enough damage yet. There's not enough debris in the air right. to see it. So, okay. All right, there it is though. Okay, let's come back to, uh, I'll tell you what, let's, let's go back. Let's, let's, let's go back to reflectivity. I want to back out just a second. Okay. Then we'll go back to Val. So tornado warning continues for southeastern Tillman County. Let's go ahead and back on out. And I just want to point out southwestern Oklahoma, south of Althus. This is garden variety showers and storms. This one is pretty strong down here. As we come to the north, eastern Kiowa County, moving into southeastern Washington, uh, Washita County. Severe storm now coming into Carnegie. Uh, that's going to go to Anadarko and Chickasha. Good old fashioned rain across the city across the metro, light to moderate to heavy rain. This could give us flooding overnight. And the rain continues to fall. We've already had two to three to four inches of rain the last couple of days. 
and flooding could begin to develop here the next couple of hours. We're going to have to watch that. And then we have other strong storms off to our east, Payne, uh, up to Logan and Kingfisher County, and not much to worry about up north. But notice how there's more rain developing back out into western Oklahoma. No complaints. You need it in the west. Okay, let's go back to some of the video today. We'll keep moving through our show here. And uh, we were looking at the uh, greenhouse damage, but let's not look at the, the greenhouse damage from Jim Gardner after the tornado went through when Jim was back on in here. I want to show you that one more time. And uh, we haven't seen this video yet. This is when Jim had done all of his chasing and he went back. That, folks, look at that. Wow. That's what we had live on the air when it was ripping through there. Look at the damage. And I know it's a greenhouse, right? I get it. They're not built to, to withstand anything like this, right? But all these campers out in here, all these folks live in these campers, and that place is trashed. I don't care who you are. And then you look at some of the uh, mobile homes, the trailers that were brought in. They're on their sides. There's the one that we saw live on the air. We saw that flip, and we saw that flip live in Jim's shot. Okay? So there that is. That's what was going on northwest of Maud. And that is, look at that. Yeah. I mean, if you're in that, if you're in that, those things are not well built. They are for traveling. Don't get me wrong. They're not well built, though, to withstand damaging winds or a, or a tornado. They, they certainly did not, did not go right today with that. Okay, let's go to the multi-vortex tornado here again. And I want to show you what that looked like. And this is what we had again live on the air. Jim Gardner uh, was all over this today. We were the only ones uh, when this started on this event. And tornado there on the ground, tornado on the right, developing here. And this just became stronger and stronger as it continues to spiral. And the pressures are lowering. Pressures are lowering. Condensate begins to develop on the ground. And if you're standing in this, it's getting windy and you have water vapor all around you. That's not debris. That's not dust. That is condensate. That is cloud, which is incredible to me that cloud develops to the ground because the pressures have become so low. That is the tornado. Now we have debris in the air. Pretty big branch right there. You see that? That is a substantial branch. We're, you know, we're, we're a good mile and a half away. And look at the lift coming out of the tree. So the tornado continued there. Wow. Okay, so crazy, crazy stuff going on. We have one more piece of tornado video, I think. And uh, wow, look at that. Look at the lightning in that shot, too. Wow, just, just incredible to watch it. It's so fluid, so incredible to watch how it spiraling over and new condensate just continues to redevelop down here on, on the ground. And it cycles and then does it again, tornado again as it was coming in on Seminole. This was southwest of Seminole. This is what moved into Seminole. Seminole's right here to my right. And this was about a two and a half mile wide area of a mesocyclone. And underneath it, we had a tornado there. We had another tornado back in the rain. And the rain is now wrapping around the mesocyclone from left to right. It's a cylinder in the sky that's gone all the way to the ground. Okay? That's what you have going on with that. Tornado, 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 they're lined up in there. And that, that's what ate Seminole. That's went right over Seminole. Okay, so let's go back to links one, Lacey. Let's talk about some of the graphics here. Tornado reports today, this will change, but we think about a dozen started in Pottawatomie County and in Seminole County and then Ofusky County and the one down here southeast of Frederick. Right now, these numbers will change. The strongest, possibly an EF1, maybe an EF2, an EF1, I think I've seen EF2 damage. So the, the count now, we'll take it to 13. That'll change. That'll change. Power outages, 6,000 customers without power in Seminole County. A lot of those are in Seminole. 2,500 in Hughes County, 900 in Pottawatomie County. Right? Right here where the bullseye is, where the tornadoes were. All right, let's keep moving through our graphics here. Severe, yes, weather still ongoing. Southwestern Oklahoma, tornado wash continues south of Oklahoma City uh, until 4 a.m. Tornado wash until 4 a.m., thank you. And that's going to go on to 4 a.m. We will be here watching all of this. Okay, let's still move to the graphics here. Again, this was our storm zone the last two days. I think we did okay. We had numerous severe storms labeled with a moderate risk. And again, that's pretty much the way it worked out. This was our tornado zone today. And uh, you know what? Not bad. We kept saying that south of I-40, biggest hail would be down here. And we've had some big hit. I don't, have we had tennis ball size? I don't think we've had. I haven't seen a report of tennis ball. I know we've had um, golf balls. No. I know our trackers yeah, were in golf balls. Golf so that balls. was in the orange. Yep. Lots of golf balls. Winds, we've had winds, pockets of 65 to 75 miles per hour. Okay, let's keep moving through. Now, this is future radar, okay? And take you through 10 o'clock tonight. The, 
radar models did a pretty good job. Look at the rain just continuing overnight tonight. Central, western Oklahoma. I know. It's just going to keep raining. That's why we're worried about the flooding threat overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning. Okay, that's why we're really, really worried about this. So we'll have to keep an eye on this. And then by noon tomorrow, it gets lighter. Some rotation will continue tonight, but gradually things will weaken as far as the spin. That's a good thing. So the tornado threat the next couple of hours will certainly be there. And this is future radar looking at model data, looking at how much rain will potentially fall. Three to four to five inches of rain. So flash flooding across central Oklahoma into southwestern Oklahoma. Certainly a real possibility. And let me show you the big view of this. Yes. All right. Watch the rain amounts here stack up. Tulsa, central, southwestern Oklahoma. Not as much in the northwest tonight. In the west, no flooding there. And then no flooding down south, okay? It's going to be a southwest, a central, and eastern Oklahoma. An additional three to six inches. The county's flashing are already flash flood warnings in effect currently. All right, so here's your forecast map. Let's get to it here for tonight. 58 degrees in Oklahoma City. We have a north wind. That'll keep that tornado threat out of the metro. Rain and storms continue overnight, 100% chance. Overnight and tomorrow morning, it'll rain in the city in the morning, and then it will gradually come to an end mid to late morning in the metro. It'll come to an end. Highs tomorrow, back to the 60s. North winds will be windy. 90 forecast, we're gonna get a nice break. We've earned it in Seminole, Earlsboro, you have earned it, my friends. You're going to have some great looking weather to clean up 60s, 70s, and 80s. Next week might see more severe weather, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week. We are tracking that. Guys, back to you. No, you are, David. Thank you. And we're going to be uh, checking back in with you. If anything changes here in the next couple of minutes, we are monitoring a news conference that's about to start by OHP Trooper Foster to give us an update on what they're doing to keep residents safe and just whatever information we need to pass along to viewers. I'm making sure that that hasn't started yet. Yeah. Oh, it, okay. Let's go live to, to make sure that now. there are no there's no one out there that needs help that we don't know about yet. So that will take quite some time because it is spread out in a rural area. There's so many different agencies out here. That is a great thing. We have a lot of uh, people here as far as uh, heavy equipment and fire and ODOT is here. Uh, lots of different people. And so we're grateful uh, to be able to say that we're working together to try to make sure that everybody is safe. There were two, two tornadoes that came through uh, this town uh, and around about uh, Seminole. And so there's a large path of, of of damage. Uh, there are power lines down. Uh, there are reports of gas leaks, things like that. So there's a lot of things that we have to look over and check for. Have there been any reported injuries? Um, gratefully, we can say that there have not been any reports of injuries right now uh, that have come into us. There were a couple of walk in to the hospital, uh, minor injuries, uh, but we had numerous ambulances waiting uh, to be able to transport people and none of them were were having to be used and so that's a great thing is everyone still out of power uh, power is out in Seminole uh, for the most part uh, and then communications are down we're working to establish that right now um, and uh, really our main thing right now in priority is to make sure that everybody has cover because tonight it will continue to rain and be you know uh, weather uh, and so we will try to, uh, the American Red Cross will be out here trying to um, get everybody shelter and make sure everybody's safe as we continue to search all of the areas, not just in the town of Seminole, but around and in and the Cromwell area as well. And how many troopers are in the area, if you, if you know? I, I, I don't have that number, but there are a lot of troopers there here, but there are a lot of other agencies too. Uh, and as you can see behind me, uh, the command post is here with volunteer firefighters, with police departments uh, from all over the area. So it's a it's a great thing. And we heard of people trapped uh, for about 45 minutes in a storm shelter. Uh, were there any other people that were trapped that you, can, that you know of? Um, there, I, I heard reports of maybe uh, one lady that may have been trapped in a home, uh, but that may have been just because the door wasn't able to open. No injuries there. We were able to, to get them out. Um, and it's really important, you know, the, the people that were trapped in the storm shelter, they reached out via social media because they couldn't use their phone. That's a great lesson for us. Go ahead and reach out that way as well if you can. Uh, and if there are anybody that needs help, we, we're, there's plenty of people here uh, to come help. And can you tell us more about that uh, gas leak on University Drive? What's the update on that? Uh, crews are working on that right now. Obviously, that's a priority to get that taken care of. And so all of those things, any kind of storm like this, you're going to have all of your utilities, 
are going to be knocked down uh, and, and it's a significant problem. And so all of those crews are here. They're working on those right now. We have power lines that are down on the roadway um, and, and they're, they're looking to secure those uh, as well. The other thing I would like to mention is security for this scene. If you don't have to be down here, please don't come down here. We're trying to help people that need to be helped, number one, and then number two, secure locations that need to be secured, that have people's valuables in them. Uh, and so there's a heavy law enforcement presence as well as emergency responders to try to make sure that everybody's things are safe as well. And so talking about that damage, what is some of the damage that you've been seeing uh, you know, just the typical tornado damage. You know, when you when you go into the town and, and even outside the town, you can tell that uh, there were high winds, that there were tornadoes around. Uh, roofs were taken off and parts of structures are down. Um, and so we're seeing that all over. That creates another hazard for people being out and about. Even driving through, there's a lot of debris and, and flood waters as well. So it is dangerous uh, for everybody you know, working out here and, and for people, uh, you know, just coming. Please stay away from the area. And do you have any information on the damage in Earlsboro? So Earlsboro right now, I don't have information. We have troopers that are in that area as well, uh, helping and assisting with that grid search. I haven't been to that location, so I'm not quite sure. Uh, Pottawatomie County Sheriff's Office will have more information uh, for Earlsboro, but I can speak to Seminole and Cromwell and the, the damage that is there and then the equipment that's being used there. And my last question, who are the responding agencies out here? Uh, the two numerous to, to mention. Uh, I, I've walked through here, and I, every, every time I walk through, I see a different agency. And that's a great thing. They're volunteer. Uh, there are police departments, small police departments. There are state agencies down here. There's a lot of different people uh, that, that mobilize immediately to be able to, you know, use any asset that they have to help. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Our yep. thanks to Trooper Eric Foster for taking the time out to tell us uh, and you at home what's going on in the Seminole area right now. I do want to let you know if you go to school in Seminole, Seminole Public Schools, Earlsboro Public Schools, also Butner Public Schools, which is Cromwell, those classes have all been canceled for tomorrow. And the big thing to come out of that, obviously, no injuries, no significant injuries. There were some minor injuries, people showing up to the hospital, but, but nothing major there. Uh, also, the power still out in Seminole and the... Uh, the bottom line from troopers out there is don't come to Seminole if you don't have to. Exactly. Because there's crews coming in that will be able to help, but they don't need to be uh, uh, putting up with people that are just kind of there to see the damage. They don't, they don't need any of that right now. So we'll be checking with our crews and also getting another check with our chief meteorologist, David Payne, after we take this short break. Nothing brings the family together like a pool. Galaxy has an in-ground pool for all budgets and styles. Fiberglass, concrete, and vinyl. We also have semi-in-ground pools at a fraction of... extended the warning north. Okay. Tornado warning. Oh. oh, because it's moving off to the north west. Yeah, that's crazy. Almost looked like... Okay, got it.
already know. Just keep doing the shots that you're doing. One of the classrooms, we're going to look right into one of the classrooms that's had a wall ripped off. Jim Gardner flew over the school earlier this evening right after that first tornado hit, and we saw that several... Uh Several structures were damaged. There's actually one of these modulars stacked on top of the one that you're looking at right now. There's lots of debris in this area. The power is still out. It's very dark. Um, we're seeing, you know, lots of two by fours. There's debris from the school. There's insulation and traffic is moving very slowly through this area. We're on the south side of Seminole. The Academy of Seminole, Seminole um, saying tonight they actually had staff here on site when the tornado uh, struck. They were safe. Um, uh, they rode out the tornado in a vault, but there will be no classes here until further notice. Seminole Public Schools also received some damage today. They're more on the eastern side of town. They're not going to have any class for the rest of the week. The superintendent saying he hopes they're back in class on Monday when the power's back on. Live in Seminole, Augusta McDonald for Oklahoma Zone News 9. Augusta, thank you. All right, so thankful that they, there was a storm shelter there. They could be in that vault right there. Right, so, and yeah. as of right now, no loss of life, which is so important to start. Stress. We want to go right back over to our chief meteorologist, David Payne. David, also hearing the city manager in Seminole yeah. telling our crews that a water rescue is in progress. Yeah, that, they, it's, they've had all the rain over there. I mean, yeah, flash flooding is still ongoing. And here's the problem with Seminole, right? Okay, let's take a look at it here. Here's Seminole. The rain is just now leaving, okay? That's kind of the whole thing of today. That's the, kind of the backside. But look at the rain now. Look at the wall of water coming in to the metro. So this wall of water is going to limp through... Oklahoma City overnight, give us some flooding overnight, and then move into Seminole. And they're going to have more flooding over there tonight. So, folks, we're talking about some places picking up over a half a foot of rain. It's what we've been saying here the last couple of days. We've already picked up two to four inches. You add another half a foot in some of those areas. Now, we're not going to have every county underwater, but we are certainly going to go to bed and wake up with roads underwater. And more than likely, if folks are not careful and are not thinking correctly, we're going to have some water rescues if people try to drive into water and things like that. Do not drive into water. If you got to, you know, go to work, I get it. You got to get up, go to school, go to work in the morning. If you see water over the road, turn around, don't drown. Don't be that guy. Again, we don't want to put you on TV. We like you, but we don't want to put you on TV. All right, so uh, severe storm again over east of Stroud, going into Creek County and uh, just northwest of Okima, coming into Welty. Going to have some nickel dime, quarter size sale, winds 50 to 60 with that. And then look at all the rain now coming through the metro. This is light to moderate rain from Mulhall to Guthrie down through Oklahoma City. But none of this is severe. The boundary is south of us. Now, this storm is severe at Anadarko. Mid-level rotation with that. Uh, that storm is severe coming into Anadarko right now. Winds 50 miles per hour, maybe some gusts of 60, and some nickel and dime, maybe some quarter size hail. Elsewhere, uh, a lot of this is light to moderate to heavy rain across the city with some hail mixed in, but very, very small hail. We got to watch these storms down here, though, coming in on Wynette. Okay, let's go to southwestern Oklahoma here on radar. Talk about the tornado warning, which Val and Amy are on. Other severe storms now beginning to ramp up southeast of Hollis. These have the potential to produce more tornadoes. We have to watch these carefully. We have Marty and Brandon on that storm there, and uh, we'll see if they're in anything. And then we have Val down here, which Val had the tornado on the ground about 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago. Let's go back to Val and bring him back in it. Then we'll do a storm track. That tornado is going to be south of Chattanooga. And it lifted to the almost due north now. And at shear rate, it has weakened. No doubt about it. It's come down quite a bit here in the last 10 minutes, looks like to me. Um, let's go to Val and get an update. Val, rotation is still there, just not quite as strong as what it was. Not quite as ominous as what it, what it was about 10 to 20 minutes ago. Go ahead. Yeah, David, after the tornado lifted, um, the whole mezzo did indeed occlude and move north. It moved northeast and then north-northeast and then north and even a little bit maybe back uh, to the north-northwest. Uh, visually, I can tell that it looks like it has weakened. Um, I know that they did extend the warning to the north because it was moving north again. Uh, the rotation, like you said, it's, it's still there. It's not nearly as strong as it was, and if it lightnings just right in our shot, you could kind of see the lowering. The lowering is still kind of there, pretty much due west of us, maybe a little west northwest of us. So uh, right now we're just southwest of Chatt Chattanooga, and we are going to just keep following this thing, David. Back to you. Okay, great job there, Val. So, Val, this is pretty close to the boundary 
uh, the actual cool front or warm front, if you will, is is draped down there. So if this thing goes any farther north, um, it's gonna it's gonna certainly lose that tornado threat for sure. But man, it was a big bad storm coming out of the Red River. It produced a lot of tornadoes in Texas. This storm went crazy down in Texas today. Uh, but Val and Amy are still there. They're still on it, folks. Okay, back to uh, Lynx three, and there's Val, and the circulation went right there, and it's gone. It's pretty much gone. There it is. Let's go to shear rate. And again, it's close to the radar, and there it is right there. And notice how we start to lose the greens, going to the bright, bright greens and the reds. It's gone. It's gone, lifting north. So uh, we're about ready to lose the tornado warning on that. And even look at it here. It doesn't look near, near as impressive as it did. So it's, it's coming down. Right now it's coming down. Now, this storm is not. Uh, this storm, um, I'm not worried about it right now. But uh, we're watching this carefully, and then also the storm back here. A um, little bit of a weak mezzo with that. There might be, there's a me definitely mezzo in that. And there's definitely mezzo in this. Yeah, we've got to keep an eye on that storm. Is that, that's still south of the boundary, correct? Okay, I'm worried about that a little bit. That's south of the boundary. You folks in Altus, up with me tonight, uh, up with us tonight, uh, keep an eye on this. This storm is south of the cool front. This is in warm air. We've had storms that have been spinning through this area. This is another one spinning through that area uh, that's going to head towards Altus. So if you know anybody that lives in Altus and you think, oh, they go to bed early, give them a text, give them a call. Uh, the storm is severe, and it's going to Altus, and it's also developing a hook on it right along the Red River. And that hook's going to pass pretty close to Altus here the next a half hour to 45 minutes. Okay? So we cannot keep, you know, can't keep our eye off that. We got to watch that one carefully here. Okay, so Chattanooga, severe storm for you. Uh, no longer tornadic. That continues to lose that tornado threat. Big storm south of Ryan. Uh, we have an, what we call an MCV now developing right here. The whole area is becoming a low pressure area that's going to produce more heavy rain over Hilton and Ardmore and Tishomingo. Big ball of energy coming out. Still a tornado threat down here on these southern fringes. A little pendies are sticking off. Right there? Yeah, you got to watch that. And that'll come into southern Oklahoma. Okay, so let's come back north here. Talk about what's going on in Oklahoma City. I want to point out nothing severe in the north, but notice the rain and storms redeveloping in the northwest. Fine. Lightning, thunder, yes. But we're not going to have any tornadoes in the northwest. So the boundary now, does it not run like right in here and then like this? If you want to go to Lynx 1, I've got it for you okay. just temperature-wise so you can see. There's your boundary. Yeah. Okay, where you see the... Low 70s, this is where the tornado threat's going to be overnight tonight. Yeah, north wind in Norman right yeah. now. Yeah, so. so, right, McAllister, Holdenville, Seminole, down to Purcell, down to Ninicol and Elgin, right, Mount Scott, Lawton, and then back down to Altus. There's your warm front. Where you see the 50s and low 60s, um, we're out of it. We're out of it. Here in Oklahoma City, we have a north wind. We're going to get rain overnight. Might have some small hail and gusty winds. But the tornado threat is going to be where you see the upper 60s and low to mid 70s down south overnight tonight. We'll have to watch those carefully, okay? All right, so go back to Lynx 3 on the big view, the wide view. Uh, rain increasing across the northwest some. A little bit of lightning and thunder up here, but nothing weird. Rain in the north. Heavy rain now coming into Stillwater and Perry. And uh, heavy rain now coming into the metro, which is enhancing. If the rain moves out, we won't have... Again, if it moves out quickly, well, obviously well, our flooding will be less, but if this slows down and some of the model data keeps this on top of us too long and we start to get problems. But right now, the only severe storm uh, that we have, we have three. We have Cattle County. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one more time. Okay. And that is going to be now coming into Gracemont and Adarco. This is next to you live from Million Watt Radar. From there, it's going to Hank. Uh, it's going to Tuttle, it's going to Miko, and right here. And that's going to be moving east-northeast. So again, heavy rain, small hail, gusty winds, but not tornadic. We're watching it. Nothing tornadic here to worry about with this. It does have a mesocyclone in it down here south of Anadarko, right there. But nothing crazy. You can see Val's shot down there. You can see the, what's left of the wall cloud, and now it's just a big base. We're watching that, though. So uh, let's go to the southwest here. So that storm is severe in Caddo County, down into Tillman County. Coming into Cotton County, the tornado warnings, I think, will be dropped here shortly. All right, but we got to watch these little storms like this that are on the boundary. That's behind the boundary, is it not? 
Uh, which one are you? I'm pointing sorry, at? the one near Cash. Near Cash, yeah. So Medicine uh, Medicine Park has a north wind. Okay, that's yeah. great. But down here we still have a south wind, right? Yes. Okay, so this this has a tornado threat. Hollis has an east wind. Altus has a <coughs> southeast wind. Okay, you folks in Altus, I'm telling you, we you got to watch this storm. We are. We're watching it. There's a chance this could spin coming up and get tight. And if it tightens up and the mezzo gets deeper, starts to wrap, we might have problems, okay? Uh, we're not seeing it quite yet. What does shear rate look like on that? Anything? It shows it. I mean, it shows the hook. It's, it's there. Right there. Okay. So, Altus, Altus, Altus. Not a tornado warning, not yet, but you need to watch that storm, okay? All right, so that's what's happening there. So a wet night ahead, everybody gets rain. The flooding threat is certainly real. Let's take a look at the flash flood watch that's in effect, and it's pretty much where it's raining from there to the east. And let me show you the watch. An additional three to six inches of rain. Now the county's flashing Creek, Lincoln, Okfusky, Okmulgee, uh, Pottawatomie, Northern Pottawatomie, Northern Seminole County, flash flood warnings. Okay, it's east of Oklahoma City, but it won't take much for us to start to see flash flooding in Oklahoma City. And that'll be the next several hours into the overnight hours, possibly into tomorrow morning, if the rain does not move out of here fast enough. And uh, again, so flood watch with a flash flood warning and a big one going on from Lincoln, Pot, Seminole County from there, up south and east of Tulsa. Western Oklahoma, you're not gonna have any flooding tonight, okay? But Oklahoma City, we are still under the gun for sure, okay? All right, so, wow. All right, rainfall amounts, links three so far. What we've seen is this, uh, how many hours you That's got here? That's taking 24. 24, so taking through the rain this morning. Yeah, and uh, 4.6 in Little. So, yes, we've had, again, water rescues going on from Little up to Okima. We've already had five inches of rain here, pretty close to it, almost five inches of rain. And the wall of water that's coming in tonight is going to give you another one to two. So you've already, you're going to get seven inches of rain uh, north of Seminole and north of Cromwell. You're going to get seven inches, maybe more. So your drought, pretty much over with. We're gonna fill the ponds up and raise the lake levels, all right? But it's dangerous, right? Driving into water is dangerous for sure. Okay, guys, um, let's go back to uh, links three. I'll tell you what, control room one more time. Let's take a look at the tornado video again from near Mod today. And uh, this is when it was uh, west of Mod. We had this live on News 9. There's your tornado. And uh, man, this storm took off. I'll tell you what, we had Jim down south. We had him 20 miles from here, parked, waiting. And uh, this is where we thought it was going to be. And I'm telling you, we launched him, and he got right on this thing. And he was on it hot and heavy. And I'm telling you, this thing was spinning. It was about a two-and-a-half-mile wide area that was rotating. And we had two tornadoes on the ground at the same time. There's one of those there, double, double helix tornado. Look at this shot here. Watch this fill in. Look how fast that happens. Now, was that a strong tornado? No. No. EF0, maybe an EF1. It does get stronger, though. And look how the cone here, look how everything is rotating around. So that's what we've been dealing with throughout the day. So what a day it has been. So guys, I tell you what, it's been a wild day. At least a dozen tornadoes. The uh, Seminole tornado, probably an EF1, might have been stronger. This was the Seminole tornado before it got the Seminole wrapped up in rain and gobbled up the entire town. So. Crazy stuff going on there. Guys, back to you. All right, and tomorrow morning, the governor will be there in Seminole to take a tour of the damage. Yeah, and we'll have crews out there as well. We'll have the latest right here on News 9 starting at 4 a.m. Keep it right here on News 9 throughout the evening. We'll be right back with Glenn Clark. Just a, maybe a tiny bit of strengthening here.
lost you there for a minute. Boundary, the last thing I heard you say was the boundary's already in McLean County.
Uh, we are going to stay with this storm. Uh, keep following the storm. They have dropped all the warnings on it. Uh, but it is still there. Uh, until it you know, goes away or no longer becomes a threat. So it should be moving probably through or near lot pretty soon. Um, that's the same storm that produced the tornado that you saw earlier when it was west of Grandfield. So, you know, it probably still has an updraft that's at least somewhat rotating, but right now it, it, there's no shear showing up near the ground or anything like that.
west of Granfield? About seven or eight miles west of Granfield. Here, Loveland. Well, Loveland is north of 70, but. Right. It actually happened south of the highway, remember? Mm -hmm. I mean, we were. I think we were in there. Okay. So it wasn't really near Loveland. It was. But not, once it wrapped back up. It, yeah, it went up there, but it wasn't. I don't think it lifted before it went up there. Um, I would just reference Granfield. You know, when we were looking at this thing, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, oh, it looks like it's about two miles away. And then you look here, and it's like. And I get out and look over the truck. Yards. And I'm like, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you kind of got out of there pretty fast. I was like, well, I think you're going to just let it go over the truck. That's what I thought. <laughs> well, you never know. I mean, if it's like that Wichita one. Yeah, I mean, it was in the field. It got pretty close to us. I don't know if it was fully on the ground when it when it was closest, but I mean it was I was looking up. <laughs> I'd rather stay out. <laughs> yeah, I could stay out to 3 a.m., but waking up at 4, that's tough. So just wanted to update if you're in Lawton wondering about these storms. They are no longer severe. Uh, they could reach severe levels again, but right now they've weakened and there's just some lightning, a little bit of wind, but nothing crazy right now. So hopefully that helps you if you're in Lawton wondering about this. Man, that's crazy. Yes. Um, let me ask, were we recording on the Loveland tornado on the yes. Grand Field? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. It was, we actually have a recorder now for the roof cam. So, um, yeah. We're going to re rack it. And... Give us a minute.
Hey Justin, we're ready to roll. Okay, they are recording. Alright, we're rolling it. Hey Justin, was it was there just a lot of low level shear over there? What was doing all that? about Hank 